respect to chairman yes respect to chairman dear friends i am fond of something new in a routine case also and i get so many rare cases also so this is a new topic in the knee preservation uh, meeting proximal fibular osteotomy a new surgery for pain relief and improvement of the joint function in patient with medial condyle osteoarthritis knee as described by jiahu wang and jiahu chun there we all know chinese are fond of cheapest things with good attractive everything so this is one of the chinese invention we all know one leading cause of disability due to pain stiffness in elderly all over world and the available options we know which are expensive complex and some of them need revision frequently based on the today's knee preservation principle of hto the this is the prime choice in young patient but pfo is an alternative to hto in the knee in the preservation group i am prescribing POP, P, uh, proximal femoral osteotomy proposed as a new surgical option for pain relief and improvement of the medial joint space in improvement in joint function with osteoarthritis. It's a simple, safe, effective, affordable alternative to HTO. Relief of symptoms of pain occurs in almost all the patients by decreasing varus deformity and reduction in medial joint compression. It delays or replaces the TKA in subpopulation of patients with osteoarthritis with knee. If you search proximal fibular osteotomy and knee osteoarthritis, you will find so many combinations, papers, and uh, words out of this. The basic principle, fibula supports one-sixth of the body weight, thus PFO redistributes the load on the median and lateral compartments after proximal fibular osteotomy. This is the radiological picture before and after the surgery. We all know biomechanics of aging and the varus knee. As the age advances, the, the Funct uh, the functional decrease in the neck shaft valgus causing lateral bowing of the femoral shaft ultimately leads to mechanical axis medially. And the tibia after osteoporosis and osteoarthritis, tibial plateau compression leads to progressive slipping of the medial plateau in early osteoarthritis. And we see bowing of the tibia typical in osteoarthritis. Evolution of high fibular osteotomy first described Yahu Wang in January 2015. He described 47 patients for mid medial compartment osteoarthritis where he retrospectively followed up and he concluded that the alignment of the lower extremity and ratio of the knee joint space improved considerably. HD in nine, uh, 2014 studied cadaveric knees after fibulectomy and found increased in the medial compartment uh, pressure, medial condylar pressure and increased in the lateral compartment pressure. Young in 2015, published results of retrospective series of PFO performed since 1996, third hospital of Ebay in China. And Zheng, the senior surgeon, attributes the idea to one of his students from a rural hospital in China. So this was the idea from the China Rural Hospital. This is the one article published in the knee surgery and related research. There are so many theories have been described in proximal support of the PFO. The basic principle remains the same as described. Principle of non-uniform settlement or stress imbalance syndrome. The bone, bone density of the fibula is higher than the medial tibial uh, uh, and osteoporosis of the medial tibial condyle leads to settlement of the medial pillar. However, fibula support does not allow the lateral tibial plateau to settle. So this result in varus deformity as we studied. The support of the fibula over the lateral condyle transmit weight, but medial tibial condyle has no such support, which leads to non-uniform settlement. And due to change of slope of the medial tibial plateau, produces transverse shearing force to cause the medial shift of the femoral condyle during the weight bearing. In case of osteoporosis, the subcondyle bone of the tibia becomes weak, ultimately results in medial shift of the mechanical axis leading to varus deformity. This is the graphic presentation of the non-uniform settlement. And the proximal fibular osteotomy, it corrects the abnormal load uh, and rebalances the 
settlement. Too many cortices therapy, the same principle. There are three cortices on the lateral side, one on the medial side. If you remove two cortices, it balances. Concept of competition of the muscles. After proximal femoral osteotomy, the proximal fibular segment becomes free from the constraint of the, from the tibial fibular syndesmosis and distal fibula leading to relative increase of the range of movement of the proximal tibial fibular joint. The muscles attached to the proximal fibula pull the fibular head distally and hence the tensile force is transmitted from the posterolateral part of the fibular head to lateral femoral condyle. And the lateral joint space of the knee is therefore narrowed to counteract the varus deformity after weight bearing. It helps in reducing the pressure on the medial compart of the knee and relieving the medial knee pain. The greater the displacement of the fibular head as it is pulled distally has several advantages in great varus deformity correction, medial compartment decompression and significant clinical improvement in the pain is relieved. Dynamic fibular distalization therapy, it implies the same thing, greater the displacement of the fibular head better the correction of RS deformity, more significant increase in symptoms. The slippage phenomena, this also can be prevented by fibular osteotomy. Uh, Hung et al. reported valgus 5 to 7 degree at three months after surgery, an improvement in medial joint space on X-ray after one year. Wang et al. reported 46 patient with PFO, follow-up of 12 months with significant decrease in the visual analog score improvement in the knee function and the scores, and increase in the medial joint space. These are the predictive factors affecting outcome of the proximal fibular osteotomy, radiological and clinical parameters. We all know the KC included by varus knee up to five to seven degree or 10 to 15 degree up to can be included. Moderate to severe medial compartment OA when conservative treatment is not responded and patient is not opting for the costlier treatment. Above the age of 40 years, radiological reading of one or two OA changes. These are the excluded, mostly tricompartmental, grade three or four are excluded. Varus more than 10, obese patient, ligamentous instability, kid, KL grades K, three and four, gen valgus. We all know surgical techniques. This is the simplest operation. Even the second year, third year resident can perform this operation. There is no need to have any extra training for this. One thing you How this idea came to us with the PMJ facility. Patient want everything free and we find out cost benefit ratio. So HTO and PFO is same cost apart from the implant. So PFO in certain cases is beneficial in PMJ cases also. Under anesthesia, posterolateral approach, we know intermuscular space, subperiosteal dissection to find a fibula, and two centimeter long fibula, six to centimeter away from the fibular head, was cut off using micro oscillating saw. Not going further. Agalna Chaltuvay. Duplicate touch curry. Duplicate Disable, say disable. Right. 
This is the graphic and per operative pictures of the this was combined with, uh, with arthroscopic debridement. It required soft tissue, synovectomy, cartilage, surface where the clean, loose bodies were removed. Meniscus was removed in many of the cases where required. Predis maneuver and subcontrol drilling was done in all the cases. Literal paternal reticulum was released and postoperatively gradual graded functional exercise and immediate weight bearing was started. This was the advantage of this technique. This is the preoperative and post-operative opening of the space on the medial compartment. Zua et al. compared HTO with PFO in the management of the knee osteoarthritis and they preferred PFO to HTO because of the lower possibility of complications and early recovery. However, they emphasize the importance of an accurate fibular osteo osteotomy site and protects on the peroneal nerve during the surgery. Their recommended site of PFO was 4 to 7 cm away from the fibular head to prevent the nerve injury and to achieve the good pain relief after PFO. Routine international post-operative assessment was done in all the cases by them. And weight-bearing lower extremity radiograph shows average increase in the post-operative medial joint space and as well as the correction of alignment was also observed in many cases. And they concluded the present study demonstrates that proximal fibular osteotomy effectively release pain and improves joint function in patient with a medial compartment osteoarthritis at a mean of 13.38 months post-operatively. These are the prognostic factors for better outcome. Uh, we have learned that POP is a simple, safe, effective, affordable, cheap, no implants required, simple to perform, no training required, early better rehab and early weight bearing as compared to ST1 UK. There are improvements in the joint space ratio as well as axial alignment. And conversion to total knee arthroplasty following PFO was observed in four cases reported by Young after one year follow-up. And Lou reported no conversion to total knee arthroplasty following PFO in their study. The other, author did not, other authors did not mention conversion to total knee arthroplasty. The review literature found that all the seven studies uh, included studies on the PFO in this review were published between 2015 to 2018 in the English literature and also in the Chinese authors only. The researchers of the third hospital uh, published a maximum number of three papers on PFO. These seven studies included a number of 468 knees and the most of these studies were on the lower hierarchy of the evidence with the six studies level four and one study level three. The PFO was done in these studies for all the grades of symptomatic OA. In two out of seven studies, including 203 knees, the authors did not document the grade of knee osteoarthritis in their patients undergoing PFO. Whereas in the remaining 265 knees, the KL grade of the OA was grade 1 in 61 cases, grade 2 in 97, grade 3 in 60, and grade 4 in 47 knees. The cumulative mean age uh, included in these studies was 60.8 years, body mass index was 2.26.27, uh, follow-up duration of this patient was from 12 to 49 months with mean 24 to 48 months. Only four out of the seven studies reported their complication following PFO. Now palsy was the most frequent complication reported in 14 cases from 294 uh, knees operated. There were 12 uh, palsy and two Common perineal palsy, all of these nerve palsies were transient and recovered in the average time of 11.6 months. And the reported outcome of all the seven studies saw significant improvement in the post-operative value as compared to pre-operative value of visual analog score and the knee society score. Our study is very small, included nine cases, 15 months follow-up, PMJ all cases, male, female, pay of four to five, and age range was 49 to 16 with the 
mean age 55.5 visual nro score pre operative from 7.8 was reduced to 2.4 at the end of 6 to 8 months and axial alignment was also nicely corrected medial joint space opening was good at the end of the 4 months and odi was from 30 to 10 it was reduced there were no tkr or any additional surgery needed and one case had peroneal nerve palsy which recovered in 6 to 8 weeks pre operative mri was done in all the cases to see the status of the knee joint there were six cases of oa grade 1 or 2 and three were 3 degenerative mini meniscus tear in seven cases acl interstitial degeneration in two cases was found and lambrini do sign was positive in all the cases arthroscopy was done in all these are few examples before surgery and the lateral compartment reduced and the medial compartment opening and this is another case 52 years female third one 69 years and mri was grade 3 at the age of 69 years another case 62 years male pre op post op x rays this short term results are encouraging and whether these outcome, outcomes will remain unchanged at a longer follow up time is unclear therefore a longer follow up study is warranted the biomechanics biomechanics of the pain relief increase in the medial joint space and correction of the alignment of the pfo need further study absence of control group in another is another limitation with inability to exclude placebo effect uh, to conclude, it is a simple, safe, affordable, less expensive, less invasive technique, less rehabilitation, and effective and faster post op recovery. Does not require insertion of any implant, but success depends upon the level of osteotomy, right technique, no ex experience required. Our experience of the study of the HFR is minimal. Suitable, this is suitable in most developing countries that lack financial and medical resources. Better alternative surgical options for osteoarthritis medial compartment knee for patients who cannot undergo TK because of the comorbidities. PFO is simple, cost effective with speedy recovery, no training experience required. Correct patient selection is the key to success. Correct level of osteotomy is important. Radiological opening on medial joint space does not always correlate with the clinical improvement. How much time one can save for TKR is will decide later on. These patients can still undergo TK in future if it becomes necessary. Thank you all for patient listening. You are welcome to Voacon 2023, February at Ankleswar. Many of our patients are afraid of major surgery or after osteotomy, I will be able to walk how many days, how much union of the... Here, there is no requirement of the osteotomy to united. We wish that it remains ununited. This is a big advantage. And patients start walking on the next day. So we have to select the patient particularly for this. Chairman, sir. Uh, Dr. Parihar, can I make a comment? So three things. One is, um, if we have to buy a phone, will we buy a ch Chinese phone or a German phone? We know the reputation of China Kamal. Number two, there are paper two papers in IJO, uh, which have shown by, by Indian authors from tertiary uh, centers which have shown that beyond a year, these results do not persist. And the conclusion of both those authors, both those papers, is that this is not an alternative for uh, HTO in terms of the long-term future. And finally, in Gujarat, in Modi's Gujarat, Modi has said, China ka mal lene ka nahi hai. <laughs> Still, still many people are using China mal <laughs> under table taking. <laughs> so this is PMJ technique actually. <laughs> thank you, sir. Dr. Mangal Pariyas, thank you for your expert comments and suggestions. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you, dear friends. So second session.
history and the brief timeline of osteotomy by Dr. C.S. Ajumani. Yeah, good morning, uh, Chairman, Co-Chairman, Sir, uh, dignitaries in the hall and dear friends. Uh, knee preservation surgery can't go without knowing what was the history, how it evolved over a period of uh, almost 2000 years. I acknowledge you for giving me this platform to perform it and uh, good input from uh, Dr. Dinesh Thakkar uh, for this talk. Edwin Smith paper, uh, which was first documented proof uh, goes back to almost 16,000, uh, 1,600 BC, where they had shown uh, alignment of uh, humerus of the fracture. The another one comes almost 415 BC by Hippocrates. Uh, he had devised some traction unit, uh, which was used for correcting deformity. And all these uh, fractures healed. And the modern uh, osteotomies uh, records goes back to almost six, uh, in 1600 century, uh, where osteoclastis was first reported. And the Bosch has uh, used a printing, uh, you know, press to fracture these bones. Yes, yes. Uh, osteoclasis, we even use it today for, uh, you know, uh, maluniting fractures where we try to correct it or even in children. And this was the apparatus uh, which was designed by Lawrence. Lister's uh, aseptic techniques helped to reduce infection rate in uh, osteotomies. And McEwen was uh, in Glasgow was first to publish uh, osteotomies in 1800 patients. Uh, Langenbeck described performing um, planned open osteotomy based on his experience in Palestine War from 1848 to 1850. And end of the 19th century saw advent of subcutaneous osteotomies. William Adam was another British surgeon uh, who has reported large series uh, in medical journals. Barton was first to perform hip ankylos and osteotomy, and he, he performed this osteotomy to create a pseudoarthrosis. And the, uh, I mean, as per records, uh, the whole procedure took only seven minutes and without anesthesia. You can see the painful uh, condition of patient. Uh, Barton uh, is first uh, in modern uh, literature to perform these osteotomies. He has performed uh, os supracondylar osteotomies for ankylos uh, knee as well. And these are the osteotomies which were performed uh, at right angle to the knee joint to correct uh, deformities. And then we get so many authors from Germany who have reported uh, different osteotomies. Uh, this was the, one of the first osteotomes used by Hence, uh, this is another uh, chisel, which was used uh, to cut the bones at that age. And then osteotomy developed from 19th to 21st century with introduction of anesthesia, antiseptic techniques, 
uh, blood sparing surgical technique and then detection of ra radiography. Uh, this is a well-known uh, slide which uh, appears in most of the journals and books, the Coventry Osteotomy, which was in late 1950s. And uh, Jackson reported high And uh, Coventry had shown his result. Early results were very good in almost 90% of cases. And uh, as time progressed, uh, though results had declined, but still uh, it was satisfactory in large uh, number of population because that time the other uh, newer modalities have not come into vogue. What are the different types? These will be covered since it's part of history. So I'm just uh, making a passing comments. Uh, Varus uh, open wedge, valgus closed uh, hysterotomy, and then combination of two open medial and closed lateral. These will be discussed in uh, deliberations to follow. Uh, Nekostin uh, describe an oblique proximal tibial osteotomy, which helped to preserve the medial cortex, and IT was uh, preserved on lateral side. Uh, there were different uh, methods of fixation, including casts, staples, plates, screws, external fixators, and commentary has described use of uh, staple, step, uh, staple uh, in 1969. And then there were other authors, Krikow and Phillips, performed fixation with using two to three uh, staples. Longer follow up, seven to 10 years, showed satisfactory result in 60 of the patients and commentary showed that uh, the success rate was in 10 years were excellent. Yesuda was another uh, author who has performed 88 uh, knee osteotomy and at six years, there were 63 cases were satisfactory. And commentary lateral close wedge osteotomy is even popular in these days in USA. And it's relatively simple to perform and it gives uh, very good healing rate and result. Uh, downside is uh, lateral collateral laxity, uh, then infrapatellar scarring, which leads to patella baha, increased Q angle, uh, limited correction is achieved, and it uh, predisposes to fracture because of size of the proximal fragment. Jacob and Murphy described the osteotomy performed behind the tibial tubercle and these would be again taken care of. I'm just uh, mentioning this. Professor Elizaro uh, used ring fixator to correct deformities and landing will achieve. Indication in past were severe genovalgum, genovarum, post-traumatic deformities, rickets and other Boeing deformities. Uh, these are some of the examples of different uh, modalities used for correcting uh, deformities around knee. Uh, external fixator, the hexapod, uh, Taylor shell frame, uh, Dr. Mangal Parihar and other faculty would be covering all this. Commentary is lateral wedge osteotomy. Uh, this is one of the cases where patient has both uh, femoral as well as tibial component, which was corrected by plate and distally by a unilateral fixator. And that's the full correction, which was achieved. AO advanced uh, indicated angular plates for both varus and valgus correction. And these are different uh, modalities of uh, implants, which have come up. Uh, development of new implant designs, fixators, imaging modalities, uh, power tools, knowledge gained over century has made results of STO long lasting, effective and predictive in 21st century. Uh, to conclude, it has glorious past, cozy present and brighter future to follow. Uh, I end my talk with optimism that derives from the fact that nothing can replace the restoration of original joint axis and preservation of original joint. Thank you for your kind attention and I invite you to 41st annual conference to be held at Baruch uh, from 3rd to 5th uh, February.
Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Rajwani. Now I invite uh, Dr. Vikas Jain. He will talk on role of 3D printing in HTO. Till they uh, do the adjustment, a very good morning to all of you. And uh, I would like to personally thank Dr. Dinesh Thakkar, as well as the Indian Orthopedic Association Secretary, Dr. Naveen Thakkar, Gujarat Orthopedic Association uh, President, Dr. Govind Purohit, Secretary, Dr. Kamlesh, to have organized this beautiful seminar on knee preservation. and. Uh, here I come from the technology background, mostly acting like an interface between the technology and orthopedics. Friends, this talk predominantly focuses to sensitize our orthopedic fraternity towards newer technology. And 3D printing, 3D technology is a new technology which will enable us to do precise and perfect uh, anatomical reduction, precise and perfect results. It will reduce the surgical time and will give better patient outcomes. So that's where the role of 3D technology is there in osteotomies. So we were trying to fit the high tibial osteotomy in 3D printing. This is my genuine effort to democratize the 3D technology, to bring this technology to the orthopedic surgeons, the orthopedic fraternity across India. There are a lot of orthopedic surgeons in US as well as in the other developed countries who are already using this technology for three purposes, for preoperative planning. They're using this for printing, printing of the implants, printing of the joints which are very patient specific. That means it is specific for that particular fracture or specific for that particular joint. Education and awareness of its applications is to optimize. So that should be the principle and that should be the motto that we as an orthopedic surgeons should optimize the musculoskeletal system. That means we should be optimizing the anatomy, the physiology, as well as the biochemistry. The technology, as I rightly said, has two aspects, printing and designing, and both of them are important to us. I would like to put a disclaimer that I'm just trying to augment 3D as a technology, and I have nothing against all the conventional successful methods, which would be subsequently shown in the entire day's seminar. This is just to introduce to you that this technology is now what we can use we can use this for purpose of optimizing our results. So what is 3D technology, friends? Uh, this is actually a newer way of manufacturing in which previously, uh, if you see the process of manufacturing was subtractive, now you can uh, do an additive layering technology. And in this, you can print metals apart from polymers. So till now we were into polymer printing. Now you can do metal printing. And because of the metal printing, this has taken us to a newer horizon of printing implants. And that is where we can print patient-specific implants. 
or a patient specific joints. This is most important. We should think in terms of bone and joint optimization. And we as an orthopedic surgeon should optimize the bone and joints from the point of view of uh, seeing to it that we get the perfect anatomy, perfect physiology and the perfect biochemistry. It is seen that most of the surgeons now in the era when we have modular implants usually see certain challenges in our surgeries. Now, you just imagine that this is what you want and we can print it. We can give you that. We can do a proper preoperative design. We can do a prototype and we can give you that particular implant or a patient specific joint. These are a few applications that you can do in 3D printing. This is a 3D printer, polymer printer. You can do a patient specific implant. You can go in to make acetabular cups, femoral stems. You can print a knee joint. You can print an ankle joint. You can print small joints of uh, metacarpophalanges and a CMC joint. What is the focused application that we as an orthopedic surgeon should interest or will be of an interest is preoperative planning. There are lots of softwares which are available where you can do so. HTO is one such osteotomy because osteotomy is in adults, osteotomy is in pediatrics. You can use softwares to do beautiful three dimensional preoperative planning. From those planning, you can create jigs. You can create for that particular patient. You can create fixtures or PSI is patient specific instruments that will enable you to give perfect osteotomy in all three axes, X, Y, and Z. And that is what is going to enable you a perfect alignment. It could be an anatomical axis as well as the mechanical axis. This is an enabling of creating an ecosystem, friends. 3D technology cannot be optimized unless we create an ecosystem. Now, who are the components of this ecosystem? We as an orthopedic surgeons have to now understand that we have to play an important role to give input. Unless you give input from your CT scan, from your DICOM, the designers cannot design. And you have to work with the designers. And those designers will then give that design DICOM in an STL formatted or a G code, which will go to the manufacturer who is going to print the required joint or a required implant that you want, which is specific for that particular patient. So this you can see as from, let us come to the osteotomies. This is very important that this technology can be used in adults. It could be used in pediatrics. You can create something which are polymer jigs. These are very patient specific jigs. You can use that intraoperatively directly over the bones, or you can use it intraoperatively directly over the skin. And then you can pass, fix it with the KYs, and then you can do the required precision, perfect osteotomy, and you get a perfect reduction and a perfect correction. These are the advantages that you can get from 3D technology. You can get greater accuracy. You can decrease the number of instruments and inventories that will be required. You can reduce the turnover time that is required for a surgery. You can get better patient outcome. You can reduce complications. This is a process. We'll be conducting a workshop on 3D in IOCON that is on 29 November. And I hope if you're registered for IOCON, I invite you to that workshop. We'll teach you everything hands-on. What is DICOM? How do we take DICOM into a software? How do we convert that into an STL? And from there, you can do all the play. So if you, we all boys love to play, right? So if you can imagine, now you don't have to imagine. You can actually play with the patient-specific problem. You can bring the correction on the computer and you can think of what you want to put there. So uh, Materialize is one of the software and here the HTO correction has been designed in all three axes. This is to put up because not many orthopedic surgeons in India are using this for purpose of HTO. All of them are using two dimensional and they are doing good. So there's a disclaimer there, but still you can use this. You can say this is the way you can have a guide, uh, you can have a zig and you can do the corrections. Subsequent speakers are going to speak a lot on all types of corrections. This is just to sensitize you to this technology. Since I don't have a case study, but Dr. Taral Nagda from Bombay is using this technology a lot. He is a pediatric orthopedic surgeon. And I have just few slides to show you how it works. 
So this is the data that he had acquired for a genuvarum case. He segmented that data and he prepared a data as far as the correction is required. He did a pre-operative planning. You can see all the access. He followed all the principles of draw palette as far as correction is concerned in X, Y, and Z axis. This is what he obtained pre-operatively as far as the correction is concerned, which you could see. This was a zig that was designed according to that particular case, which was centering over the patella. And you can fix that over the skin so you can have the right osteotomy directions. This is how he used it in the surgery and he attained a perfect reduction. So thank you, friends. Let's change the changing times or we shall then become, we have to change. We have to change. We have to evolve. All orthopedic surgeons, we learn a lot of things conventionally. But since we there is a technology that is available, let's augment ourselves. Let's use the conventional methods as well as augment ourselves with the technological methods so that we get better patient outcome. We reduce the surgical time and it eases us. Also important is we should also optimize the anatomy, physiology, and biochemistry. We should think in terms of prevention and preservation. And that is what this whole workshop is about knee preservation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Vikas Jain, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, in US and UK, there are now metal printers which are available. These metal printers can directly print implants, right? How do you do that? This, this is done by G. RCAM is a technology. EUS is another technology. Uh, EBM electron beam technology and laser technologies are other technologies to do the metal printing. Titanium is available in the powder form, which is sintered and layered. And you can exactly prepare the implant that you need. Right? Now, <clears throat> that is how you can print an implant. The process is, suppose you have a patient and it's a complicated patient and you feel that these modular implants are not going to be of a use, but I need a plate or a joint, which has probably this a size of the acetabular cup is different, or the neck length is different, or probably a femoral stem is different. You send us the DICOM. My design studio will then convert that and it will create an STL file. From that, it will suggest whatever is your requirement. We'll create a prototype. You say that prototype is okay will design exactly the implant that you want, perfectly as good as the implant that is supplied by Depu or by Zimmer. So Zimmer, Depu already, they have come into 3DP. They are already there. They're, they're in the US, they're using 3DPs. It's India that we don't have 3DP. So now we are introducing 3DP in India. So metal printing is possible, sir. And this is a polymer printed osteotomies. Usually we use PSIs, patient specific instrumentation guides which you can do for every patient so that you can get an X, Y, Z correction. Any questions? Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Our next talk is pre-operative planning by Dr. Navin Dhaka, sir. <clears throat> Good morning to everybody. This already we are going to do in workshop of your planning. You are going to draw yourself everything. I'm taking a little bit other points other than the drawings. Why it is important? It's very important to plan, otherwise we'll fail. So we must plan how to do it because there are different methods of the osteotomy, but the planning remains same. You have to plan it, otherwise you will have a pitfall, problems, and you have to think of if the pitfall occurs, what could be the possible solution? That everything has to be planned in your mind, A, B, C, every plan has to be there. You know the biomechanics. It's the largest and the most complex joint, longest liver arm. So many, many forces are coming on four times the body weight while walking. Shift of the weight bearing line from the center is the problem. Can be due to primary wear of the cartilage or secondary to the varus of the proximal tibia. 
we all know this why there is a virus is coming and why the medial compartment is common we know already that oa increases with the virus so virus misalignment worsens there are many papers the more the virus in 2001 this lady had a virus and 2003 you can see how the progression of the osteoarthritis has taken up so virus is the problem but where is the evidence the surgeon is asking arthroplasty surgeon is asking so why should i choose the hq in my practice virus misalignment is the problem there is a kl score if kl score is more than 2 progression is four fold and if, if it is more than 3 progression is ten fold in the osteoarthritis so virus affects the damaged knee already damaged knee more so virus is a problem so problem we are we'll be talking throughout the day alignment 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 and alignment these are the studies precise restoration of the valgus angle leads to very good re result these are the series of 10 to 24 years of the survival of sto and there is a benchmark study by cosino he had shown that 15 to 20 years 75 knee 53 patients 46 to 73 years there are 59 years and overall survivorship 90% at the 5 years 96.2% at the 10 years and 93.2 survivorship at the 15 years and average but it requires precise restoration of the valgus angle little over correction that has to be think of but what is the normal alignment one must know the normal alignment before planning so we know all this anatomical axis joint angles mechanical axis what is this anatomical lateral distal femoral angle we are going to draw it anatomical femoral tibial angle anatomical medial proximal tibial angle anatomical lateral distal tibial angle these all angle are very much important for the planning because how much correction is required and how much you are calculating the over correction to get the good survivorship these all things will be taking in workshop mechanical axis runs slightly oblique from the cranio lateral to the medio caudal at an angle of the 3 degree there is also importance of this slope that also has to be taken care of where do you call it a varus and where do you call it a valgus deformity <coughs> that has, that we will be defining there will be a mal alignment test you have to do a mal alignment test to know the mechanical axis deviation this is the routine thing that mal alignment deviation more than 15 mm medial it is called varus again you have to define varus is at the femur or the knee if it is at the both place you have to correct and that requires the planning otherwise there will be pitfall again for the varus femoral valgus or it's a tibial valgus that you have to take care of it is very much very much important to have a complete evaluation otherwise you will be at the fault patient history history of trauma previous surgery professional activity what is expected how what is patient is expecting and all clinical examination is very important i would like to ask one case where how the pre operative planning was important this was municipal corporator bjp corporator he had a injury fall limb not feeling normal strength of the limb this x ray was taken in november to uh, 2015 at the municipal hospital and patient has a pain anybody has a clue what is the problem he was advised sto by one surgeon one surgeon advised him for the re replacement uni anybody feels anything here fracture of the lateral condyle you see the fracture of the lateral condyle where do you feel you feel a fracture of lateral condyle no he had a little pain only he was not feeling normal that was only complaint partial evolution of fibular you are seeing here you are seeing here so multiple people have multiple opinions so he was taking opinions with various orthopedic surgeons why such complaints no instability clinically as per notes case book of municipal hospital surgeon took decision to treat by ice packs and drugs so he was treated conservatively that is the routine thing 
still there is a pain and not feeling normal walking but not feeling normal surgeon again the took decision and take another x ray in 2016 january now do you feel the same complaints are there anybody has any clue than the previous x ray fibular head you are thinking about something here in the fibular head osteoporosis medial condyle so surgeon also thought like that and he advised for the uni or a sto ha ah, yes you are right mri was also done so mri was done in the municipal hospital but there was a not that there is nothing significant he had not films because he was a municipal corporator he did not took the films and everything after 9 months still there was a pain and not feeling very good what what could be the problem ligament injury everything has been checked it has to be ligament injury where we are failing in evolution in pre op planning evolution where we are failing here clinical examination was normal you are feeling a two or three orthopedic surgeon seen where we are failing here anybody has any view alignment long axis x ray let us see what is happening here i took a simple decision to see the third plane advise one more view and it was a skyline view and here was the fracture patella non union so the source of the pain was not the medial compartment not the lateral compartment 10 months old non union so pre operative complete evaluation is very much important it was fixed and he was very much happy by the function and everything so no requirement of sco or no requirement of the replacement which was advised to him so imaging is very very important you must have a third plane to document other compartments also you must have a stress views to know the instability anybody wants to say something mri must have picked radiology must not must not reported it's a municipal hospital that only not was there i was also surprised that but he had not he is not having the film with him or report because they were, they are always in the hurry these corporators are imaging evaluation x ray what is the rosenberg view that you must know that it in the 45 degree flexion of the knee to document early medial posterior compartment oh this is very important to detect the patient early so that it does not progress further full length weight bearing x ray of the entire limb with patella facing to the front it is very important you can see one example here it is a short film and the measurement has been done anatomical lateral distal femoral angle has been measured you can see the anatomical medial proximal tibial angle is measured and now the surgeon took the full film complete long film and you can see here it comes 89 degree here it comes 99 degree so 4 plus 4 8 degree difference came so full length x ray is very very important to judge exactly the alignment how to take a full length x ray that is the many times what are the possibilities in a small setup you can have a long cassette standing uh, that stand and you can have a stack inside overlapping uh, this cassettes that is the one possibility no grid lines adjust the cortical thickness that is the one thing there are certain softwares which is a stitching facility no grid lines and cortical thickness you have to do and in this standing position you are taking or there are inbuilt grid lines certain systems auto stitching facilities are avail available with the certain softwares or you can have a stack cassettes on the stand itself where there is no facility with you of a long cassette then you can stack the cassettes on a chest stand and you can take that and you have to align according to the cortical thickness mri what is the importance useful to assess the soft tissue injury and status of the lateral compartment many times it is to be reported bone marrow edema in the mri is a common finding and bone marrow edema predictor progression watchful plan it counsel it it is very important for counseling it is better to record the mri ct scan is hardly needed rarely indicated gold standard to evaluate the torsional misalignment if there is a anything torsional then ct scan is will be giving you a better picture whether you required a torsional correction or not scintigraphy it is written it's not much important what is the normal alignment how to calculate the deformity alignment angle practically 
there are different methods different authors as a different say about this these are the authors and they desired the post op angle and their measurements were different we can see certain things weight bearing line has been taken as a calculation where the center of knee is defined as a zero person and medial and lateral border considered as a hundred person this is the fujisawa scale where two third 10 to 15 person one third 20 to 25 person none 30 to 35 persons so angle of the wage that is also a different methods but the principles are same the mechanical axis is drawn line one is drawn we'll show you here Line two, that will connect the osteotomy hinge point with the center of the ankle. Line three, that connects the osteotomy hinge point with the arc of the intersection of the line one. And here, this comes the correction angle. And the angle formed by the line two and three is a planned angle where, where which you want exactly the osteotomy here and the correction. This is another method where line one is drawn from the center of the femoral head to 62.5% of the tibial width where we will require a physio point. Line two is drawn from the center of the tibio tailor joint to the 62% coordinate connecting this, this angle form between these two lines is the angle X and that is the correction angle. Here you can see one example where I have tried to cut the X-ray in this direction and the correction angle is corresponded like that. And that is a lateral overlap of lateral close wedge, medial open or medial open wedge osteotomy. You have to calculate according to the lateral or medial side, the, what, whatever the method you choose. And here you can see this is the correction. This is the correction required. The Coventry method, it is very useful when you do not have a long length x-rays. Here, there is a clear cut formula. And according to the formula, if you put, you can calculate the angle. Here it is calculated as a 12 degree because the pre-operative anatomical axis were four degree varus and to be corrected as a post anatomical axis. And that is the formula. But we have to understand where is the deformity. Many times we think that it's a proximal tibial STO is required, but many patients have a bow and the lateral angulation in the femur also. So we must calculate completely all the angles. In here example, you can see all the angles are measured. Even joint line congruency angle has been measured here because we want to know exactly what is the angle here. Here femur, MLFDA, joint line, TBA, MPDA, so all angles are measured. And you can see here further that there are different angles here, which, is, which has been showing 10, 2, 6, 18. So you are, you, are, you are requiring at the both places correction. The anatomical axis, femorotibial, 5 to 7 degree valgus. Here again, we are aiming at the 3 degree over correction. So you have to calculate that 3 degree of over correction also in calculation of taking the wage or correcting. Whatever method you are using, you are only free not calculating with the gradual, medial, open wage, osteotomy with the external fixator, which Dr. Mangal Pariyar is going to show you exactly the technique. There are softwares to plan. Ready-made softwares are also available. You have to be uh, very much customized according to your need. And this software also gives you exactly how much to open, you have to put the points and they will that will draw the line, whatever the correction you required, and further, it will also allow you to put the plate on that. And they will also allow you what trajectory of the screw will go with your particular plate and what will be the length of the screw also. That also you can measure with this new softwares are available. And there is a trigonometric calculations and there, there are different stages. In then one tab, you get a planning. Second stage, you get a correction. Third stage, fixation. These are the all. Uh, softwares are available in the market. You can use this software also. Here you can see that it has tried to put up this plate here. And once you zoom it, you will come to know exactly there are mouse available there. And you can click that. And you can know exactly the where the trajectory of the screw will go, whether it will go intraarticular or not. You can reduce the length of the screw also. And you can decide preoperatively what screw size will come exactly here 
and you can have a plan written in your operation theater. So you could not make any mistake further. So this is the pre-op planning. So basic principles are saying, mind who knows the principles can develop their own technique. Aim is again to get normal alignment, normal alignment. Now the next question comes, how to calculate the exit wage? So we are doing 2D planning and execution is 3D. That is the problem. Our planning is 2D and many people have a myth that one degree is equal to one mm, but that is a myth. It is not one degree equal to one mm. It depends on the width of the proximal tibia. Here you can see there is a very ready-made chart where exactly at the 57 only you get the one degree with the one mm formula. Otherwise, it differs everywhere. Graphical method is that you can put a wedge on an x-ray and you can calculate and you can plan it. There are different methods, but you must know the principle. This is the best method, surgeon friendly method, where you do not need to calculate. You go on correcting, 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 and when you get a satisfied angle in a fall off, you lock it and you get a desired angle, whatever you want to get it. Sagittal plane planning, also you can do deformity correction. You have to plan that and you have to add that in the complex cases and you must drap both the lower extremities while because you have planned you know you must know the axis so you must have a complete visibility of the proximal part middle part and the ankle and different angles you must be able to see and pre op x-rays you can put your this template and you can calculate and you can calculate post op also whether desired over correction you have got or got or not so detailed steps are required very much what will be your approach? What will be the method of fixation? Where the hinge will come at the fibula implant, whether you need a bone graft. So you must have a double plan. There may be a pitfalls and pitfalls are osteoporosis. Hold up the implant. So you must have a good implant. Span of the fixation, additional fixation is required or not. If the lateral cortex is broken during the surgery, what will you do? What will be the possibility of intra-articular extension. So plan, plan, plan and plan. And you have to think of anatomy, biology, stability and the motion talk together and objective is get the 0% co-sequences. If you plan on the paper on a previous 2-3 days, no, do not be hurry. That will leave you up day one failure. So surgeon has to balance between the under correction and over correction. Under correction will not get the survival. Over correction will be also very difficult for the uh, patient to walk on the valgus. So we are back to the basics. You also must have to plan for economics to counsel the patient. That lecture you will uh, listen probably from Dinesh Bhai, how to counsel the patient. So we will be learning together whole day about osteotomy. Thank you very much. Software name, I do not remember. Ortho. Ortho? Ortho view. Ortho view is there, yeah. And there is a one available on the iPad. Ortho view means from the real life. That's the software. Yeah. So you get magic. Or and you can do a 3D planning also. Yeah. And one software is available on the iPad also. Your magic That is. Yeah. Uh, this is the end of the session. And uh, uh, now we facilitate our uh, uh, faculties. First, uh, uh, Dr. Vipin Bhai will facilitate Dr. Navin Thakkar with a momento. Dr. Dr. C. S. Ajmani. Dr. Kamles Dev Murari. He is a secretary of Gujarat Orthopedic Association. All of us are knowing him. And he is very dynamic personality. Because of his uh, uh, open mind, we could organize on behalf of GOA. 
now i invite dr govin purohit he is a president of gujarat orthopedic association and dr gaurav wala will facilitate with a momento now dr vikas jain is a past president of gujarat orthopedic association we all have enjoyed a very fantastic annual conference at wapi that all credit goes to dr vikas jain Uh, those uh, there are so many young orthopedic surgeons i request them to be a member of uh, gujarat orthopedic association and indian orthopedic association because there are a lot of activities we are performing by goa and ioa so i request those who are not a member become member of the earliest uh, ioa uh, membership can be applied online also and you can always contact dr dev murari for the membership of gujarat orthopedic association and now uh, uh we are sitting here in this beautiful auditorium credit goes to uh, two persons mainly uh, one is a pro of this jivraj mehta hospital that is mines who is very good friend of mine because i was planning to do it at the polio foundation because all conferences are held there but he positively said to me nahi you have to do it here because i am attached here and uh, that he was backed by our very very dynamic uh, director of uh, uh, jivraj mehta hospital that is dr manay sagrawal he encourages us a lot to do academic activity and gives all kind of he has uh, given a red carpet to me you arrange we all uh, all facilities we will provide so now i invite dr manay sagrawal uh, and a big clap for mines and dr minay sagrawal good morning everyone hope you all are doing well it gives me immense pleasure to welcome all the eminent doctors those who have come from different part of the country to attend this workshop at jivraj mehta hospital warm welcome to dr navin thakkar secretary indian orthopedic association Dr. Govind Purohit, President Gujarat Orthopedic Association; Dr. Kamlesh Dev Murari, Secretary Gujarat Orthopedic Association. We are happy to host this national workshop at Jivraj Mehta Hospital. Jivraj Mehta Hospital is the oldest and biggest trust hospital in Ahmedabad. Ours is a 200 bedded multi super speciality hospital with all the state of the art facilities. We are an ABH accredited hospital, and you would be happy to know last year, Jivraj Mehta Hospital has been ranked among 10 top multi super speciality hospital of Ahmedabad, amongst other corporate hospital also. and i am glad to share that this year this hospital has been awarded gujarat gaurav award for the best multi super speciality hospital of gujarat so i believe this workshop hosted by our prestigious organization will be extremely fruitful for you all and looking forward to have much more knowledge sharing programs in association with indian orthopedic association and gujarat orthopedic association so considering the time constraint i would like to conclude here thank you so much and have a great day ahead thank you thank you
now we will go ahead with the lamp lighting ceremony i invite uh, dr govind purohit president of orthopedic uh, gujarat orthopedic association to participate in lamp lighting i invite dr rastogi and dr mangal pariyar they are the chief faculties and came from very far from here and took a lot of pain to be present here uh, so i will invite both of them to participate and dr kamlesh dev murari yes and to participate in lamp lighting navin thakkar i invite dr navin bhai शॉर्ट सीट पर station to participate in lamp lighting kya karna i invite dr rastogi and dr mangal pariyar they are the chief faculties and came from very far from here and took a lot of pain to be present here Uh, so i will invite both of them to participate and dr kamlesh dev murari to participate in lamp lighting to participate kya karna i invite dr rastogi and dr mangal pariyar they are the chief faculties and came from very far from now and took a lot of i would like to call upon stage dr navin thakkar we would like to felicitate him on behalf of jivran mata hospital please give him a big hand please come come up aaiye 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 aapka swagat hai thank you bahut bahut swagat hai thank you now i would like to call upon stage dr govind purohit president of gujarat orthopedic association uh i was looking for a wall clock for my new hospital opening on 30 September at Sai Bagh, so that space is filled with clock. Very Thank good, you very, very much. <laughs> Now I would like to call upon Dr. Kamlesh Dev Murari, Secretary, Gujarat Orthopedic Association.
So now I would uh, request Dr. Dinesh to carry on with your scheduled program. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for taking time for us. Uh, we, are with, we are very thankful to you. Now, uh, uh, we are starting next session. I invite uh, uh, Dr. Rajnikant Nayak, if he's here, here to chair this session and Dr. Yogesh Parikh, uh, senior uh, orthopedic. We all are knowing Dr. Rajnikant Nayak was my PG teacher. I have grown under him only. I learned whatever I am here is because of him. And uh, Dr. Yogesh Parikh, very well-known orthopedic surgeon at Ahmedabad. We have learned from him a lot. And one uh, very uh, important thing is that uh, we are conducting a, a workshop on the pre-operative planning. So all the delegates even a, given a group, group A and group B, uh, it will be written on your this thing. So uh, kindly uh, see that whether you are in group A or group B. First group A will sit inside the hall and group B will go for a tea break for 15 minutes. And then after 15 minutes, uh, half of the delegates must have completed uh, their pre-operative planning workshop. And after that, uh, group B will come back and group A will go for the uh, tea break. Understood everyone? Now, Uh, now this uh, uh, session, uh, we are going to discuss about uh, open wage or closed wage osteotomy, fixed by different techniques. Oh, we would like to know exactly what are the advantages of open wage osteotomy and what are the disadvantages. Now, we will learn that from the learned speakers here. So I invite Dr. Sanjay Rastogi, who is going to talk about open wage tibial osteotomy with internal fixation. Till the things are become okay, uh, let's have some orientation of preoperative planning workshop. Uh, every delegate has been given is very important thing. Very important thing of this conference is pre-operative planning. Execution comes after. So uh, we have given a three sheets of paper in your bag. Uh, written there, exercise one, exercise two, and exercise three. Right? How to do exercise that Dr. Rastogi will uh, uh, mention in the slide. So abhi nahi karni hai. keep it inside. But just to have an orientation, and we have a three-colored pen, right? We have a three-colored pen. There is very congested area. We don't have a round table. So what we have to do, we have to put a pad in front of you, 
with the support of chair in front of you i will uh, show you how to keep because i have done practically how it will be possible just before two days so i will explain it that with the uh, this has been started now good morning everybody mr chairperson presidents organizing committee and my dear friend dr dinesh thakkar who has a immense interest in knee preservation and for inviting me for this talk the previous speakers have told us about the various options but we must understand evidence based root cause and before we advise to the patient we should know what are the treatment options available what is his age what is the disease condition and what is his requirements and must educate our patients so their knee lasts for lifetime but whatever is the cause overload due to obesity and alignment is a major risk factor and it is now established that mechanical overload of the joint compartment leads to cartilage damage and degenerative joint disease deformities of the lower extremity are pre arthritic juxta articular osteotomies are established procedure to have the normal physiological access and treatment for various varus velus deformities with oa knee and this is what we are talking about and this is because of inherent tibia vera which is common in asians and indians and osteoporosis by which it increases with passage of time when the tibial bone varus angle is more than 5 it predisposes to osteoarthritis but on the other hand this becomes an ideal case for medial open wedge high tibial osteotomy and this is the cause for failure in uni compartment in asians this point has been touched upon briefly the can the osteoarthritis be prevented the answer is yes dr koshino has demonstrated this the role of deformity correction and oa treatment has been done by him and he followed these patients for more than two decades with successfully preserving the knee joint now the can the damaged cartilage be repaired again the answer is big yes and in 145 these which he operated at an average follow of two years 91% patients had total regeneration with white fibro cartilage and this is one such example in a 67 year old male 20 months after the surgery when the cartilage broke completely now what are the treat op options they are lifestyle modification medical treatment and surgical treatment and i'll emphasize in this order we must educate our patients that jogging skipping squatting is bad for knees and must be avoided 10% weight control leads to pain relief in obese patients and quadriceps wasting starts on day 2 of pain so they must do exercise to protect their joint and maintain a range of motion walking aids are helpful and braces should only be used in emergency because they lead to muscle wasting all analgesics are toxic and there are dosage and duration must be strictly followed opioid patches are indicated only in elderly that too for 8 weeks cartilage protective drugs and injections have limited role arthroscopy the evidence is and the aso recommendation is it should not be done it increases pain and disease and it is only indicated in young patients 
with mechanical symptoms. This point has been touched about by the previous speaker. I'll only add Tomofix is available from 2003 and India from 2011. And this is the most important statement. Knee protection and ladder pet, uh, treatment for OA has once again showed us the importance of HTO as an effective, minimally invasive treatment for OA knee. And to this, I will add, it has a preventive role also. In a study in Germany, 84% patients of OA knee were treated by osteotomy, out of which 88% were high tibial osteotomy and 82% were medial open wedge high tibial osteotomy. And what we do, we transfer the weight bearing from the disease side to the normal side. And if the total cartilage is lost, then we have to understand where the Fujisawa point is there. And this is the point where the lateral side of the tibial spine ends. And this is at 62%. So if the total cartilage is lost, this is important when we do the exercise also. Now, Tomofix, which is an angular stable implant, is an ideal implant for biplanar osteotomy, which is, has a transverse pain and ascending pain. And this video will demonstrate you that the ascending osteotomy is a complete osteotomy, while transverse osteotomy is an incomplete osteotomy. The Tomofix allows opening up to 22 millimeter, that is the difference which is present between hole D and hole 1, and no interpositional material is required. Tomofix is an angle stable implant and provides primary, medial, lateral, dorsal, ventral, and proximal osseous stability to allow functional rehabilitation from day two of surgery. Patient has operated supine in a radiolucent table with knee 90 degree flexion and patient is operated from the other side. Siam comes from the same side and one can have uninterrupted view of AP and lateral during the surgery. The, it is very easy to find out what is the osteotomy side. If you follow carefully, there is a convex and a concave part on the medial side. And if you put your thumb, this goes you the exact point from where the osteotomy should be done. And it is just proximal to the passage of Pesen Serenus. In 90 degree flexion, bony landmarks are marked. These are medial joint line, cranial border of Pesen Serenus, medial collateral ligament, and tibial tuberosity. Proximal after exposure by a 5 to 6 millimeter incision, the proximal border of pes and sinus is identified. It is retracted distally and the superficial medial collateral ligament is identified and its distal attachment is erased till we are able to correct the alignment. Now for internal navigation, two parallel K wires are passed. They are parallel to the tibial slope and this decides that the osteotomy, transverse osteotomy is just below and one AP um, uh, guide wire is passed in the center of tibia, one centimeter distal and parallel again to the tibial slope and this decides the proximal part of the tomofix. The transverse wires must end at the lateral cortex as seen in 30 degree internal rotation of the tibia on table. Depth of osteotomy is measured with the help of another wire and subsequently it is marked on the osteotomy blade. The osteotomy is protected, the neurovascular bundles are protected by 90 degree flexion at the knee and the popliteus also protects it. The incomplete transverse osteotomy is done in knee 90 degree flexion and with a new 0.9 mm 22 mm wide, 90 mm long blade. And remember, this is different than the osteotomy blade. 
which is used in knee replacement, which should never, never be used. We must be careful in cutting the posterior cortex because when the posterior cortex remains intact, it leads to plateau fracture, unstable lateral hinge, and increase in tibial slope. Now the complete ascending osteotomy is done with a new 0.45 mm thick, 15 mm wide, and 50 mm long uh, blade. This is first done parallel to the ground and once uh, parallel to the bone and once we have scored the mark the bone we go make it parallel to the ground so that we cut both the anterior and posterior cortex this is a a traumatic technique as it is being demonstrated by 2d fat suppressed imagine, images it should be done slowly with very little pressure under constant cooling and this is at the end of operation only the hematoma is seen at the fracture site there is no bone injury at three uh, weeks interval whiteness at the osteotomy site is due to hyperemia which is a sign of healing and at six weeks more hyperemia is seen which is indicative of more bone healing and the hematoma is reduced to bare minimum the Osteotomy is spread by chiseling technique, where subsequently chisels are passed to lesser degree. But when we do open the osteotomy, we have to be careful that the ascending osteotomy is parallel. The transverse osteotomy is thinner anteriorly and more posteriorly because of the geometry of tibia. And then we must check the correction in full extension with images at hip, knee, and ankle with the alignment rod or a special rod. And if need be, we can do fine tuning so that the alignment is perfect that what we had planned, about which we learned later. Relative position of the osteotomy to the tomofix has to be understood. Here it is one centimeter away. There is a gap of three centimeters between hole B and D. So the all the four holes are on to the proximal part. Distance between the hole D and 1 is 26 millimeters. For the screws to remain in the bone, this is opened only up to 22 degrees, where, as we said, no interpositional material is required. And the proximal part of the plate should remain parallel to the tibial slope. The solid segment of the bone uh, of the plate is over the bone so that both the D and one hole have good purchase and then we fix the plate by three long monocortical screws in the proximal part in an order of first A, C and then B. A temporary screw is applied in the neutral position, which is cortical, directed distally, and as we tight, it compresses the hinge laterally. Now the plate is fixed in the distal part by fixing screws in monocortical screws in hole two and three. The spacers are not touched till this stage. And after that, a spacer is removed from hole D from the same incision and a unicortical locking head screw is applied. After this, the bicortical compression screw is removed and discarded and we replace it with a locking bicortical mono. Uh, a cortical screw with locking head into the hole one and then finally a spacer from hole D is removed and it is replaced with a long monocortical screws. So at the end we have seven monocortical screws and only one bicortical screw. After the procedure wound is closed in layer, overflow drain is applied proximally 
a compression bandage is applied for eight minutes for clot stabilization. We do not apply VAC in this case. We want to retain the hematoma. So advantages of a biplanar osteotomy are when it is fixed with tomofix, it preserves the vascularity of the proximal fragment by minimal soft tissue dissection. It is inherently stable because it is bicortical. Gradual opening with adequate medial release is possible. Compression of the lateral hinge adds to the stability of the ankle stable, angular stable implant, which allows functional rehabilitation. Now, who is the ideal patient? Any patient who is physically active, I would say, irrespective of age, who has a tibia bone varus of more than 5 degrees, the opposite compartment intact, has a normal range of motion, and there is, if there is a 20 degree flexion deformity, it can be corrected during surgery by change of slope. These patients might have some pain on strenuous activity, so they must be warned about it. ACL, PCL deficiency could be treated with change of slope and obesity and smoking is not a contraindication with angle stable implant. This is one case. He was 61 year old. He came to me seven years back, bilateral OA knee, right symptoms are more than left. He was first operated on the right side. The medial proximal tibial angle on the right was 79. On the left was 78. This is at 17, 13 months follow up when he came for the other side. And what we see is that the joint space has opened clearly. That means the cartilage has started regenerating. At seven years follow up, the medial proximal tibial angles are maintained, and his knee score range of movement is maintained. Somehow the video is not running. Back. When we did a trial run, it was working. But the most important thing was the third sound of his foot on the steps was so loud and clear that gives the confidence that it is completely healed and is painless. So, any patient who has a bilateral tibia vera and has medial compartment OA knee. He is physically active. He should be treated by open wedge medial high tibial osteotomy. We should not close our eyes to evidence, science, art, and the need of our patient of sitting on the floor and should not advise them knee replacement at an early stage. They are young, they have to have their joint with them for the next 30, 40, 50 years. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Rastogi sir. It was a very enlightening uh, lecture and people can learn this osteotomy uh, 
while keeping all these points in mind. It is not difficult, but it is not so easy also. In spite of doing this osteotomy in a best way and post-operative picture, sometimes the results are not encouraging. Why? It is still not known. My one advice to have as a, a, a pre-operative assessment, the one point is take a valgus stress view in uh, uh, horizontal position or lying down position. And if the medial joint space opens more than two to three millimeters, then this osteotomy will work very nicely. But if the joint space is not opening up, then it is, uh, the results are unpredictable. Oh. <coughs> In the uh, 1980s, you know, we used to do simple Coventry osteotomy and we were getting good results, reasonably good results. But now understanding the multidirectional pathology of the osteoarthritis and trying to correct in multiple plates is definitely an advantage over the old procedure. I'm sure uh, at the end of the uh, discussion and conference, we'll be definitely enlightened about this new approach. Yes. Yes, yes. The link here. Can <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's not working. Yeah, I showed them in the preview. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, then. Both on a pen drive and the computer. Thank you very much, Dr. Rastogi. Now, I invite Dr. Mangal Pariha. Hello. Sorry for interruption. I would like to request our CEO, Dr. Manish Agarwal, sir, to come on stage. I will take only quick uh, one minute. I would like to share one uh, fact about this uh, uh, arrangement. And I would like to share about uh, Dr. Dinesh Thakkar. He has put his heart and soul to uh, organize this uh, wonderful workshop. And while we were felicitating uh, our uh, dignitary guests, so his name was also there, but he has refused. So that is his modesty. But later on, we thought because he has uh, he was instrumental to conduct this beautiful workshop. So without felicitating him, kuch na kuch adhura reh jayega. So we want to felicitate him. Please, Dr. Dinesh Thakkar, aye, aapka swagat hai. Till the thing starts, if anybody has a question on open wage, Dr. Rastogi is here with us. Anybody uh, is performing open wage and facing some difficulties, if anybody wants to ask any question. Yes, doctor. As we are doing osteotomy above the tuberosity, 
So the petala will behave in different manner once we open. It will go laterally. So in that situation, if the wedging releases, is more, if it releases the pressure in the particular femoral compartment and the area where the pain was there, and it has Q, regarding Q anger and the other effects which introduced, we are introducing. Right. So that will because of whereas it was less, it will move on to the other side on the lateral side and decompress the patellofemoral joint and relieve pain. Petla, Baha and Alta. If it is Baha, then you do a reverse osteotomy, which is not very common. So we, this is the, when it's Alta, you have done the osteotomy below. No, it is normal. Initially it was normal. Then what you are going to do in that case? That much is taken care of by lateral shift. But if it's Alta, it is not uh, taken. Otherwise, it will make it normal. But it's Baha, then you do the osteotomy in the reverse direction. Instead of ascending, you do a descending osteotomy. Thank you. Dr. Mangal Parier from Bombay, uh, a legend in this osteotomy, particularly with XPIX, and he has wonderful uh, cases to show to us. Dr. Parier, please. Thank you. So, um, I think uh, now it's, it's pretty well established. That you get good results with uh, high tibial osteotomy for a long term. Uh, 10 12 years uh, getting a good result with a high tibial osteotomy is not a problem. Um, as was pointed out earlier, the what we are looking for is a HKA, hip, knee, ankle, angle of 183 to 186 measured on the medial side. And you oh, need the weight bearing axis to huh? come somewhere around the come base of the lateral tibial uh, uh, spine. So basically, no, what you are doing okay. is getting equal load on the medial and lateral side. Now, therefore, if you undercorrect, you will continue to wear out on the medial side. If you overcorrect, there is always the risk of wear on the lateral side. So that is something. Uh, that to me is important to get the correction of an HTO accurately. So, we looked at some papers which are talking about the accuracy of everyone talks about good results, good results. But if you believe that the HKA should be at a particular angle, how often do you get that angle? Right? So, Marty et al. They looked at this, 36 uh, patients. In only 50% of those patients, the mechanical axis was in the desired position. 10 patients had under correction. So these are patients who may not last as long as you wish. And six patients had over correction. Another paper by uh, Van Demp, how accurately does high tibial osteotomy correct the mechanical axis? They looked at multiple papers. This was a systematic um, review. And here, the yellow is showing the targeted range, and the blue is showing the accuracy range. So you can see the surgeons, those studies have targeted a particular range, they have not been able to achieve that range because there is a large variation in the minimum and the maximum angles that they got. More importantly, if you look at the red, the pink and the blue, okay, there is only these uh, papers which have achieved that correction within a particular range. There are a large number of papers which are out of um, range. Right? So, these are 
navigated sort of um, HTOs, and therefore they have got their correction into a a large number has got the right range. But a lot of these, which are the standard way of of doing it, they don't have the uh, accurate correction. With navigation, you get a much more accurate uh, correction. So basically, their conclusion was that the accuracy of a high tibial osteotomy in the coronal plane leaves much to be desired. So you have to continue to improve your accuracy. Now, here is my experience. I do a fair bit of uh, open wedge high tibial osteotomies. So here's a 66 year old female with pain in both knees, unable to walk without pain, reduced walking speed, severe virus. Because she's 66 years old, she's already in the age group for a knee replacement. So I don't mind doing a uh, plate for this because even if it does not last for very long, she's still in the age group for a um, TKR. So that's her x-ray on presentation. This is the uh, planning that we do because she's got what we call an increased LDFA, which was 94. She needs both a closing wedge DFO and an opening wedge HTO. So we do the DFO closing wedge biplanar that is fixed. And then after femur correction, the black line that you see is the alignment rod that comes in the set. So she is still in varus, whereas pre-op, her varus was way beyond the uh, medial aspect. After doing the DFO, she is uh, better, but not fully corrected. After doing the HTO, we fine-tune it, get the alignment at the base of the lateral tibial spine. This is the intraop. Um, this is the intraop C arm picture. But full length X-ray postoperative when the patient is weight bearing shows significant overcorrection. Instead of being at the base of the lateral tibial spine, she is way onto the lateral side. So that is something. Patients oftentimes don't like. This patient is doing well, seven years uh, post-op. She doesn't have any problem. But patients don't like excessive valgus. The point I'm making here is that despite taking all kinds of care in terms of planning, you have trouble in terms of achieving the accuracy. Here's another one. Weight-bearing axis way onto the medial side. The plan just like um, Dr. Rastogi described, calculate the angle of correction. We don't use the cotricord. We use an alignment rod. We use axial pressure as described by the original technique uh, to simulate weight bearing. And you can see the weight bearing axis on table where it is uh, going on the lateral tibial spine. But surprise, surprise, when we do a weight bearing, a full length x ray, she is overcorrected. Right? So, patient is fine. Clinically, no, no question. But it is overcorrection. So, where is this variability of the correction with a tomofix? It's in the JLCA. You see this? This is the variability that occurs in a patient who has a little bit of. Um, laxity that in terms of where the mechanical axis passes. So, I also do a similar kind of osteotomy when I do it with the fixator. It's a distal to tuberosity, but it's not a complete osteotomy aiming at the tip of the fibula, just like Dr. Aslogi pointed out with the AO. We leave an intact hinge, but this is the difference where. This is the osteotomy that we do with the tomofix. And this is the red one is the osteotomy that we do uh, with the HTO fixator. And at the end of it all, we have an osteotomy that is complete enough to be manipulated easily. This, is, this, this whole technique is available on uh, YouTube. 
if you are interested in looking at it but essentially this gives us an osteotomy that is loose enough to be opened out and with a lat uh, intact lateral hinge so the patient comes out of surgery with the leg as crooked as it was before surgery so you can see the mpta which was less than 90 is at the end of surgery when there is no distraction is still less than 90 over um, the next 20 21 days this distraction happens and the mpta then changes to the appropriate level around a hinge which is marked by that orange arrow so here in this patient the angle of correction was 13 degrees the hka was 170 we have taken this abnormal there is there are methods described to factor in this abnormal joint line convergence angle and according to our plan we needed 21 days of distraction to get this angle corrected at the end of 21 days there is a phenomenon called tipping over it suddenly from more weight on the medial side more weight on the lateral side and it suddenly tips over so now despite our calculation the hk is now 190.7 with a distraction of 17 millimeters we compressed it by two two days the hka which we want between 183 to 186 has gone down to 187 and four days compression it goes down to 185.5 so that's the whole series pre-op according to our plan of 21 days distraction which turned out to be too much but because we had the fixator we can reduce it and get the weight bearing axis uh, to the point that we want so that to me if it is under corrected we just need to continue distraction for a few days so post fixator removal the fixator was locked um, at 185 with a net distraction of 17 days so that is is to me the biggest advantage of using um, an external fixator what about accuracy when you do it with the fixator there are papers um, on this this is this is from india from uh, jaipur actually sms medical college so these guys with the aim of achieving 2 to 8 degrees of valgus and um, the weight bearing axis the desired alignment was at, at, attained in 84 percent of the knees which is pretty high compared to what those pictures you saw um, earlier um <clears throat> this is a paper that uh, as was done by my student looking at our cases so the goal in our cases was to achieve 183 to 186 again our goals were achieved in 24 out of the 30 patients that were um, studied so in conclusion fixator allows for infinite correction or infinite um manipulation or or fine tuning in a weight bearing position 80% accuracy with the fixator versus 50% accuracy with internal fixation i believe and the papers show that accuracy of correction is equal to longevity of um, correction and that is why i think that using an external fixator certainly um, has an important role to play especially when you have younger patients patient 55 60 doesn't matter even if it lasts for eight years they are still well within tkr age we are seeing patients of 35 and 40 you need to carry these patients for at least 15 20 years and they're getting as much accuracy as you can is very very important thank you uh thank you dr manga uh i would like to know from you one thing why deciding preoperatively about the angle of correction do you take 
ligaments into consideration? And if yes, how? Yes. Um, uh, one of the slides I showed where there was a, a joint line conversion. So there is a sort of formula for that. And we say whatever you get angle of correction on a weight bearing X-ray, you have to subtract half of the JLC because when it tips over that JL, suppose the joint line convergence angle, it's, it's divergent by about six degrees. When you correct it, it's not going to remain divergent by six degrees. So we say uh, half of that joint line con convergence angle should be subtracted. So when all, all the planning that we do, we take that into account. And then even with the open wedge, when we do it with a plate, the final decision, really speaking, is taken on table. When you are looking at what is the alignment that you have um, achieved. So we do the planning with the fixator for the simple reason that if I find 21 days, then around 21 days, I will call the patient for a repeat full length x-ray. Right? So on, on with the open wedge in a plate, you fine tune on table. Here we fine tune it later on. Very true. Because uh, when we take the post-operative x-ray, usually it is not taken in weight bearing position. And so you don't get the correct idea about the correction. As soon as the weight is born, we it find that increases. it is over correction. So that, that is exactly what I have also found. Jawahar, yeah. Thank you. So my point is that regarding a controversy in what we are judging, we are taking weight bearing x-ray, we are deciding the angle, but on operation table, we are not having weight bearing. And we decide that this is the alignment which is corrected or not. So when weight bearing occurs, it differs a lot. And that is the confusion is that, that whatever we have decided, it happens something surprising when patient starts walking. And that also not on the second day. In three months time, the ligament on one side, other is going to lengthen or is going to contract. So my question is, when you are doing this surgery, so if you are doing surgery non-weight bearing, then take non-weight bearing into calculation, not the weight bearing in a pre-operative side, because you are doing going to get everything on table like this. But in a case where the correction is little less, do you do medial collateral ligament release and try to see on table that now correction is good instead of widening the osteotomy? No. Um... One of the primary uh, points about at least the tomofix is that you should release the MCL right way down and ensure that the MCL is not tight. Because if the MCL is tight and you create, even if you create valgus, you would still increase the pressure on the medial side. So, uh, uh, to, to, to the extent that you may need to section the MCL is part and parcel of the tomofix procedure. So when it's you not only the alignment. Uh, so when you section, how many degrees corrected? So soft tissue correction is also happening there. Um, yes and no. In the sense, before I do um, the surgery in, in, in any patient, I always have stress views, valgus stress views in full extension. Contracture of the medial collateral ligament is a myth. It doesn't happen. So, if, unless you do this, you will not believe it. No, that is true. But then when you cut it fully, if it is not, it's a myth, then why do you, why do you cut? Well, for because, because you are increasing the space inside. The, inside this, this MCL, this much space, you are now widening that space. So then the MCL becomes tight. So you either you release it right down or you do fish tailing up to the extent that some, I personally do uh, release and fish tailing, but to the extent that some people would describe even sectioning it to ensure that it is 
not tight. You can't leave with it tight. What What do you do, Ajit? Uh, increase. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, releasing the MCL and fishtailing is a very double-edged sword. In a, uh, it's a part and parcel. Of, if you do the tomofix technique, then it's a part and parcel. It's a described yes, technique. Because this is all a clinical judgment, how much this ligament, a medial collateral ligament is contracted or not contracted. But once you release it, once you release it, you have to be very careful about the overcorrection part. Because if it is overly corrected, then it is going to give a lot of problems uh, in the post-op, long-term post-op period. Like what? Uh, like uh, it will be a medial, once the force crosses the medial collateral line, the body force crosses the medial collateral line and your mechanical axis is at a Fujisawa point, it is going to stretch out the medial collateral more and more. And this joint is going to become not more true, unstable not in long term. I, I don't agree. Yeah, sir, sir after, after how many years? It can start happening after two to three years. So what is the what is the what the patient is going to tell you? Let us say that you have found out patient that it is, has become this, this. The patient is going to tell you uh, uh, regarding the instability in walking sometimes, the medial ankle pain and lateral ankle pain. Sometimes the subtalar pain. Sir, seven years follow-up is already shown with a valgus, excessive valgus. And I have at least I have three videos. See, this excessive val see excessive valgus, what we see on mechanical axis is different than the excessive valgus happening in the actual force, resultant vector force. If that resultant vector force crosses a particular line, then these things happen. And it is likely to happen more if you have released the medial collateral ligament, either fish tailing or totally release. So you have to be very careful. So stress view, if probably leaving a medial collateral ligament as it is and doing an excessive correction is a better idea. I think no, it is a better I, idea. The, one of the, yeah. there, are, there are articles which have shown an increase in pressure with doing valgus if you don't release the MCL. So that's why I'm saying that MC, the problem is if we take up a particular technique, then we have to do that technique as per the originators. Yes. The other thing what so can happen the, the, the is if you don't release right, the medial right? collateral ligament and you're doing the excessive correction, you're creating a lot of compressive force on the medial yeah. condyle. So this is like, it is very, open wedge. Very, open wedge. Open, I'm talking of open wedge. I'm talking of open wedge. Open wedge. So uh, if you're not releasing MCL the, and I'm doing excessive as, correction. As doctor the suggested, No, I'm not talking of gradual correction or an acute correction. It is MCL tightness I'm talking. Yeah, it's not touching the MCL. I think that is a better idea for a excessive correction for compensating the joint joint deformities. That is a better idea. Uh, I think I think now is only sir only one time. No, no, only one one comment which I want to put. When should the medial joint open? On the table or later? Uh, even before table, I told you. When I do a valgus stress x-ray, I use the valgus stress x-ray in extension to show the patient that your gap is less than that. And if the alignment is right, then the gap is open. And any patient can see that and says, yes, now the gap is open. I would add one point. Yes. JLCA, if it is less than three, then a weight bearing x-ray should be done. If JLCA is more than three, then a non-weight bearing x-ray should be taken for planning. It's very the, difficult. The, the other method was what Dr. Mangar had suggested. If it is more than three, then add only half of it to the correction. It's very difficult, if not impossible, to do a non-weight bearing full length x-ray. Uh, Another it's, a, I, it's, a, it's on the same table. In the same I table. invite Dr. Dines, who has popularized this osteotomy in Gujarat. Uh, we forget one thing. Apart from correction of the axis, the control of pain is also caused by decongestion of the marrow. 
okay uh, good morning everybody we have a uh, very devoted interactive session in the afternoon and we are running behind so there is a so much of time lag so please please keep your questions in your mind and we will all the questions we'll solve in the afternoon session so uh, what i am talking about is a close wedge uh, hto that is uh, that is particular not described in book but i am regularly doing this technique and uh, i agree that as a beginner if you want to start the high tibial osteotomy the most easiest method is as dr mangal has described that is with external fixator because everything is in your hand and is very easy you can correct afterwards also only i feel about the patient compliance because in era of total knee replacement uh, everybody wants fast results and if they have to move with external fix fixator for three months then it becomes a bit cumbersome that's why uh, even though it's uh, ideal method uh, i refrain i usually resistant to do that but if you want to do ideal uh, high tibial osteotomy then we should start with external fixator with your patient in your confidence that they have to give a little more time so what i perform is the most practical and probably the most effective osteotomy that can sustain against total knee replacement because why total knee replacement is popular only reason is that it gives quick results so many people from far have must have come in the flight even though train is coming but why they came in the flight because it's very fast so the same thing happens here also total knee replacement becomes popular only reason the very fast results so close wedge osteotomy is not as fast as total knee replacement but can compete with the total knee replacement close wedge osteotomy that is what i want to discuss first as already discussed by all that proper planning prevents poor performance if you fail to plan we plan to fail already discussed we should not uh, plan on the this short x rays because here we can see that only there is this has been cut here a screen nano karo par sa i don't know adjust kar ain kapai jaye so this is here we can see that it's a 7 degree and if we take a full length x ray this is long axis of femur long axis of tibia this is 7 uh, degree here the same x ray full length we can see the bowing of femur here and long axis of femur long axis of tibia it's a 12 degree suppose if we have plan according to this then we may end up in the uh, under correction so what i mean to say by looking this much picture we cannot plan anything if we look full we may have something else so this is what the main basic thing nowadays in the era of, in the 21st century in 2022 we cannot plan in the short films so this we, we are going to discuss in detail but i am mentioning in the close way this is the weight bearing axis this is line 1 that is our plan weight bearing axis after surgery and then we are doing close wedge so that's why hinge will come on the medial side in open wedge hinge will come on the head of the fibula and this is the correction angle what we will do exercise that will be for open wedge and i have informed here for the close wedge at the side this is the osteotomy side i remove the wedge according to the measurement this wedge has been removed fibular osteotomy is also being done in close wedge and this is how we correct this is very simple remove the wedge close it and fix it with the plate and screws so the osteotomy site is metaphyseo diaphyseal here it is cutting sort nahi tha this is cutting here मैग्निफिकेशन ऊंचू करो ना दिस इज कटिंग यस ठीक है कोई आ इफ समबडी डू सी एपेक्स शुड बी एग्जैक्टली ऑन द medial border that is what i wanted to show this apex should be exactly on the medial side yes, 
મિડિયલ બોર્ડર and base in the lateral border bas ye aare the rahe the full screen na kar so this is okay this is okay okay so apex should be exactly on the medial border then and then correction will be complete like this the wedge is being removed like this and it will be closed after fibular osteotomy right if suppose apex is lateral to the medial cortex then there are chances of over correction it closes like this then there will be some opening here so it will it can lead to the over correction and if apex is away from the medial cortex then there will be under correction it will go up and then close and then it will end up in the so important is apex should be exactly in the medial border with a patella in the center right so if in absence of flexion deformity this should be the parallel on laterals aspect if we do like this there will be some pro curvatum and if we do like this there will be some recurvation but if we want to correct the flexion deformity then we have to follow this today in live surgery we have a flexion deformity about 10 to 13 degrees so we will remove the wedge like this in this live surgery so this is how base of wedge for correction this is the beautiful things that happen that we can perform in closed wedge most of the patient we must have observed that there is 5 or 10 degree of flexion deformity that is fixed we have to calculate after given spinal anesthesia many times what happens in after spinal anesthesia ffd decreases so if you have pre, uh, done planning pre operatively then we may have a false calculation so after giving spinal anesthesia we have to roughly estimate that this uh, this much of flexion deformity and then uh, we have to plan like this so these are the equipments what we are using this clamp plate and this wedges pre prepared wedges so what the exactly the osteotomy is osteotomy is what starts from the diaphysis ends at the metaphysis we don't cut the posterior cortex this posterior cortex we keep intact only distal limb will be cut and this distal fragment will be slight with the proximal fragment like this right so and it look like this this is a step cut osteotomy so this will give a very good stability to the osteotomy and we preserve the lateral cortex with the attachment like this this we will see in the live surgery this with soft tissue attachment we detach like this here we can see and this wedge has been removed and this will be closed and this will remain vascularized graft post operatively this patient this is what 47 year old female 
kid with pain in right knee since two years on examination, no full fixed flexion deformity with full range of movement, no ACL, PCL laxity. This has been planned. And as uh, uh, here we have discussed that actually I am planning uh, all the osteotomy in a non-weight bearing full length extent because there is always a, some laxity of medial, lateral collateral ligament. If we take a weight bearing X-ray and non-weight bearing X-ray, there will be a uh, change in the angle. So I usually plan in non-weight bearing. So if we see here, weight bearing is a 10 degree. Here it's a seven degree, you know. This is, sorry, it is written reverse. Here is, this is weight bearing X-ray. This is non-weight bearing X-ray. If we plan like this, we are, from planning, we are doing three degree over correction. Right, so we have to plan on this x ray. This is non weight bearing. Sorry, it's a re written reverse. I'm very sorry for that. But HTO is a game of only four degree, so we cannot afford to have over correction or under correction. Suppose if we desire angulation is 10, uh, femorotibial angle is 10 degree, we can range up to 8 to 11 degree, not we can have it to 15 degree. So it's a game of only four degrees. So we are doing pre operative planning in non weight bearing. CU has planned for the close wedge. This is how the preoperative planning is made by Miniaki method. That exercise we are going to do after this uh, lecture. And the, our aim is to see if the weight bearing exists. This is how our weight plan weight bearing exists is like here. It's near Fujisawa point. So this, I use lower femoral line as a reference. This line I use as a reference to check on table whether I have achieved correct or correct or not. So. Our plan long axis of tibia is this in reference to lower femoral line. And we will take per operative x-ray and measure the angle that whether we have achieved it or not. Sorry, we will. I will uh, not show the uh, surgery because we are going to have a live surgery. We will save time here. So this is per operative x-ray after temporary fixation of this, I put, I keep template in the theater. I took X-ray like this on table. Then I will put on this template. This is shows normal axis, right? This is a Sasta navigation. This is Sasta navigation. This per operative X-ray, I will put on this, matching with the lower femoral line. This is normal alignment, and this is little lower correction. We can appreciate that. We can draw a line additional also on this template that our desired long axis of tibia after surgery is this. So that is how I do Sasta navigation on table. And then after all, it will give us the perfect alignment. And ex what I have explained already, that I keep this posterior cortex intact from here. I cut only this one. I keep this with soft tissue attachment lateral cortex. So it will, will work as a vascularized graph. And if we close it, it looks like this. I fix it with tension bend wiring between these two screws on the lateral side and medial tomofix plate fixation. This is a vascularized graph. We can see here, this is after fixation and closure. So it will be, all the cortices will be in the contact and this gap also can be filled with the bone graft because removed wedge, we can use it as a bone graft. And if we see lateral aspect, this blue putty is representing the vascular attachment and this will be fixed with this tension bend wiring. So this will uh, vascularize lateral graph. And if we look posteriorly, this posterior strong cortex that supports the distal tibia. That is how, and if we see the X-ray post-operative, this is after surgery, we can see that weight bearing axis is very well passing near the Fujisawa point and mechanical valgus of four degree that is acceptable range is three to six degree and femorotibial angle is 10 degree. That is what uh, considered as a ideal correction. And this is the lateral view of the x-ray and this is after surgery the beauty of this is that on the second day post-operative day we can allow her to walk partial weight bearing right this is uh, on the day two patient can walk partial weight bearing that is the uh, that uh, or another thing now initially i was doing one after the other but now i have changed that we can do both together this lady, if she is young, less than 55 or 50 and good physical health, then I do bilateral high-tibial in the same sitting because patient wants comfort. 
and they don't want to spend time three months for one limb and three months for another limb. So the C was planned for both sides, a single sitting. This scanogram shows six degree of virus on right side and 10 degree of virus on left side. And we have corrected both sides. This is after bilateral high degree of osteotomy. And after this close, hardly we can see the osteotomy. See here, hardly, this is the cortex. If we have a proper lateral view, then this cortex is supporting the proximal fragment. So this cortical is a very strong bone that supports the proximal fragment. And hardly you can see osteotomy here. So it's a very stable construct. So we can have a weight bearing uh, on the, th uh, if I have done bilateral, then I little bit delay, but on the fourth day, C is walking uh, with a bilateral HTO. I yellow just for them to go th for the toilet purpose only. And after six weeks, they can have some more liberty. So these are the, this is the surgery we are going to perform after preoperative planning. And uh, this is what we have to see. We are running lack of uh, very behind the time. So I will not waste much time. We have a lot of time for discussion in the afternoon session. Don't worry, every question will be solved, but we have interactive sessions in the afternoon. So at present, all will become hungry and unnecessarily we want to deal, we don't want to deal. So now uh, pre-operative planning exercise will be started. Pre-operative planning exercise. Everybody has been given group A and group B. So group A people will be sitting inside the hall and group B people will be for the tea break, right? Group A will be inside the hall and group B will be for the tea break. And after 50, after tea break is over, you can move to the stalls also during that time because we have 15 minutes for tea break. So after tea, you can move to the stalls and then the ring wheels, we will ring bajega, ganti bajegi or aapko andar anay or un logo ko bar janay. Uh, thank you, thank you, Dinesh Bhai. Please. नहीं नहीं सर हो जाएगा वो भी पांच मिनट में एक हो जाएगा सर हाय अत्यार आप आह एक्सरसाइज वन टू थ्री एक हो गया Three going next, right? 
ठीक है नहीं जैसे सही जैसे एक मिनट अभी ये ऐसे ही रखो उसको फुल स्क्रीन यूज करो दिखाना है क्या क्या नहीं इसमें कट हो जाता है दैट इज द इशू यू कैन चेंज इट फ्रॉम हियर राइट यहां से चेंज इट कर सकते हैं यहां यहां ये भी कर सकते हैं ये ये ले लो ये नेक्स्ट करो बिल्कुल बस सीधी एक्सरसाइज ही है आधा मिनट दे दीजिए जब तक आप नहीं तब तक सीधी हो जाएगी now we move on to the most exciting part of the conference whereby we'll do a drawing exercise to know what the deformity is whether this patient would require correction where because as we understand all tibia vera all varus knee are not the same the deformity could be at the lower end of the femur at the upper end of the tibia or at both so what pele has shown us we have to do correction where the deformity exists the cora now another thing which i want to request is please work carefully and this is the first exercise one which we are going to do you can write your names on it and of the two batches the best drawing will get a price so there are three domains of learning and they are knowledge which you already have attitude you have realized that the osteotomy helps and number 3 the skills so now we are on the third part you all know what fuji sawa point is by now because this is the point you will require to draw the weight bearing line what you finally want to have when the cartilage is totally lost and this is the hinge point it is parallel and just proximal to the tibio fibular joint this is the lateral hinge joint because once we come to the drawing these are the two points which are not properly understood so i have clarified this here now since the time is short either you follow this so that you understand the concept and then we go to the exercise 3 and there where you draw i think that will be more practical and feasible so you have a plastic sheet given you keep, you keep it at the center i think if you see this it will be more useful and you can ask questions now but when you go to the real exercise there then you can draw it because when you start concentrating on now you will not be able to follow the rest of it everybody agrees with this so we will not do this exercise one we will just follow it to see and it is a normal so that you know how to draw so you mark the center of the hip and you use the plastic sheet which has been given and then you mark the two most convex points on the femoral condyle we all know this continue to say yes then we draw a connecting line this is the distal femoral joint line correct then we draw two dotted perpendicular line onto this line just 
flushing the femoral condyle. These two lines. Yes. Your colleague must be having. I had given hundred. Bhaiya sir, sir, organizer sir, puchho. Plastic sheet di thi center mark karne ke liye. Jab tak aapka number aega, tab tak aa jayegi. Anybody from the organizers here? एक प्लास्टिक शीट दी थी बाहर जाके मदद कर दीजिए पूछ के बता दीजिए तो जो भी है तो मदद तो कर दो इतनी यार डॉक्टर साहब को जाना पड़ रहा है बट यू विल नीड व्हेन यू आर डूइंग इट एट प्रेजेंट यू डोंट नीड इट यू विल गेट इट नाउ यू मार्क द सेंटर ऑफ फीमोरल कंडाइड हाउ डू यू डू दिस ऑफ दिस लाइन ड्रॉन हियर You mark the center. This is the lower end of the femur. सबको बटवा दीजिए. बोलो ना पे है. यहीं बने रहो. बोलो है. जिस पे नहीं है दे दो. काम आगे बढ़ाओ. Mark the center of the femur of condyle. Is it clear? Say yes. yes. Mark two points on the most concave aspect of the tibial. Plateau subchondral line. Now this is little tricky. You have a white line, newborn formation because of the pressure in the tibia. So you take that subchondral line and point mark these two points, right? And then you join, and this is the upper tibial joint line. It's clear. It is the subchondral line at upper end of tibia. On the medial side, that subchondral bone is more, so it is little lower. Then you draw two dotted perpendicular line onto the joint line, flushing the tibial condyle. Again, the same thing. This is the tibial condyle. You draw two dotted lines. So this is the width of the upper end of the tibia, and you mark the center of it. So this is the center of the tibial condyle right is it clear is it clear ne now similarly you mark two points at the either end of the ankle prefond line this is here right and then draw a connecting line that is a distal tibial joint line right now you draw two dotted lines perpendicular to the distal tibial joint line and this is flushing the talus so that gives the width of the prefond and on that you mark the center this is the tibial prefond and now you are ready to draw the lines and you connect the center of the hip to the center of the ankle and it should pass within 15 mm of the center of the tibia is it clear so if it is passing within the this 15 mm that means this is normal and this patient does not require surgery his cause for knee pain could be something else right if this is done th then we go to the exercise 2 and you will take exercise 3 paper with you exercise 3 papers now we will have to do it exercise 3 paper and please write your name if you are interested in the first prize all have written their names should i move nobody has said yes exercise 3 with names on This is exercise three. 
do i have to skip so what you have done is you have marked the center of the hip now we'll go slow so once you have marked the center of the hip with the plastic sheet if you have So you have marked the center of the hip. Yes. Good. Then you mark two most convex points on the femoral condyle. Those who have done can raise their hands. Good. And then you draw a connecting line. This is the distal femoral joint line. So once you have drawn your hands become free, just raise them. Now you draw two dotted perpendicular line onto the femoral condyle flushing the femoral condyle. These are the lines, dotted lines which you have drawn. Per yes, since they are perpendicular to the distal femoral joint line, they will be parallel. So rather than trying to draw parallel, it is better to draw perpendicular to the femoral condyle. These should flush the femoral condyle. They are perpendicular to this line, but they are flushing the femoral condyle. Is it correct? Those who have done it can raise their hands. So we move on to the next. Now you draw center, mark the center of the femoral condyle. That means center between the two dotted perpendicular lines. Once you have marked the center, keep marking, keep raising your hand. Now we mark the two points on the concave aspect of tibial plateau subcondral line. You want to ask something? Flushing the condyles, yes. So, what is the problem? Yes, perpendicular means 90 degree. I am not saying parallel. This is the femoral joint line. This is the dotted perpendicular line. Right, you have to draw perpendicular. You have to draw perpendicular to this femoral joint line, flushing the femoral condyles. This is, this is the femoral condyle. This is the femoral condyle and it is flushing them. Right? And since I'm here, and then you mark the center between this point and this point, where these lines cross, right? Basic idea is to mark the center of the femoral condyle. And what is femoral condyle? It's medial and the lateral limit. So subcondral line. And as I told you, on the medial side, subcondral bone is removed because the pressure is more, especially when there's a varus knee. So this is what you mark carefully. So this is being done. Then you draw 
a line joining these two points. And this is the upper tibial joint line. When you have drawn it, raise your hands. Keep marking, keep tracing. And then you draw two dotted perpendicular line touching the tibial condyle. Right? The idea is so that you can mark the center. Is it clear? If you have done, then we can move on. Raise your hands. All have not done. I'll wait for a while. Then you mark the center of tibial condyle. So you have marked the center of the tibial condyle. Now we mark two points on the either end of the tibial plafond. Here. And then you draw a connecting line between these two points and this will give you the distal tibial femoral, distal tibial joint line. So distal tibial joint line is marked. I will wait for a while for some more hands to be raised. Now you draw a connecting line at the distal tibial joint line and this is flushing the talus. So now you have the center of the platform to be marked and once you draw a connect center of this line which is This will be the center of the ankle joint. Now you draw a connecting line center of the hip to the center of the ankle joint and draw this with red pen because we know looking at it that this is varus and red is danger sign that means it's a varus so draw it with a red pen center of the hip to the center of the ankle now where this joint line is passing quite medial to the center of the knee joint, am I right? If everybody has done it, say loudly yes. and you understand this point. Yes. So if it is passing medially, that means this is deformed. So this is the patient who would require surgery. Now we have to decide 
where the deformity is. Is in the lower end of the femur, upper end of the tibia or both, right? So we move on further. We have drawn this line and then we draw a line from the center of the hip to the center of the femur. Then we connect center of the tibial condyle to the center of the ankle joint. Now, what is lateral distal femoral angle? This is the angle. It is lateral, it is distal, and is a femoral angle. And since it's a mechanical axis, it is written as a small m and capital. L D F A, right? Is it clear? And we measure this we measure this mechanical lateral distal femoral angle, which is this angle here, and we also measure the medial. But uh, proximal tibial angle. And it is a various deformity. We also measure the lateral distal tibial angle. Now you have to measure this and let me know before we proceed further. So, whatever lines you have drawn, I want you to measure this angle right and this angle. So, what is the angle in the lower end of the femur on the lateral side? Anybody? A anybody who says it is beyond the range of 85 and 90? Why I said that was because that is the normal range. Ideally, it is 87, but range is 85 to 90. So, what it tells us, the distal end of the femur is normal. It is not contributing to the varus deformity. Clear? So, we have to find out where it is. Now, you measure the medial proximal tibial angle. What are the reading? Anybody else? Anybody else which is not, anybody is getting higher than 85, let us put it this way. Nobody is getting higher than 85. It is below 85. That means this is the area where the deformity lies. Normal medial proximal tibial angle has to be between 85 to 90. One figure is 87. Is it clear? So, now where the deformity is? Upper end tibia. Now, we proceed further. So, we have measured this and everybody is correct. So, now what we do? That this patient would require a medial. How would you treat it? E either by a medial open wedge high tibial osteotomy. And since this workshop is on medial high tibial osteotomy, I will proceed now with the option of planning for a medial open wedge high tibial osteotomy. Beyond this, a close to that's how we plan, but this is what not, not our cup of tea today. So, up now, since you are correcting it is green, so you draw with green. So, you draw the desired weight bearing line. This was the pathological weight bearing line. But since the total cartilage was lost, we want it to pass through the Fujisawa point and which I have shown was on the descent of the part of the tibial spine on laterally. Is it clear? Is it clear? 
So you draw that line and naturally it will go away from the ankle joint laterally. Green line. Everybody is happy with this? Any questions? Now you mark the hinge point. I have shown you the hinge point. It was at the upper tibiofibular joint, just outside the joint. So your osteotomy should not enter the tib proximal tibiofibular joint. And it is marked with red. I am with you. This is the hinge point. This is the proximal tibiofibular joint. This is tip of the fibula and it should be here, just proximal to it. So that your osteotomy does not enter the proximal tibiofibular joint. That is the reason I had shown this and that's the reason I followed back that much. Right? Is it clear? It is worth the effort. We were here, right? So we have marked the hinge point and then we draw a line from the hinge point to the ankle joint center. So once we have done the osteotomy and open this up, this limb is going to move. And how much we move it? We move it till yeah, yeah. <coughs> So, we have drawn a line from this hinge point A to the center of the ankle. Perfect? Yes. Now, we move this line from the center of the hinge, from the hinge point to the ankle onto the planned weight bearing line. So once we move the leg that much out, the deformity will be corrected. Is it clear? Everybody? And now this is the angle which we are getting. Is it clear? And what we call? This we call is a angle alpha which is in between line B2 and 3 in green color. Hinge joint to the center of the ankle. We rotate this line. This is the rotation which is taking place. And it will come, uh, cut the weight bearing line somewhere. Right? you move this line to here, right? And wherever it cuts, that is the point. But what it has given us? It has given us an angle of rotation. When you do an open wedge osteotomy, you are moving the distal uh, fragment laterally. So th that is giving us an angle, right? Now, what is this angle? This angle is alpha. Between line 2 and line 3 in green color. Is it clear? This is the correction angle. Clear with everybody?
Say that again. This is hinge point. This is hinge point. Say yes. This is center of the ankle. Yes. You move it here. This is the movement showing by this arrow. But which is uh, how you decide where the intersection of that hinge point will Once lie. you move this, it will cut somewhere. Okay. Not parallel to anything. It will move by this angle. How, I mean, we have to use that film. Pardon me? Plastic sheet. How you rotate? Anything. No, no, no. Anything. You have the line. You can measure it and mark it. You can you can take a compass. You need a compass in that situation. Or you can measure it. If this line is, say, on your paper, how much this line is? Measure it. You you can measure it on your papers. I'll give you the definitive answer. What is the length of the line from the hinge point to the center of ankle? Ten. Now you mark a point at 10 from A to, no, A to on line number 3. The point is not known. So once you have marked that point, this is where the ankle center will come. Is it clear now? Is it clear or not clear? Uh, in my situation, I'm, I'm getting uh, 9.7. Oh, that's fine. So, so just that that measurement is to be identified over, over that Fujisawa point line. Yes. Huh. Or the future weight bearing line. Not Fujisawa line, but the future yes. weight bearing line, which was drawn in green, which is number three here. Okay. Right? Thanks. Now you have formed an angle between line two and line three. And which is the shaded angle? I am not interested in that. You have measured that angle. Right? Now, where you want to do the osteotomy? Hinge point is the end point. Medially where? Medial length of tibia. Where? Perfect. And how do you feel it? Thumb. <laughs> I thought you were going to say my foot. <laughs> so, this is the point. Now, when you are drawing, say somebody said 16, you draw an angle of 16 degrees, half of it above, half of it below this line. Point. Right? And that is what we have done. We have transferred that angle onto the medial side at the hinge point. Right? Forget everything, what you have done. Just take the angle and put it from the hinge point medially, where, where the center of the convex and concave point comes on the medial side. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, whatever it is. Do we? Why, why you, do, you, you cannot just measure it. You, but you have to put on the tracing because we have something more to do now. Now we go further, and where it cuts the bone, proximally it is point B. And the way we had transferred length of the tibia, similarly, now we transferred the width of the tibia. Say this AB is 1 centimeter, 1.2 centimeter, whatever it is. Right? You mark the point AC onto the lower line. Right? And now you measure B to C. 
and that is the height of osteotomy which you are going to open on table. And to see it better, this is what it was. This is hinge point. This was the angle which has been transferred here. This is B, similar length here C, and the height is B to C. Right? So now everything is clear. Say yes or ask a question. Say that again. You can forget about D. D was the line which was drawn by this angle. This was the angle. But we will not measure height from B to D. We will measure the height from B to C. Right? Because the width of the TBI is up to A to C only. You can see BD is bigger than BC. Is this clear? Any questions? डॉक्टर दिनेश को कह दीजिए ये काम पूरा हो गया दूसरे बैच को भेज दें इट्स क्लियर बट वाई देर साइलेंस you have taken that angle from here transverse this angle here this is the center where the convex and the concave point meets half of it angle is above half of it angle is below that's it you you you, you have this right transfer that angle here by whichever method you don't whichever method you want to mark it so if this is clear and there are no questions thank you very much for your attention and application i am happy that everybody applied please deposit your sheets which you can collect later for your records i will request dr mangal parihar to mark which was the best in this batch write your name submit your papers you can take your answer sheet later dr parihar will help me know which is the best and the next once it's been seen an award is there awaiting for you since you applied yourself thoroughly initially i thought i'll give only one now i'll give two one for this batch one for the next batch please deposit because we have to cover one other batch more and then we come to the program and t is waiting outside oh dr parihar has the secret nice samosas are there hurry up before they get over they will not wait ha bhaiya ise pehle pe la do bhai ji pehle pe हाँ इसी प्रेजेंटेशन की यही काम दोबारा करना है अगर दो घूट पानी मिल जाएगा तो बड़ी मेहरबानी होगी पानी पीना दो घूट सिर्फ दो घूट यहाँ बोतल रखी है कहीं
नहीं और ऊपर और ऊपर भैया और ऊपर ठीक है मैं समझ गया थैंक यू हाँ तो अभी सबको रखना पड़ेगा आप जानो जो कहो मैं करूँ नहीं नहीं ऐसा नहीं है अभी उधर से प्लास्टिक सीट कलेक्ट नहीं करने वापस नहीं फिर याद रखेंगे तो मैं ऊपर सर्जरी के लिए सब रेडी है हेलो हाँ बोलो एक मिनट चाहू रख चाहू ये तो ऑर्गेनाइजर का काम है मेरे तुमसे कहो रुक जाओ मैं रुक जाऊंगा बोल रहा था मैं क्या बोल रहा था क्योंकि ऊपर अभी सर्जरी स्टार्ट हो रहा है लाइफ सर्जरी नहीं या तो वो अभी करें नहीं अभी वो बात समझिए या बीस मिनट बात करने उनसे पूछो जो चाहे सर्जरी तो स्टार्ट हो ही जाएगी उसमें तुम डिले नहीं कर सकते दूसरे ग्रुप का खत्म होने के बाद करें तो आपका डिसीजन होना चाहिए एक सेकेंड सर यस सर applied this point yeah with koshi with uh, um, sabaguchi and with uh, stop okay then i have uh, uh, corrections because there is no ao guideline on this okay but i, I follow what i say so that's fine no 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 but the only thing is it will give the angle as 180 degrees yeah but when you do a correction you want this angle to be Japanese Koshino. Hmm. He was doing what we are saying. Yeah. But now it has come to. Yes. Fine. But. Sir, sir, uh, is this line? Uh, what about the eight? Eight or eight? Okay. Got it. Is that right? Sir? Is that right? This one. This is A B, right? Then you mark this A C. I have A B. I have not considered it. I have not considered it. Most of the portion, na? No, it was opened. It was point cut. It was over. When the shot was fired, it was over. So it was void. Hello. No, fine. Now again, A is there. Okay, done. And B is there where the bone is cutting, where the move bone has moved, and this one has moved here. But this width is here. But when we plan, no, no, B, just one second. First this plan C. No, first plan B. First measure B. Measure B. So you have done this. I will call it as D. D. Right. Then you measure A B and mark A B here, and make this as C. Means A is okay. Right. When I measure, means house. I should I measure measure B B first. This is B A B. Right. It means at any point. No, no. B was the where the wedge was opened. Okay. Or any any our our point. Huh? And we can select by ourselves. Not ourselves. You have decided the point of our journey here. And you have opened the wedge. But according to uh, you have each point, I decide wedge where, where, where I should decide. Yes. This is the convex and the concave part. 
most convex part. Center of the convex and the concave part. Center of the. This concave. is one. This is other. Okay. This is convex. This is concave. Okay. So, uh, center of the convex and concave part. So, a short me should be here. Okay. Because the pass passes below this point. Okay. So you have done it. Once you have done the short me, you move it. Yeah. So this point will be uh, this this, this point. point stable. This point no, B both will move. Joint will open. So once you have um, once you have marked this, so this will go Take up and B. this will go down. So this is B. This is B. Okay. And this is D, where the bone is there, but this is longer. Yeah, longer. So you make it equal. Yeah, equal. So this is um, C point. This is C, and this height is D. Now you got it. Okay. Your voice tells me. According to B, uh, okay, A is there. B is final. Our one bag was. No, one more was. Black color, such a bag was. वो जो पहला वाला स्टॉल था ना एंटर करते ही कोने में जो जो कॉर्नर में स्टॉल है ना यहाँ उसमें एक बैग है लाल आई आई वर्किंग फॉर ए फर्स्ट Got it. D is there then, and uh, this angle I have to make between B. Yeah, and it no, no, is this sixteen degrees. Eight, eight degree should be here. Eight degree should be here. Okay. Then. This is A. Yeah. This is B. Yes. This is. D. D. Yeah. Now it's becoming C. C the, the, now D becoming the, C. The, this line is longer than this line. Yeah. So you will draw a line from here. Got it. But so it is a little in, and that will be the height. Not this point is the height. Okay. This point should be height. This will be low. You are perpendicular to this line. So this it will little inside. Okay. That was C. Huh. That's become C. That becomes C. And the B C is the height of the vest to be opened. B C is the height. Okay. And uh, angle should uh, my angle should be B uh, eight, eight degree. See if there is sixty degree. Yeah. Huh. So eight. Eight, eight. If you still keep this point in mind. Okay. Eight will be up. Eight will be down. Eight will be up. And that down. means. That means you open in the area of the angle where both the limbs are equal. If you do it here, hmm. got it. Then it will be shorter. This will be much longer. Much longer. Yes, we are going to more longer. Huh. So we, we, we have to. That is the reason we do mark the point which is dead center of convex and concave. That's why. That's why it becomes easy. And then it opens. That's why it's become easy. So, and that's it's equal ideal. It's ideal. Half the correction. Half the correction. There, there is no translation. If the, if you talk in their term. Okay, got it. Mm. And, and
post convex point on the femoral condyle right say yes louder so that i move on with confidence then you draw a connecting line this is the distal femoral joint line say loud and more in numbers draw two dotted perpendicular line on the femoral joint line flushing the femoral condyle this all is being done with blue or black these two lines are important to know what is the center of the femoral condyle this could be done by many methods on with the skin from the most con, uh, deep part of the notch but this is what we practically do and all they they all coincide the idea of this exercise is that you clearly know what you are looking for when your mind knows then your eyes start seeing it then we move on to the you mark the center of the femoral condyle here between the joint line right then you mark two points on the concave aspect of the tibial plateau subchondral line the weight bearing portion of the tibia has to be taken in osteoarthritis knee the medial there is more subchondral bone so you draw a line which is little lower than the upper end of the tibia medially right and then you connect them and this is upper tibial joint line clear draw two two perpendicular dotted lines on the upper joint line tibia flushing the tibial condyle the way you did it for femur you have done it for tibia right then you mark the center of this it is the center of the tibial condyle now you mark two points at the either end of the ankle prefond line lower down right draw a connecting line this is the distal tibial joint line clear then mark two dotted perpendicular lines to the tibial joint line flushing the talus mark the center of the tibial prefond connect center of the hip joint to the center of the ankle joint now what it shows and this is normal yes right this is normal now we move on to the exercise 3 you have written your names already and now we will do so you have understood how to mark so everybody has exercise 3 with them with a blue or black pen right say yes mark the center of the hip joint you have a plastic sheet put this sheet at the hip joint and mark the center of the hip head of the proximal end of the femur you have marked it say yes so that i move mark two most convex point on the femoral condyle yes draw a connecting line this is the distal femoral joint line if there are any questions please ask and once you have drawn you, your hands are free you can raise them now you draw two dotted flushing line to the distal femoral joint line flushing the femoral condyle right 
now you mark the center of this and this is the center of the femoral condyle is it clear now you mark two points on the concave aspect of the tibial plafond subchondral bone it's done you draw a connecting line this is upper tibial joint line those who have done can raise their hands now you draw two dotted perpendicular line flushing the upper tibial condyle and then you mark the center of the tibial condyle is it clear once you have drawn it let me know some more hands awaited mark two points on the either end of the ankle profond line lower down is it clear yes. draw a connecting line to the distal tibial joint line lower down and then draw two dotted perpendicular line on the distal tibial joint line flushing the talus it is clear draw it now you have the width of the ankle and mark the center or the tibial plafond and now connect the center of the hip to the center of the ankle with red so the lines remain clear later on and once you have drawn it there will be one more reason for you to know why we did it with red have you drawn it where it is passing medial to the knee joint so what does it indicate this patient has a varus deformity and this deformity can originate from where either femur or tibia or both so and where do you make the correction where the deformity belongs so now we have to find out what is contributing to this varus deformity and for that we connect the hip joint to the center of the femoral condyle and on the other side connect the center of the tibial condyle to the ankle joint right is it clear having done that you measure the mechanical lat lateral distal femoral angle this angle is it clear and you also measure you also measure the medial proximal tibial angle now what are the findings of these two angles with you ninety and tibial everybody agrees anybody who has a distal femoral angle out of the range from 85 to 90 pardon me this is the mechanical distal femoral angle so this is most of us it is 90 that means this is normal yes it means it is not contributing to the deformity say yes, yes 
Now we measure the angle on the medial side of the apparent tibia, medial proximal tibial angle. Anybody who has an angle higher than 85? Why I am saying 85? Because 90 to 85 is the range of normal C. Ideal is 87. So if it is less than 85, it is the cause for deformity. So if it is 74, 75, 76, where the cause of deformity is? Upper end of the tibia, right? So where will you do the correction? Proximal tibia. So this patient is a good case for doing open wedge, medial, high tibial osteotomy. So all of you are correct. Now you have decided to do a medial open wedge high tibial osteotomy. Now with the you will be working with green because that's what the normal will become. Right? So you now you draw a desired weight bearing line from the center of the hip. Here Fujisawa point because there where you want to transfer the weight bearing line. Because the cartilage are totally lost. Am I right? You have drawn this. And this is, this green line is line number one. Center of the hip to the Fujisawa point and beyond. Everybody drawn with the green pen. Now you define the hinge point. I have told you where the hinge point is, just proximal to the tip of the fibula. So that it does not, osteotomy does not end into the tibiofilar joint. And then you draw a connecting line from hinge joint to the center of the ankle. This is line 2 drawn in green. Is it clear? Now you measure this line from A to center of the ankle. What is the length? Measure it. Anybody? 10. Oh, whatever it is, depending on your drawing. It is 10. So what do you do? You mark a point on this line or so that you rotate it, it will cut the weight bearing line A onto the future line. So this is, this line was 10 centimeter. You have marked a point from here to this future weight bearing line, right? 10 centimeter. And now you connect this line and you have opened an angle. And this angle is between line 2 and 3 and it is alpha angle, right? So you measure this alpha angle. And transfer this angle with the base onto the medial side. And this is the angle you have transferred. The center of this angle should be at the most deeper part, junction of the convex and the concave part, because you have done the osteotomy, you will do osteotomy from there. And having done that, you have drawn a line or an angle BAC. Now you measure the line AB and draw a point 
of the same length AC. This is A. A. You measure AB and on the other limb of the angle, you mark this point and this will be C. This will become AC, right? Then from A start same distance, that point comes at that angle with the C. No, no, I think you wanted a, a step back. You wanted a step back. This was an angle. This angle was say 16 degree. You draw a 16 degree here with the center at the point of osteotomy. Now, having done that, you get two points A, B, and this is the second limb. So, this angle is equal to this angle. Is it clear? Now, since you are moving the bone, the bone length should remain same. There is no translation taking place because both the arms are equal. So, you measure AB and mark this point as AC. And you measure the height of BC. And this is the height of the osteotomy which you will open, which you will measure on the table that you are correct. Yes. So, uh, now we move on to the next part and the next part is a closed wedge high TBL osteotomy is being demonstrated which will be connected here. Till they are doing it, you can ask questions. ये एंगल यहां से उठाया नहीं नहीं ये बड़ा है ना एनराजमेंट में इफ इट हेल्प्स दिस एंगल एंगल बिटवीन लाइन टू एंड थ्री इज बीइंग ट्रांसफर्ड एट द अपर एंड ऑफ द टिबिया विद द जॉइंट जंक्शन पॉइंट एट हिंज पॉइंट ऑन द मीडियल साइड BE is decided by keeping the half the angle above and half of the angle below the point of osteotomy. Because when you do an opening wedge, the, that point will come in a void. So half of it is up, half of it is down. हाँ हाँ फ्लिप करिए आप नहीं नहीं जोड़ चला दीजिए से ओटी वाला चला दीजिए यही तो कह रहे हैं जो सवाल हो जब तक ओटी का चालू नहीं होता पूछ सकते हैं ओटी Dinesh, we are ready. Uh, we are ready. Are we clear? Uh, you are clear, sir. Okay. Uh, are, you getting, are you are you getting the OT? Absolutely. Okay. Very nice. So, Only thing uh, would like to have the light slightly less on the operative field if it is possible. Okay. Just we have raised the. We need to. अभी देखते हैं बाद जो भी पढ़ेंगे तो लेंगे। दिलीप भाई सर्जन साहब ने आवाज़ थोड़ा खोल जो ना ऊँचा हो जाए। 
हेलो हेलो अबाउट पेशेंट आई हैव सेंड थ्री जेपीजी इमेजेस टू द ग्रुप सो अबाउट इफ यू एनी डेलीगेट्स वांट्स टू नो अबाउट द पेशेंट दे कैन ओपन व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप एंड कैन सी स्लाइड वन टू एंड थ्री हियर दिस पेशेंट हैज अ दिस एक्सरे हैज बीन टेकन फोकस देयर एक्सरे हैज बीन टेकन नॉन वेट बेरिंग दिस इज नॉन वेट बेरिंग फुल लेंथ एक्सरे we are not able to see okay yeah right in in which there is a varus of 7 degree and then uh, according to miniaki method what dr rastogi had taught everybody that we have to correct the 12 remove the wedge of 12 degree but we will we have plan to remove 22 degree because it's associated with full fixed flexion deformity of about 13 degree so we must have a uh, some hyper extension also so to measure uh, measurement to correct the flexion deformity is purely uh, uh, eyeballing so here i have plan to remove a 22 degree wedge and uh, in which the anterior side the base will be broader than the posterior aspect that i will show you so i am putting incision here from midline inferior pole of patella to the Over the scene of tibia. Switch, switch the camera. Make, make the clinical camera bigger. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And you can keep that uh, IITV or whatever image view box in the side as a PIP. PIP. Yeah. So this is the incision. Now I am retracting with a finger dissection. This is a thick flap. Second. this is the medial anteromedial aspect of tibia i hope everybody can watch it yeah small reader here Don't much. Here, if we can see, I don't know whether you will able to appreciate it or not. Okay. Here, this is medial collateral ligament along with the process and serinus tendon. So I am erasing that second. This is the tibial tuberosity. This is patella tendon. And now I am putting. I am erasing the MCL along with. First and serinus tendon. This is how I erase it. I am not cutting it. Very good. Okay. Very good. Okay. Spike. This is MCL with first and serinus. Here we will have apex. TV shoot internal rotation. करना क्या है? पहले catching last तो तुझ कर हाँ हाँ दिनेश भाई दिनेश भाई please speak in the English. It is transmitted everywhere. I understand, but uh, the instructions for the staff is in Gujarati. So then speak in uh, speak in the both language. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is lose it. Lose. Uh, exactly, there should be patella in the center. Please show patella. Right, this is uh, the picture. Raise the table. 
there is a but still it is in internal rotation so i will put the patella in the center bas can you appreciate patella yeah so the reason for putting patella center is that you done all your planning with patella center yeah, yeah yeah so you want to carry out the surgery also with patella center right yeah then and then i will able to get the right screen. angle second neck a second see this is the plan so should so i will decide the apex i will try to put it as high as possible so for opening wedge we talk about hinge at the uh, just above the tip of the fibula here how do you place it it is uh, at the junction of metaphyseal diaphyseal junction concave convex part of tibia okay so same what sanjay was saying where your thumb fits <laughs> yes so shoot shoot this is the apex what i decide and now i will draw mr the site of osteotomy as proximal as possible right this is how i have marked quadri and your left index is on the tuberosity yeah retract retract i can carry don't remove it how far below you are the patellar tendon attachment just below the attachment just below the attachment so on the tuberosity itself yeah yeah, yeah. internal so it's use internal rotation now i am just cutting the periosteum i will try to erase this periosteum periosteum second nephew forceps this is wedge is to be removed i am preparing that part which now i will put the patella in center now again iitv please 22 degree wedge this is prepared this wedge is uh, already prepared 22 degree i have uh, starting from 6 degree to 34 degree but at present we are using 22 degree with patella in center please show patella in center nahi thodu external rotation thodu internal thodu patella dekha hoga so say internal ka thodu bas it's okay bata can you appreciate patella in center yes yeah yes yes now i the apex source of this wedge should be exactly on the medial border little bit away 2 mm away from because there is a thickness of blade of is 1 mm so shoot this is around 1 or 2 mm away from medial cortex right because there is some thickness of blade also so shoot what what you are showing clinically and the angle seen on the cia looks little bit different nahi this angle not understand what you want second care yes nahi wo to niche tak aa gaya na only where it cuts the bone Dinesh, yeah. When you calculate the wedge on the paper, yeah, the wedge is on the uh, is in the uh, coronal plane, yeah. Because you are placing it on the paper. Okay, where did you? Yeah. Now here, your wedge is kind of in a oblique plane. So will not this give a little extra uh, wedge removal? You no, get no. what I mean? 
I understood, but here it's a bit broader because we have to correct the FFP also. Okay. Because anterior wage will be high, will little be more. more. Okay. More. And posterior will be less. But uh, should. So if there is no flexion deformity, then do you change the orientation of the wedge? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But uh, should. 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 But this second camera fix will fix my position of wedge. Okay. Should. Should. Right? Should. Should. This is exactly at the medial border. I have kept some space because my blade will of about two one millimeter on both sides. Now wage has been fixed, but should no. Okay. Some internal origin. <laughs> With patella in center and media apex is exactly on the medial border. Shoot. Right? Thodo go chukar exposure. Internal. Right? Everybody can appreciate now? Yeah. It's exactly on the medial border with patella in the center. Removed. I have an op option of three K wire. So third one, third one. This is still wage is moving. So I don't want this. So I will put third K wire. Third K wire. Now it has become fixed. Okay. Now there is no need of internal rotation. Now I have to remove this. This is fixed now. No. I'm using new blade every time and Manman blade is cheaper than synthesis blade. That's why I'm using Manman because I want to use every time a new blade. Hmm? Nee, nee. I will tell. Take care that this blade does not touch the skin. Huh? It will take care. TV like Now I don't need at least at present IITV. Now I will cut, I will keep angle this much and this much. It will not be parallel. So I am cutting superior cortex, superior part of the limb. I have blade should not touch. Huh? So at present I am cutting only anteromedial cortex. Okay. If we do, okay, I keep this blade parallel to the K wire, then the limb will be equal. So I am not keeping parallel. We track on this side. So now you are cutting the lateral cortex. Yes, I am cutting the lateral cortex, but I am not disturbing the top tissue attachment. This is, I think, superior cut has been completed. Now I put inferior cut. So lateral cortex is completed on the superior part? Yeah, yeah. Like this, break it up. Break it up. Posteriorly, we will not cut part, part of that. Still, posterior becomes a hinge. 
Now this is converging. This template, huh? Different, different angles. Different, different. What different? This is twenty-two. All solid metal angles with the holes to fix the gears. So whatever you have measured, you uh, use as a template. Second blade. Compass ka pura set hai. Yeah, anybody can make this. Now you can appreciate ah. that anterior wedge is broader than posterior wedge. Yes. Because this is not parallel. If this blade is parallel, then anterior part and posterior part will be equal. But this so is... these you have adjusted in your uh, blade only uh, saw yeah, blade. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. That is. So it is a, it is eye bowling. It is nothing to do with eye... this wedge. Uh, no eye bowling. Eye yeah, bowling. yeah. Because the exact calculation to correct FFD, I do. I didn't find exact formula. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. So now, I now, think... now your both blades are touching the posterior cortex. Yeah. Posterior cortex is still intact. Yeah, it's intact. It's touching. Yeah. Now, you want to check. Let... I can check with medial border is cut on the both limb. And still, I, this part is remaining. Yeah. So, I will cut it with the show, shoulder. One month. That you will cut with osteotom or you will use so again? Show only. Show only. Okay. Medial cortex is broken now. Medial is also cut now. Now I will remove no. K wires. Posterior medial is intact, ne? Posterior medial is intact. Posterior cortex is intact. Totally posterior. Is. It is a medial, anterior, and lateral. Three has gone. Antro medial and lateral. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tibia has a three surfaces. Yes. Antromedial surface, lateral surface, and posterior surface. So at present, two surface cut, lateral and antromedial. And three cortices. Yes. Medial, anterior, lateral cortices. Now I separate out the lateral cortex from the main wedge. I just make a hole in the by K wire. What is the reason, Isha? It separates the okay. cortex. Okay. Creating a stretch diagram. Like All right. Okay. 
Now this is the lateral cortex. Now everybody can appreciate? Yes, yes, we can appreciate. This you cut the lateral cortex in crust bone as a viable bone graft. Yeah, viable uh, vascularized bone graft. Second knife. Now this wage at present I will not remove this wage. But anybody wants to see TV like them. I will show you because it's an oblique osteotomy in both the plane. So I will TV I will show the wage. I have to elevate this thing. Yes. Can you appreciate? Yes, yes. Lateral cortex is broken and that wedge has been there. It is dumped down. Apex, apex in the medial. But yeah. Right? The artery, artery is there. 12 clip. Uh -huh. So this wedge is still not removed. Huh? Only I am showing this cut. Aha, wedge is not removed. Yeah, second link. Now I am passing uh, one proximal and one distal screw to for tension bend. Yeah. On the lateral side. Right. You started this step only because the medial plate many times it secondary varus has happened in certain cases in your initial practice. No, no, it uh, the tension bend gives us tremendous stability. No, no. no you Why? First used to do like, like first maybe. Your your procedure changed over time. No, initially you used to do only this uh, lateral tension band. No, 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 no. no. no initially I was putting only plate. medial plate. 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 Oh, ah, lateral plate. In two thousand before two thousand five. Right. Okay. Then I started using medial plate. Medial plate. Okay. Only medial plate. And then I started both. Okay. Shoot. Yes, so only plate, there was a problem of secondary virus. No, only plate, later, medial side, no secondary virus. But it does not give enough stability. Uh, that's why, that's why. Because, because my purpose is to make weight bearing on, the, on a couple of days after surgery. Right. So if my osteo uh, this uh, osteotomy site is stable enough, it does not move even with... And movements. Then so the, now you are putting CC screw different. in the proximal no, fragment. No, not CC screw, cortical screw only. Oh, cortical screw, okay. Juxta articular. Yeah, yeah. Shoot. Yeah, this is. Shoot. Shoot. Package. Will you advise the beginners to put a guide pin and see in the lateral also? Yeah, that is always safe. 75. This is 70. Screw size is 70, but uh, I have to use with washer, so I take it 75. Abramati Lele, 75 screw with washers. SS wire cut. Now, this is SS wire. I make a loop here for tension bend. So, this is how I put it here, like this from a window here. And inside this, I will pass a screw, screw like. Line it. Shoot. 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 Yeah. I will not completely tighten this screw. That way I will do later because many times it happens that SS where does not hold that. Shoot. Shoot. Okay. I will keep it like this. At last I will tighten. 
And now I I tight this loop, otherwise it will for a period of time it comes out. Shoot. Okay, nice, very nice. Now I will second night. Slim drill slim in three point two drill fixes. Slim come like this. This screw will be parallel to the upper screw or not non-parallel? No, no, it's parallel to the distal limb of osteodome. Right. So once you will close it, both will become parallel. No, no, no. One lower screw may remain oblique, not always. Okay. Self tapping sense too. Here also I am taking larger screw because I have to use washer 42. Wash, wash. Shoot. Yes. Yes, it's, I think. Shoot. It's Re not required. Okay, sir. <laughs> Pardon? Dr. Nayak, sir. Okay. So, just I have passed and I remove him. Now, I, at this stage, particularly, I will do fibular osteotomy. Just like vaccine, sir. Party can see the Ranjit, focus light here. Now I will operate here to so change the camera. Now I will do fibular osteotomy. I will osteotomize the segment of fibula. Light and sterilization. This fibular osteotomy is at the junction of entro lateral compartment of muscles and posterior compartment. Because is a, here there is a superficial peroneal nerve that we have to protect. Many times now to EHL also creates some weakness of EHL. Caesar. This is at intermuscular septum. This is fascia. Now, periosteum. Periosteum. I can have, feel the fibula. Yes. Can you shift a little bit camera uh, focus so that if so it I is possible, if it is possible. Fibular osteotum, I think. Yes. Everybody knows. Mm. But what is the level exactly they want to see? Mid surf. Mid surf. Mid surf, yeah. Whenever you, you do multiple K wire holes, just so that that time IITV image, so that everybody can come to know which level you're doing. Yeah. Because it's a demo surgery. Yes. Fibula upper focus. Only work.
requires to. So, how you can see, Kribula? Yes. I will make multiple holes before cutting because fibula is very strong bone. Yeah. Cutting with show creates a lot of damage to the soft tissue. So I cut it with the osteotum, but before that I make multiple holes. Retractor. This segment major measurement of segment roughly equal to the base of the osteotum. Osteotum. So it is a segment which will you will crush the bone. Yeah, that I will. That retractor is and keep it inside only. That retractor is big enough to obstruct our vision. Now. Right. Now this distal has been completed. Now I will cut proximally. That is also anterior. So you will measure here or you do again eyeballing here? No, no eyeballing just sometimes I measure with like this finger putting this okay. finger like. But it is not perfect. Little more is okay. Retractor line. It's okay. Thank you. This will not obstruct now. Now this is I Chai me sugar dalte hain se. I'm pulling in. Ek chamach dal diya, ek chamach bada diya. Ek chamach bada diya. Ek chamach bada diya. Tunicate is on, na? Tunicate is on. Here, there is one branch artery on the medial to the fibula. Yeah. Uh, In the intraosseous space, yeah. Uh, but once I, <laughs> by mistake, it was cut by me. So it was it, it bleeds a lot. It bleeds a lot. Yeah. So I have to call plastic surgeon to ligate it. In one case, huh? Good. So, we have to be careful while. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you have to remove that part of the fibula and then catch it. Osteodum. I think there is one branch of peroneal artery. Now, what? New one, this one. New one, this. Sharp per se, osteodum. Cowed, broad. Yeah, this. Yeah, cut. Still cut. I hope there is an intact soft tissue attachment on the medial side of this piece. You force it. <laughs> Otherwise, it will, because there is only support on the left. Yeah, it's cut now. I will check in bone cutter option. Yes, shoot. Can you appreciate in IITV? Hello. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, the, all these pieces I don't remove because I, I don't need this bone. Suppose someone, some pieces might have soft tissue attachment, some pieces may not have, but I will keep inside. Now, fibular osteotomy part is over. Now, I will come to the tibial osteotomy. Tibial osteotomy. Now, I will... Cut the posterior cut the cortex. posterior cortex on the distal side, distal limb only. 
નવા એ રિમૂવ ધીસ વેજ પેલું નાનું કવ ડોસ્ટેરોમ હતું ને જે હું મોટું આપ્યું ને એવું નું નાનું છે લાઈટ લાઈટ હા ગુડ નાઉ આઈ એમ રિમૂવિંગ ધ વેજ સે જ અહીં છું છું યુ આર રિમૂવિંગ ધ વેજ વિથ કીપિંગ ધ પોસ્ટર કોર્ટેક્સ ઇન્ટેક યુ કેન સી ધેર ઇઝ અ સાર yes 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 it's a sar so this should be this should not be blunt uh, it's a it's a mini template of your metal template yeah this is yeah right yes okay. yes yes we can see it only one i think i can appreciate that there is little bit more correction of hepatitis so i will rectify it here more correction of nahi anterior wedge jo calculate kiya tha isse thoda zyada liya hai ha to wo main compensate karke ye cortex thoda cut kar dunga to ho jayega lo nahi kaun sa cortex uh, which cortex you will cut table 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 still i can adjust some something yeah that is what i want to tell yeah yeah retractor retractor here chhod de now no there is no internal internal rotation is not required now bas aatlo to pakdi baat now you Because will still it is stable right so, it doesn't move yeah. now you... one thing i i forgot to show now i can show the osteotomy side properly because yes yes is... you can just clean up the bed of the osteotomy so we can see no, the i can i mean i can show in tv yeah you can show in tv also right can you appreciate yes yes exactly medial cortex apex is at the medial cortex but why the uh, screw axis change which was parallel to subchondral because it is in the extension nahi i have elevated the limb that's why because in uh, even lateral uh, view also it's an oblique osteotomy yeah in both the view ap and lateral both it's oblique so here i will clean the trajectory change okay and then see i will if camera can, can show this is right can you appreciate now there was drilling yes so there is some ha yes ne bola maine magar wo correction thoda hua hai is there a partial correction already done no how which one ffd or varus something nothing something yet. has changed in the cm image no 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 the no. only thing is the screw which was parallel to subchondral bone uh-huh. when you are drilling and putting the proximal screw no 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 what happened actually i have elevated the limb now now if i will show it will be look subchondral okay can so, you show that so. yeah hmm. yes hmm. but yes said still to achieve kar bhai then it's okay mm-hmm. right ha we are getting late yeah but mm-hmm. so shoot okay now i will cut the distal limb of posterior cortex show still this is with soft tissue attachment tv leg now i will not cut it with the show i i make just a groove on the posterior cortex because there is a po- po- vessels posteriorly hmm post lower distal and that we will have to like a ledge so that ledge will give the support once it comes the ledge will lock till i have make a groove only cord or sort of motor line yeah motor motor dinesh yeah is it is it good that if we do this particular step in a little bit flexion of the knee but still 
till you see there is no cut of posterior cortex. Still, I have not any cut any posterior cortex. Yes, so you flexion. made a groove, but when you are cutting, do you recommend to have it in flexion? Uh, if I am cutting with a sharp show, then it's flexion oh, yeah. will cause relaxed posterior tibial vessels. But I am not. I don't use even sharp osteotome also. So actually, if yeah. I have a fear, then obviously here you are using cord again. Yeah, cord, cord. But I cut only posterior cortex. Already groove is there. The posterior medial will be strong. Pardon? Posterior cortex on the medial side will be much stronger. Yeah, yeah. Whole posterior cortex is strong actually. Right? Yes. Anything which you can flex. At the home. Nishit Bhaiya suggests. Hinge is at the apex of the that wedge. The home. Yes, now I think I have cut the... Osteotomy. Uh, yes. Posterior cortex. Now I will close the wedge. It is somewhere in the medial because he wants to correct anterior uh, flexion deformity also. Hello, like, well, osteotomy, Captain. So you are making a latch. You are cutting only uh, on the distal part, so it will become a latch, which will get fixed when you yeah. translate. Now, now distal fragment will slide over this like. Yeah, yes, yes. Now I am closing. Right. 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 No. It's closed. Page is closed. And also right. the extension that flexion right. is also corrected. Flexion is also corrected. Flexion right. is corrected. If one can appreciate. Now I will hold with the clamp. Clamp. Pointed clamp. This clamp. Nano or something. TV. I this this particular point I will put in the screw the, head. Head screw, yeah. Head of the screw so that it will not slip. Yeah. This cortex is very strong. That's why it will not create any problem. Suit. Yeah, are we still? There is a step on the lateral side. I don't want step on the lateral side. So you will slide more. I will shape the distal fragment quite a little laterally. Hold on. Just pressurizing you will do? No, I will give some traction and then with clamp. With the clamp only. Okay. Bus, bus, pull. Bus, bus. Say it's just a traction upon. Traction. Then. So he wants the broad surface in the contact okay. for the healing. That's why. Pardon? You attached. What, what difference does it make if there is a small cortex is open there? No, otherwise, medial shift will reduce. Uh, the calculation will be different. Different, yeah. One millimeter will be weight bearing exists. Will go one millimeter medial. Okay. So, shoot. No, that's something ah, that yeah. comes right up. Uh, it's now no step, at no step, no step. So, there is a hairline fracture you can see as a after closer, yes, with the combinated lateral wall, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See here, you can appreciate there is just yes, bit whole osteotomy here line. Can you appreciate? Line? Yes, yes, we can see. We can see completely. Yeah. Now I will tighten tension band. Yes, mm. yes. Screwdriver. Hmm? Screwdriver. Hmm? What is the wire gauge you are using? That is the question here. 18. 1.5 millimeter. 1.5 millimeter. Synthes only, oh? Synthes only. Okay. Synthes only. Because 
if wire quality it, yeah uh, because it's when we tighten the local company wire gets broken broken so you have to do again everything yeah mm. why script screwdriver so now this wire is below the washer uh, nahi, nahi. Uh, don't pull it don't pull it it is slipped it is slipped from the washer hmm. little bit slipped yeah i know i know I have to be careful. It does not slip from the proximal screw also. Yeah, right. That is. You can you can put two screwdrivers there. Where? Both the screws. Then it will not slip. No, there is a clamp inside. Head of the screw. At least in the distal, you can put a screwdriver there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Screwdriver, love, right? Now it's below. I have to pull this and then tighten the screw. Yes. It will get Talk there. It's tight. Right. Now I I will adjust this piece. Then it comes exactly at the artery law. At the osteodomy side. So figure of eight will come on that lateral piece. Yeah. Keep this piece like this. Yes, why script? You will put that wage bone graft here. Ah, that's still I have a bone wage. So will you put it now and then put the tension bend completely? No, 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 at present not putting. Okay. Now I will tighten this. Yes. Cut level. Okay. Good audiovisual management. We are also listening your uh, these sounds. Now I tighten like this. Push kar diya piece na. Here wado. This push. This piece. So I try to keep it at the side of what you don't. Right. You have to keep balance. Even synthesis access where that does not mean that it does not break. It can break. But now this is sufficient tension here. Now it it has become stable. Can you appreciate? Osteotomy is now stable. TV. Put some kidney tray below this so it will keep in extension. Right, shoot. So we shall question. Shoot. I are what's your artery? I have the villain. Shoot. Can you appreciate? Yes, very much. Yes. So, Dinesh, uh, would you like to see by any other method to see the alignment overall? Alignment that is uh, uh, actually at particular this stage, not at, at this stage, but after fixing one screw in with on, on intramedial plate, I am taking 
per operative X-ray. Full length? No, 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 not full length. No. Okay. The TB, I have made a template okay. that, uh, that I will check. Now, I will try to show it on IITV. Yeah. As I said, lower femoral line uh, is, is uh, the mark, landmark. Uh, so, keep it lower and femur, Ranjit, lower and femur and the longest TBI they have to Develop the TV niche. Yeah. So you in, can have a maximum length. In an initial learning period, would you like to check the lateral also? Lateral view also? No, I a any, any message you want to go give to the younger orthopedic surgeons, those who are going to try in the early learning phase. To I, think see... everybody, I think everybody knows to fix the proximal tibia fracture. This is just a proximal tibial fracture. Right. I know, I know, but you will see the lateral or not. Uh Actually, I don't see. Okay. Later, last, at last. Okay. Now, on this template, will Ranjit will put template on this. So, we will match with the lower femoral line. Patella now, now you can make that PIP larger. Yeah. Thank you. Patella in center. Then, I will match with the lower femoral line. Ranjit Bhattar. This lower transverse line is a lower femoral line. Right. And then, uh, this normal... You can see the blue line right. uh, on the template. Eclu template, but there only. No, blue, this, blue color will not be seen very well here. I understand, but the medial most line hmm. is a normal alignment. Okay. Medial most line is a normal alignment. Yes, can you show the and template? A, yeah, yeah, an outermost line is a red. And is but it is, not, it is not seen just now. Camera. The outer, outermost line, outermost line, Lateral line, yeah, outermost line. That yes. is 10 degree over correction. Right. And which, uh, jo middle line here. Yes. That suggests 5 degree over correction. Right. And jo tibia likha hai, iske niche jo line hai, hmm. that is normal alignment. Right, right. Tibia, so, is, tibia is blue. Yeah. The red is the uh, over correction. Haan, 10 degree over correction. Yeah, 10 degree. Or in between these two lines. Simple. That is, line, that yeah. is 5 degree over correction. Right. So, our aim is uh, to pass the weight-bearing line at least lateral to the normal alignment. Okay. So, we will check in IITV. So then okay. we check. Now, we will check in the IITV. Actually, I take X-ray. I don't rely on IITV. Right. But at present, we will not waste time of all people. So, I will just check because IITV is sometimes mislead. Can you yes. appreciate it's a little bit over correction? I'm right. not going right. to the long axis of tibia is little outer than. Yes. Can you appreciate that? Yes, yeah, we can appreciate. Yeah. Exactly, Ranjit, lower and femur sathe match kar jo. Once surgery is over and the X-ray is taken again, we'll check with the X-ray. Right. Five degree correction is there. Yeah. Little bit over correction is there. Not much. Ah, yeah, it's five degree. It is five degree. Not less than five degree. It is less, little less than five degree. Yeah. yeah. But some overcorrection is there, but not high degree. But we can check the target line that the X will it will it will it, will it will it change somewhat after pleating? Pardon? Will it change somewhat one one or degree either on side or the, yeah, yeah, by I pleating? Can, pleating. Yeah, 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 I can change. I can. You can change it. See, that is I am uh, Can so you? Our, our planning. That is our planning. What? We have drawn Ranjit will show. Yeah. Plan weight bearing uh, long axis of tibia is on the smaller x ray. Template move cover. Lower and femur are the match. Curve. So, see, that is between. So, the question is that do you use alignment road at present? Cautery road. Alignment road is misleading. I have used all the things cautery, cautery, yes, alignment road. Many times, head of, that is a game of only four degrees. Right. So, somebody may move a little bit. We cannot appreciate that thing. So, this is the most perfect method I found. That is what we I call Sasta navigation. Yeah. The, I think that is our aim. If you, that, if, you, if you remember, mm -hmm. Professor Stobley uh, took that road with him from the yeah, Switzerland yeah. when we, were, we had planned last year. First, last time. I will I will put a bone graft below the periosteum here 
and then I will put a plate on the anteromedial side. So ask them to shift the camera to the clinical side. Yeah. One okay. camera is on the ear only. Okay, okay. See, I, I have a graph this much. I have a graph. Yeah. So I will put it here. Hello, hello. Uh, Dinesh, can we see the osteotomy side of the fibula where what has happened? Is it, it will, approximated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Approx it must have approximated. Fibula, but fibula. Huh. See, I'm a fibula. Can you see, can you appreciate? Some yes. clamp, clamp is coming in between, but yeah. still you can appreciate. Uh, we can see it. It is, yeah. Translated. It's translated. Mm. Now I'm preparing bone graft. Removed wedge. I use it as a bone graft. I don't have any space, much space to put a bone graft. Because it's a closed wedge. At this piece, I put below the MCL. Okay, on the medial side. Yeah. So it will protect the hinge. Now I will put here plate, plate curved or stutum up the curved. Motu. Table nichu kajan bit. Now I will make a space for the plate. And the final tightening of the tensionment will be done at the last? No, no, no. This is I have tightened. But this screw, proximal screw, I have keep, keep it loose, kept it loose. Right. When I tighten this proximal screw, it will automatically get tightened. Yeah, yeah but that you will do after plating. Yeah, that is uh, this after removal of this clamp. You're right. Plate, plate. Yeah, now. Now I am inserting this plate on this bone. Yeah. And I don't put below the medial collateral ligament. I put above because if I put below medial collateral ligament while bending knee causes pain. Okay, show TV. So you are you are speaking about below means superficial and deep to the ligament, I think. Superficial to ligament and deep to the sub subcutaneous tissue. Right. But this is the position of plate. You can appreciate. Yes. I I I will put it little higher. Right, but then I will temporarily fix it with the K wires. So, as far as anterior and posterior is concerned, it will be on the center in the intra posterior plane. Yeah. So, Dinesh, how often do you have to bend the plate, or it is the same manufactured given it fits well? Sometimes I have to bend if I have to correct FFT more. Right. Then I have to bend. Shoot. Shoot. Hmm. I am happy with the position. This one. Once I will insert the first cortical screw. At that time, plate comes downwards every time. Hmm. Key, key. Knife, first knife. Niche no chedo patao Show me the lower end of plate. Shoot. Yeah. Yes. I will make, put a stab incision here. Let him complete the plate. To then put a couple of screws When it here. starts closing, we can go for the lunch. That is yeah, right. 
दो बजे सही बात है मिसाल तू बच्चे आवाज now plate position of plate is fixed yes now i will put first vertical screw 3.2 till bit this plate is from nebula this tomo fix Dinesh bhai, Pardon? your feeling is that if there is anything important step, then you can just tell us. Otherwise, to save the time, we can declare the lunch. Yeah, I understand, but this is the last step. Okay. Which is important. No, no, that that's why we are asking you. this will st stabilize my plate yes this screw will stabilize my plate this is what even in open wedge it is considered as a golden screw here also it is golden screw yeah any anything important step you want to describe 36 seconds right this clamp should be removed at last at last right mm. or what Uh, but here to for a demonstration purpose i will remove this remove this earlier and tighten the proximal screw and i will show the stability of the osteotomy okay so all the screws you are going to use are a cortical not locking not locking I, because this plate will that will can create some compression so your distal part is not locking but proximal it will be locking proximal three screw locking locking yes locking. so first you are doing leg leg then, then you will tighten uh, yes will yes tighten this it will come nearer to the uh, nearer to the bone yeah bone. now it has become stable see now this osteotomy that will not move at all yeah at present clamp is inside is... now i am removing oh, okay. clamp do you use a spacer screw that is a question by dr bipin bhai spacer screw so to uh, to do not have a tension on the periosteum uh, there is a spacer screw has been used no 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 okay screwdriver now i will tighten the proximal i have removed the clamp okay remove the clamp now i will tighten this screw the tightening of this screw will also will also over. will tighten the lateral side yeah tension the, bend tension and that will also lead to half a degree of correction right now there is only one screw this two k wire and lateral tension bend yes. this is osteotomy side now i will check the varus valgus okay see, stable there stable. is no movement at all right now there is three locking screw in the proximal fragment right and three locking screw in the distal fragment i will fix okay before that i will show the lateral view so after that uh, everybody can enjoy go the for the lunch yeah, yeah. lateral just suit the lateral view yeah so that the previous question is ans get answered hmm. see even i am elevating it doesn't move yeah yeah it's, it's not moving anteriorly also hmm. still final fixation is remaining yes can you appreciate hmm. yes still ha huh. See, rota. I am rotating. Yes, you are rotating. Can, can yeah. This is oblique in lateral view also. Yeah, it's a, it's a oblique. It's oblique. So shoot. Now I will show the posterior cortex. Yes. Let us slide it over. I am trying to show it. Yes. Yes, see, yes. Here you can appreciate. Yes. yes, we can see. We can see. Yeah. See. Right. This is lateral view. Dead lateral view. अना जॉइंट सर को देखा है ऊपर दिन 
There must be altered foot foot switch. Band karo. You are hitting. <laughs> Can you make the IITV picture bigger? PIP is as a main Plus. picture. Plus. Yeah. Uh, okay, Shoot. fine. Shoot. Right? Yes, yes, yes. We can say it. Now, its uh, position of plate is also satisfactory. Uh, very, very satisfactory. Yeah. Mr. Limbatai, then. Shoot. Right? Yes, yes. Okay, then. Now, rest of the screws I will fix. <laughs> Till then, this uh, any other discussion or lunch break can. Yes, yes. The discussion or question will come in the last in the question answer session. So, uh, thank you very much. Great, great, great. Thank you, all. Thank you all for giving your precious time. Fantastic. Okay, perfect. perfect, perfect. So we are departing for the lunch. Dinesh sure, sir. Enjoy the lunch. Please Enjoy. join with us. Yes, yes. There is a delicious lunch, I know. <laughs> <laughs> because I have prepared menu. <laughs> I and Vipul. Vipul and I has prepared the menu. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the all audiovisual and OT staff of the Institute. Thank thanks, you thanks, much, thanks to the anesthetist. Thank anesthetist you, sir. Thank doctor. you. All. Yeah, whole team, whole team, huh? and the OT staff. Yeah. Darshan, but anesthetist. Yes. I'm. I'm very thankful to the staff of Jivraj Mehta Hospital. Yes, Bumi yes. Bhumi Ben, Kiran, and Doctor Vishal Chandarana. Navin sir, you know. That yes, 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 yes. Yes, scrubbed with me. Okay. I'm very thankful to my own and old. And my right Ranjit, hand. Ranjit. And, yes, right and Ranjit, because he is guiding the other staffs. Which instrument will require up the multi, staff. multi, multi-purpose Ranjit. Multi-purpose Ranjit. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. and, uh, his staff, all. his staff. Thanks, staff. within also he is coordinating in between theater and audience. Yes. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thanks to audiovisual. They have done a fantastic job. Thank, Thank you, you very much, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you.
and 
he is going to show us very new technique of TCBO. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, at the outset, I will like to thank the office bearers of GOA and IOA for giving this opportunity to speak on this uh, new subject. Let me introduce the subject. See, all this subject is not there to undo the learning what you have done since morning. It is only to like give the new perspective. Because all the perspective of HTO we have is on the static loading. And this is a concept of dynamic loading. And how things differ when it is static and dynamic, I'd like to point out. And Mangal Sarko to Chini pa vishwas nahi hai. This is probably Japanese. So thoda vishwas kar lege. But apart from that, uh, the concept of TCV was conceptualized in the gate lab of Nagasaki University by Professor Chiba and his team. And they developed this whole surgery on analysis of hundreds of patients of medial compartment osteoarthritis, analyzing the gait of those patients and the severity of uh, the compartment arthrosis and how the gait changes as it progresses over a time. And after that, it was like popularized by Professor Teramoto and his team. And they were the, their team was the first to uh, give presentation in the Western world for this technique. And they gave the presentation in the Western world after they had at least 15 years of follow-up of their series of patients. So what we are learning, they have been doing for at least 20 years, as I know. So let's start now. Once we, once we, before we give thumbs up to TCVO, we should know when to go for TCVO. And for to learn when to go for TCVO, we should know why we should do TCVO. Now, to understand why, I will run through certain basic aspects of medial compartment osteoarthritis. It may be boring, but I think it is required because whatever we have been doing, whether it is conservative treatment or a simple HTO, close wedge HTO, all these basics have to be there in our mind before we go into it. And it is also required to rationalize and have a logical conclusion that, okay, in certain cases, you require TCO, or in certain cases, there are technical flaws in our technique of alignment that we cannot overcome. So primary osteoarthritis, you know, because of aging, and these are the three things that unfavorable biomechanical environment, excessive mechanical demand, and premature. This is a basic thing what is happening in an osteoarthritis. So we know what is unfavorable biomechanical environment. Malalignment, it has been there since morning, malalignment, malalignment, malalignment. And now I'll be adding something else to it. The joint instability. This is the concept that I want to add along with malalignment, the loss of meniscal tissue and the cartilage defects. So these are the three other things which are also happening in medial compartment osteoarthritis apart from malalignment. So this is a just basic chart like what malalignment does. Malalignment does is an abnormal load distribution. We all know what loss of meniscal tissue does. Loss of meniscal tissue, which means? Okay. 
Okay. So loss of meniscal tissue is alteration in load transmission. So this is different, like load distribution, then there is a load transmission. Okay, so sorry for that interruption. So we just try to understand these terminologies. See, what we are doing, mal alignment, we are talking is load distribution. Then we are talking loss of meniscal tissue is alteration in load transmission. And cartilage lesion, they increase stresses only if they, it exits 10 mm. This is what the basic science research as on date says. And what joint instability or ligament laxity does is not abnormal load distribution as well as increased in shear stresses on the articular cartilage. This is very important. The increase in shear stresses on the articular cartilage. And uh, I have also be covering a post-traumatic arthritis. So I have included trauma into it. So what trauma does, it increases, the, there is a direct impact on cartilage and that damages the cartilage. So that is an impact damage and there is a metabolic and oxidative stress created because of this. So what cartilage overloading is? Cartilage overloading can be diffuse or it can, when there is obesity or there is a high impact sport. Or it can be focal because of malalignment, loss of meniscal, meniscal tissue, cartilage defect and post-traumatic joint incongruity. Ah, ecothyge. Excuse me. Ecothyge. So post-traumatic arthritis may be due to joint incongruity, malalignment, instability, and impact injury. We have a control over the three things, but impact injury is what has happened is happened. We cannot change that. So let's go into details of what alignment is doing and what the basic science research of alignment as on date is giving us a factual data about it. So in the stance phase, as we know, the tibiofemoral force is slightly medial to the four to six millimeters. So whenever we are drawing a mechanical axis, mechanical axis is an indicative line drawn on an X-ray, which gives the direction of the force actually, which is the virtual force, ground reaction force, which is going on to the, into the joint. But it is usually four to six millimeters medial to the center in a normal person. It increases by three to four times in walking and six times in climbing stairs and during flexion the weight bearing point shifts more medially now this is very important if your patient of medial compartment osteoarthritis has a five degree of ffd his symptoms will increase exponentially apart from virus if this patient develops five degree of ffd his symptoms will increase dramatically because flexion changes the whole thing the forces change dramatically so if this patient is just by stretching corrects the FFD, you will give him a lot of relief. So this is where even the conservative thing, we should understand that what needs to be corrected in a medial compartment OA. Again, malalignment. See, 4 to 6 degree of virus increases the medial compartment load by 20%. Now, 20% increase in load does not damage a cartilage. The cartilage of tibia, the medial compartment is designed to take at least 200% of the physiological load. So, only alignment of 4, 4 to 6 degree, malalignment, is not going to start damaging the cartilage. It is a suggested cause of osteoarthritis, especially in the obese, but it is not proven that this malalignment actually leads to osteoarthritis. What correlation they have developed is that whenever the OA starts, if there is a malalignment in virus, the progression is faster. This is, has been proved. Now, let's go to menisci. Menisci help in load transmission, 50% from the medial and 70% of the lateral compartment load is transmitted through the menisci. 85% load goes when the knee is in 90 degree of flexion. So again, I emphasize that when flexion deformity happens, the symptoms of OA exponentially increase. 
if there is only virus and virus with mild FFD, the symptoms will be totally different. And it is a secondary restraint of joint translation. This is where it is very helpful in the shear forces, control of shear forces. So, loss of meniscal tissue can happen due to injury or iatrogenic. It permanently alters the biological and biomechanical mechanical environment of the knee. And what is its effect? This is what it is. If there is a central one third, 10 percent increase in contact area, decrease in contact area, and 65 percent increase in peak pressure. Still, it is not enough to damage the cartilage because it has a capacity of 200 percent. But when there is a 75 percent, when there is a total meniscectomy, there is 75 to decrease, 75 percent decrease in contact area and 235 percent increase in peak pressure. This is where the chances of cartilage damage starts. So it is we have to be very careful when we are contemplating a total meniscectomy. So this is 14 times higher total or subtotal meniscectomy, 14 times higher risk of secondary osteoarthritis and ligamentous instability, malalignment and chondral damage further increase the risk. If it is associated with these three things or any of one thing, the risk of degeneration is still greater. The cartilage defects as on date, what we know by the basic science research, the critical defect is of two square centimeter from above which the peak pressure is too much to start degeneration. Now we come to the subject of joint stability, which is the main like uh, uh, talk of the main uh, subject of this talk. So understand stability, we should define what is stability for the knee joint. The stability is like ability of joint to maintain appropriate function position. This is a clinical definition. Ability of jo joint to maintain appropriate functional position throughout its range of motion and carries functional load without pain. So this is like a dynamic thing which it needs to be considered in a gait cycle of a patient, whether it is a normal patient or an OA patient. But when ha joint instability happens, there is both. It, there is change in both static and dynamic loading and the increased stresses on cartilage. Even small persisting instability. This is what has been proved by basic science, that persisting instability, there are supraphysiological cartilage load. Supraphysiological means they exceed 200 percent of the load which has been transmitted to the joint in a normal gait cycle and the degeneration starts. So probably they now contemplate the triggering moment in a osteoarthritis, even if it is malaligned, is a small persisting instability is a triggering event in most of the patient where the OA starts, early OA starts. Now, the pathoanatomy of a medial compartment OA knee, we should understand after understanding this basic biomechanical collapse, right? the changes of this pathoanatomy are not constant. So it varies or it start changes from early, mild, moderate and severe. And we need to understand that what these pathoanatomical changes are happening. Before we go into it, another two definitions I want to like uh, uh, emphasize stability and congruence. So again, joint stability as defined in dictionary, ability of kinetic change to stabilize joint during moment and joint congruence. This is another thing which we should understand because this is happening in three dimensional. Whatever assessment we are doing is in two dimensional, either in AP XA or a lateral XA. But this joint congruence happens in three dimension. So joint congruence is defined as a measurement of two opposing surfaces as they relate to one another in 3D shape, contour, each bone at their interface, like femoral condyle and a tibial plateau, concave and convex. So what is stability? When the motion plus congruence, when there is a motion and the congruence is maintained, then you consider that joint as stable. So this is what they say now that alignment will only work if it is complemented by stability and not vice versa. So many patients in a general public, so not patients, but in general public, we see people are walking with uh, deformed legs, but they don't have pain. They don't have pain. Only the patients who have pain come to us. But they, if you go for a morning walk and see the legs of so many patients, they are mal aligned. But if they are not having instability, they will probably not complain of pain for a long, long time. 
this is our experience day to day experience we have been seeing and lot of deformed legs minimum pain very mild deformity very there is no correlation between the symptoms pain symptom and the deformity so what there is something else which changes the severity of pain in oa and probably one of the thing is the stability principles of deformity correction extra articular or intra articular the correction is based on cora as you already learned this and cora can only can be intra articular or extra articular depending on the type of thing but osteotomy based on cora is always extra articular till now we have been doing it extra articularly only so what happens to the intra articular thing when you are doing extra articular osteotomy so we know that extra articular osteotomy is not going to correct the intra articular deformity so there have been ways to tackle this ways to tackle intra articular deformity in a extra articular osteotomy one of the thing is over correction over correction has been just contemplated because of this intra articular deformities lcl tightening procedures have also been recommended this is one of the thing of increasing the stability and the medial patellar release and other procedures now i just want to go into the work correction that i have been talking in the morning see the work correction effects on the plane of the joints and the when the patient is standing and how it becomes skewed to the plane of the ground we need to understand what happens when the joint becomes skewed to the skew to the plane of the ground there here the concept of ground reaction force vector comes and for that we need to understand this simple diagram that this is the actual body weight going through the s1 to the center of the ankle this is the mechanical axis the a is the mechanical axis and the l is the lateral muscle force which is balancing when these two the body body weight and the lateral forces jo uh, balance the actually resultant vector force probably follows the mechanical axis or it is slightly medial as they have studied it is slightly medial to the indicative mechanical axis by 4 to 6 mm it crosses at the center of the knee that virtual resultant force in a normal person is going somewhere slightly medial to this center of the knee joint now we all know this concept of external uh, external knee abduction momentum and this is the momentum a natural knee is having when the mechanical is axis is absolutely normal and see the distance between the ground reaction force it goes right through the me me medial collateral ligament this is where the ground reaction force actually goes what happens in a varus knee this moment increases there are more for stresses on the lateral structures but these patients when they are having a long term varus they do compensate they have a compensatory thing that is happening and what people do they start to walk with external rotation gait they walk like this okay and what hap happens in external rotation the moment arm decreases but the mechanical axis goes to the lateral aspect of the the forces go ground reaction force goes to the lateral aspect of the ankle so sometimes these patients start complaining on the impinging of the lateral ankle after long suppose they are untreated and this is for years they will even start complaining and the foot is in valgus the subtalar is in valgus but the knee is in varus and they are walking with a external rotation gait so as i was talking that over correction over correction when we do over correction we decide on fuji sawa point but when fuji sawa point is shifted lateral to the mechanical axis at the 62% point most of the time the ground reaction force is balanced to medial collateral ligament or slightly medial to it even after at the fuji sawa point but sometimes in some patients which so happens that suppose you release the medial collateral and the release is all of the clinical judgment it is not we don't measure it or we don't have any measure and if this release is more in the dynamic phase or in the dynamic gait static phase it will open up more and the ground reaction force will go medial to the uh, lateral to the medial collateral ligament and that will start gradually stretching out the medial collateral ligament over a period of time and it will start increasing it may happen as i said 
that if that is happened, see if it is over corrected and the medial collateral ligament ground reaction force is medial to it, probably two to three years they say that it will start stretching out. And the symptoms will start, it may give start giving symptoms at the ankle, subtalar joint, and sometimes even the buckling of the knee in the severe cases. <clears throat> so, with this background, let's let's try to understand what are the forces in a moderate to severe medial compartment OA knee. And so these are apart from the compressive forces that see, we all know that the medial compartment has a compressive force. Uh, when the uh, wear of the medial compartment starts. So, as it progresses, the torsion force are introduced, the mediolateral shear comes into the picture, and more and more meniscus and the uh, control and the ligamentous control goes, the anteroposterior shear also comes. Now, these three forces are extremely damaging to the cartilage. Apart from compressive forces, these three forces are more damaging more damaging to the cartilage. So this is the line diagram of a dynamic pathoanatomy of a moderate to severe OA knee in a stance phase. So what is happening here, you see, the medial meniscal subluxation is happening. Then the medial femoral subluxation, medial femoral subluxation is happening. Now, we have been describing varus thrust as uh, the tibia moving laterally, what lateral tibial subluxation. This is what the anatomical uh, nomenclature is like. But actually what happens in a gait cycle, patient is in stance phase, the tibia is fixed with the ground. It is the femur which subluxates and internally rotates and goes posterior and the tibia is like seen on an x-ray laterally subluxated. This is what is happening in an actual gait cycle. The detachment, this is very important, detachment of lateral femoral condyle. So, as it progresses, more and more joint opens, that lateral femoral condyle and lateral tibial condyle totally detach. This actually decreases the load bearing area suddenly. So, some of the patients having mild pain, they in sudden, they will say that they will come, they will having mild pain for two to three years and suddenly they will come that it has increased dramatically for last 15 days or 20 days and this is what has happened the lateral collateral has stretched out so much or given way that the two condyles have separated and the load bearing area has decreased too much and the pain has suddenly increased. The internal torsion of femur over tibia. Now this subluxation of medial meniscus happens not exactly medially it happens in the posteromedial corner. And we all have in stance space, we see that the locking of the knee occurs and there is slight intortion happening. So that is a natural tendency. But if the meniscus is not supporting, the femur subluxates and it internally rotates. Now this has two, three effects. When femur internally rotates, the lateral collateral ligament, which is attached to the upper end of the fibula, and it is like oblique like this, femur rotates, it becomes more lax and it gives more stability, instability. And along with it, it adds patellofemoral mal tracking. More and more femur torsion increases, the mal tracking is more, the medial side of the uh, patellofemoral junction starts giving you more pain. So, what are the problems of now we try to compare what is the problems of HTO in a severe, moderate to severe OA in, in which all this instability things are there. So, once you correct, this is a line diagram showing like you are corrected to the Fujisawa point opened up. But still, the condyles, even if you correct the mechanical axis, the contact within the condyles is not still established. And because of that, what happens is a teeter effect. When patient is walking, like there is a space on the lateral side. So, whenever the weight bearing occurs and the axis, the force axis has been shifted laterally, the lateral condyle will come into contact at the stance phase. But at that time, the medial condyle again detaches. Now, here, the medial collateral release comes into the picture. If the medial collateral is excessively lax, this effect will be more. 
if the medial collateral has been released more enthusiastically, probably this effect will be more. So it, we have to be very careful how much to release a medial collateral in such moderate to severe. In milder case to milder to moderate case where these instability effects have now not come into picture, probably this effect may not occur. So, what TCVO does? What TCVO does, if you see this uh, osteotomy of TCVO, this is the osteotomy, it opens up, it, the osteotomy opens keeping the medial joint attached, the medial condyle and the lateral medial previal condyle and the femoral condyle, they are skip attached and the osteotomy is open till the lateral condyle touches the lateral condyle of the femur. So, that space is totally obliterated. The bony wobbling that is happening in this patient is obliterated. So, there is a shifting of a load line with simultaneous contact with both joint surfaces during weight bearing. So, this dramatically increases the surface area where the load is distributed. So, this is just a line diagram showing what is the surface area of the load bearing in a dome osteotomy uh, of simple or and how much is the contact area in the TCVO. Like this is much is the load area, where the load area is lesser in the osteotomy. In the severe, this is all I am talking in the severe form of way, where the instability component is more severe when you are doing osteotomy. The another thing which is happening is a TCVO entire to shape, the shapes of the condyle. The shapes of the condyle are like pagoda and they are wobbling. You make it concave, which is more congruent to the lower end of the femur. So, that is a congruence that we are trying to achieve. Now, congruence usually increases the stability. If the joint is more congruent, the stability is more. So, if you just summarize what is the intraarticular pathology in a severe medial compartment osteoarthritis knee is LCL laxity. Medial collateral laxity may happen or it may contract. Those patients who have less medial compart medial collateral laxity, they are probably going to give you less symptoms because their knee is stable. Even though they are malaligned, their knee is stable and their symptoms will be on a lesser side. But those who have associated medial collateral laxity, their symptoms are more. Plateau depression, as the subcondyl bone collapses, gradually the plateau depression happens. The lateral subluxation of the tibia, that is virtual, as I already explained, actually it is the femur which is going torsion, internal torsion and medially subluxating. But we see on XL lateral subluxation of tibia. Huh. <laughs> And the patellar ball tracking and flexion contracture. I'll slightly hurry up. <coughs> so, I'm more concentrating on the basic because this concept is new. And we to rationalize or probably to accept a concept, we should have a logic and rational for that concept. So, what happens in TCO alignment? How this alignment is achieved? The cora is fixed at the center of the knee as this osteotomy exits here. But there's another cora. There is a virtual cora at the tip of the fibula. See this horizontal line, if you extend, it is here. So, we are working with two coras. One virtual cora and one is a fixed cora at the center of the knee. So, this is an intra and a juxta articular correction. Now, if the deformity apart from intra and juxta articular is more varus in below the tibial tuberosity or in the distal part of the tibia, you may require an extra articular osteotomy to get it correct. And what helps in this alignment is the femoral condyles work as a jig. This is a natural 3D model which you are having. We don't need to put any 3D printing or anything. Your lower end of femur is normal. It is going to work and it doesn't work in a frontal plane, only sagittal plane, it works in three dimension. So it only not only takes care of the varus, the flexion contracture, it will take in the rotational and probably everything, the shape of the condyle will, is going to take care of everything. 
So stability in congruence, as I was explaining, tibial condyles become concave at intercondyle. This is the pre-op and this is the post-op. The concavity after the correction has been introduced. The broader surface of the contact between tibial condyles, the femoral subluxation. See this subluxation part and this subluxation after correction is reduced. The femoral torsion is also reduced. I'll try to show this in a lateral X-ray, how this femoral torsion, because it is very difficult to judge, but on the lateral X-ray, you can make it. So TCO step, what TCO does to the stability of ligaments? The distance between the intercondylar eminence of femur uh, increases. So this is the pre-op and this is the post-op. It increases by few millimeters. This is enough to tension the ligaments, enough to increase the stability part. The, the external rotation of the tibia, whenever you are opening the osteotomy, you try to rotate the tibia slightly externally. And that takes the fibular head posteriorly, making the LCL trite. Now, if you see this pre-op X-ray, and you can see the torsion in the tibia femur because this condyle is like uh, protruding posteriorly. It is not collinear. But once it is corrected, you see the fibula line here and after correction, the fibula. So this is the external rotation. And that external rotation makes absolutely collinear the femoral condyles and the upper tibial condyles. So let's run through how I do it very fast. Pain, malalignment, and instability are the main symptoms on which work apart from the XA picture. As uh, Professor Rastogi said, any age, but certain things have to be considered. Activity level, you rule out inflammatory or infective arthritis, comorbidities, preferably not major comorbidities. The knee range of motion at least up to 90 degrees, FFD less than 10 degrees. And you analyze the gait very well. The investigation blood for ruling out the arthritis, the excess, I will go into details of the excess, long excess and a single leg weight bearing excess. Now, non weight bearing excess, I don't understand what is non weight bearing excess in a way, but when patient is taking weight on both the legs and patient is taking on a single leg, single leg is mimicking a stance phase of a gait. So you get reasonable picture of what is happening dynamically. So this is both legs weight bearing, this is single leg weight bearing, the increase in deformity you can see. Another thing I want to point out that while we are planning is we try a mechanical axis from center of the head to the lower end of the femur, but we never consider the upper end of the femur. We draw a 90 degree line and probably it takes into consideration the hip joint plane also. So you check the preoperative instability, that is what is demonstrated here. Varus valgus stress, the anterior posterior stress, the rotational stress you stress, and the superior inferior stress. This is very important. As the bone loss ha is happening in the upper tibial condyle, the ligaments are also lax in the superior inferior plane. Position I make supine, tunique, sandbag under the lower end of the femur to keep the vessels posteriorly. The incision is a medial parapalatal patellar extending to the medial tuberosity, 3 to 4 centimeters below the tuberosity. The release is medial subperiosteal release. I don't detach any collaterals. It is subperiosteal elevation till the superior border of the knee, posterior. Posteromedially, you have to be very careful. Don't go too much posteriorly because the blood supply to the condyle goes from there. So till the posteromedial angle you go. You mark up the osteotomy medial wing. Now, this is I just drawn the tibial tuberosity roughly. Uh, the medial wing is drawn at the level of the lower end of the tibial tuberosity. The posteromedial wall is marked there. And the center of the osteotomy, this wing medially goes to the upper border of the tibial tuberosity. The guide wire, which goes from the upper end of the tibial tuberosity, uh, into the center of the knee joint. You have to incise the patellar tendon in the line of guide wire. Now, when you incise the patellar tendon in the line of this guide, uh, guide wire, it is only 
up to less than 20% of the patellar tendon is with the medial condyle. Rest of the 80% of the tendon is with the lateral side. So, if you see the patellar tendon with respect to this guide wire, 80% of the tuberosity and patellar tendon is with the lateral condyle. I'll just go into details with the osteotomy. You start with the anterior wall. To do the anterior wall, go to the posterior wall, stop. Then the medial wall. Go to the medial wall till the posterior aspect of the medial wall and stop. Then you join the anterior and the medial wall below the patellar tendon. You just join them. So the anterior angle is joined initially. And after that, it, it is joined. The multiple holes are made into the, you, under the lateral, under the lateral vision of the IITV, you make the multiple holes with K wire with the posterior wall and the superior, that is intra-articularly. And after that, in the supervision, you, with osteotome, you break the posterior wall. So, the posterior angle of the anterior and posterior wing is most difficult to get it right and you have to be perfectly okay that, that you have done it properly. Otherwise, while you try to open, it is not opened up. The last thing you have to break is the posterior medial angle. The posterior and medial angle, it is the hardest portion and you break it not only after doing multiple holes and with the osteotomy. I don't use any power saw for this osteotomy. You confirm the completion, you open the wedge. Once the wedge is opened, the valgus force, usually the valgus force is applied by the surgeon a, so the, and open up the base and along with that, you sub, give some external rotation force also. And initially, you put a lamina spreader. This lamina spreader that I have shown with the teeth, that is not used first. The plain lamina spreader it comes. You put it and milk it for a few times. Apply force, close it, apply force five, four, five times, and then you completely open up the osteotomy. And then you put this. So gradually open with spreader, external force, no undue force. And if at all, some force you require to give some more force, and you are not happy with the amount of force you are giving, you recheck the release. Whether you have done a soft tissue release properly, you recheck the osteotomy, both the anterior angle and the posterior angle, and then do it again. How, how, how much to open up till the lateral tibial condyle touches the lateral femoral condyle. This is the end point. So, this is all clinical judgment. You may give overforce. Overforce may damage the condyles also. So, this is like clinical judgment. And once you have done this, you check on IITV the clinical stability. This is the no medial lateral opening at all, the tibial condyle. The cartilage is quite thick on the lateral side. I do it with cautery wire just to confirm that I have corrected the varus enough. Now, what is the enough correction of varus? Enough correction of varus is my cautery wire. Once I put it on center of the head and center of the ankle should go to the center of the knee. If this wire is going still medial to the knee and I have the lateral condyle has touched the lateral condyle of the tibia, has touched the lateral condyle of the femur, Probably that patient may require extra articular osteotomy to get it. I never remain medial to the center. It has to be center or slightly lateral to the center. And the most usually you get this thing is the ankle joint is perpendicular. A fixation can be done with a contoured plate. I do it with Elizaro. This talk is not about Elizaro. You can use a contoured plate. I'll talk the advantages and disadvantages of both the system. The wedge is filled. In post-traumatic cases, I usually fill younger patients with bone grafts, but in the elderly patients where I'm doing medial compartment, I use beta tri calcium phosphate uh, granules. The closure, the periosteal closure, once it is opened, it is difficult, but still you take tightly the sutures as much as possible. Otherwise, that beta TCP granules will fall down back. Drain, I use very rarely, but they recommend if the hematoma is going to form, you are contemplating that this patient is going to get a large amount of hematoma, you can put a drain. In Elizaro, putting a drain is difficult, so I try to avoid, but those who are doing with plate, they put drains. 
post op static cordyceps and slr from day 2 partial weight bearing with elisa from day 2 non weight bearing for plate for 4 to 6 weeks active assisted knee range of motion flame removal usually takes 3 to 4 months and after removing elisa i usually put a three point brace for another 4 to 6 weeks to prevent collapse if at all there is some weakness this is the advantage of plate plate is inside it will not require that thing now we'll run through few cases varus the first case a primary oa varus and instability 54 year old 87 kg weight pain since one year are they negative serum uric acid normal non no mob comorbidities sorry so this is his pre op clinical and excess and the gait you just compare the, i just put a line diagram of pathoanatomy and comparing with this x ray so all the things we can see the medial subluxation the torsion okay meniscal collapse if you do probably mri will get to see the meniscal collapse also so these are known as the instability markers the pre op instability check once you drape it you record on iitv the instability both and medial lateral and anterior posterior and this is the operative steps of the procedure i'll just run through the reference wire the osteotomy opening of the osteotomy cotri wire test putting the elizaro frame and the beta tcp <clears throat> this is the pre and post op x ray for comparison and this is around 7 months follow up what i want to you to concentrate is the foot progression angle of this patients in over correction and in the center correction the foot progression angle usually should be 5 degrees or 10 degrees on the lateral side if it is center to the knee it is internally rotated if it is over corrected patient will try to walk with slight internal rotation now there is another case bilateral oa right mo 57 years old male primary varus no comorbidities this is a long axis this is a single leg you can see the shift of the mechanical axis on the single leg what i want to you to concentrate is on this single leg hip plane line and the ankle joint line the crossing is occurring way beyond it it is not matching with what cora we are drawing this is because of rotation this is because of torsion which has happened of femur over tibia this is why but if you draw a mechanical axis of only femur probably you will get the crossing point at that sir excuse me thoda jaldi kar sakte ho kyunki unko nikalna hai aur iske baad hum le sakte hain okay. after after yeah yeah after, after, only few minutes oh, of okay. 5 minutes now so the instability check this is the steps of the x ray as you already seen just want to show the post op this is the by both weight, long x ray of weight wearing single leg weight wearing x ray this is as good as a normal probably mechanical x ray that we achieve now there are few post traumatic arthritic cases varus and instability this guy 35 year old mole operated few times and he had lot of pain limp and deformity in the upper tibia sorry so this was his gait like lot of varus thrust this is the long x ray single leg large amount of increase in deformity the pre op instability check this is the osteotomy the correction the post op long x ray the post removal long x ray this is the single leg long x ray and this is the pre op gate and the four year follow up gate now this is a very very uh 
the clinical situation you will be in when there is no malalignment, but there is the instability of the knee. Both the condyles are gone. Now, there is a 10 months old operated by condyler. Patient was having a lot of pain. Plates were removed. The instability was there. MRIs were done. But patient was asked to undergo physiotherapy to strengthen before the ligamentous reconstruction happens. And if you see his clinical disability, he was not able to take few steps also. This is his long XA. You see, there is not a lot of virus. His, this alignment is not very bad to give him so much of disability. But if you see his pre-op stability check, uh, the medial lateral, yeah, this is the medial lateral instability. So what we have done, we have done this osteotomy. We are not going to overcorrect this patient because we are using lower end of femur as a jig. So we are never going to overcorrect this. This is the end point. They are going up to up to upper end of the lower end of the femur only. So you tighten the joint, broaden the joint, restore the congruency and tension the ligaments. This is what has happened. And this is the post-op long XA, not much change in alignment. You can see pre-op and post-op. This is the post-removal long XA and his one year follow-up and the pre-op gate and the post-op gate. Immediately, he on physiotherapy, he started having his muscle power, gaining muscle power back once the ligaments were tightened. So the fixation tools, Elizaro frame, I tell easy to apply, not because I am using it, Elizaro, but because you convert this tibia into an anatomical tibia. You put one reference wire proximally and that the lower ankle wire and these two will be parallel. You have to just put a frame on an anatomical tibia. So that's why I say it is simple as compared to plate because plate will require double contouring. The intraop problems are easy to tackle. There are few intraop problems because you may fracture the lateral condyle sometimes. Uh, so there are other issues, but you can give early weight bearing. The risk of infection is always there, but it can be easily tackled with the frame on. And But the discomfort of pin, pin track is there and that is a complaint we need to come come over. The other advantage is that the second surgery for implant removal is not required because usually these plates need to be removed after one and a half year. The contour plate is difficult, intraop problems difficult to tackle because if you fracture laterally, you need to put another plate, delayed weight bearing, risk of ma infection, major revision is required, a medial plate is escape. The only advantage of plate I see is the late collapse. The plate is always there inside and the late collapse after removing the, of the frame, which can happen in Elizaro, if you misjudge the union part, plate is there in the body, it is not going to allow any late collapse. But still, it is a choice and comfort of surgeon. The complications, intraop, osteotomy, not opening, lateral condyle, fracture, crushing of the medial condyle. If you select a very osteoporotic patient, try to open up and you will crush the condyle. Vascular injury, initial 5 to 10 cases are usually used to see to it that the vascular surgeon is in town and available when I am doing such surgery. So immediately after post-op pulse is there, then only I used to tell him that is okay now. But after, now I am a bit confident and we are not getting, we have not yet got any vascular injury. Post-op pain in Elizaro is more than the plate because stretching is too much. The holding of stretching is there in Elizaro. In plate, you don't hold fibula. The rotation of fibula which has happened, you hold it in Elizaro. The stretching is much more sustained in Elizaro. So immediate post-op pain for 12, 24 to 48 hours will be much more in Elizaro. Hematoma formation can occur. Compartment syndrome is one of the complications. Pin track infection is problem in Elizaro. Osteotomy infection can happen. And synovitis and knee septic knee inconvenience can, and the non-cooperation of the patient can happen. So now we have the concepts. Concepts of alignment only procedures work well if the joint is stable. Stability, congruency and alignment needs to be restored in severe OAE as an option to TKR. But in post-traumatic arthritis and instability, intraarticular bony reconstruction has dramatic results. Along with this, rational use of biologics may help to improve the results. So we have concepts of HTO, limb alignment, uni and TKR joint replacement, and TCO as joint reconstruction and alignment. The indications that I go is moderate to severe post-traumatic virus, only dynamic instability, depressed condyles, developmental or acquired, probably the upcoming 
future, when more and more HTO happens, the failure of HTOs will also come. And if it is because of instability, probably revision HTO can be also tackled with this thing. Valgus deformity can also be done in a reverse type of osteotomy. So are we trying to replace the HTO replacement? No, we are just trying to pick a right, right fish from this pond of patients. The procedure, we need to make it safe, precise, easy, and produce good results. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dinesh Bhai. <laughs> Sorry, Dinesh Bhai. But the question will be taken in a, uh, after debate. If any question is there, we will discuss it after debate. Now, uh, there is a small announcement for young orthopedic surgeons. Indian Orthopedic Association joining membership is now made total online. You can go to the Indian Orthopedic Association website and you can become a member of Indian Orthopedic Association. Life membership fee is only 5,000 rupees. And you will get the advantage of the all the fellowships there. And this website and all mechanism is developed by no one but Dr. Jawar Jetwa and the IT team. So friends, what we want to do is that now the website is so rich, so robust, so re-revised, and it is a role-based access control with the content management system. So we'll be seeing daily new content on this website, including you can update your profile, which is already you are there, as well as ask your colleagues to become a member. So we have opened up in last five days, new membership system, which can be entirely online. You can become a member and all your problems. You can directly contact IO office. So there are two uh, different um, uh, ways by which you can be in contact with the IO office. One is a contact us part of the website as well as another is a Back. IOA. Yes, yes, that is the one. Yeah. Okay. No, it will take it will take time in the load. Uh, So what we can do is hmm? net is not working. Okay. Hmm. As, uh, no, no, it's okay. As we are not able to open up the website, I'm just proceeding with my lecture. In the meantime, when we get this, I'll just show you a couple of screens. So, I'm just going to talk about a simple and novel method of gait analysis after knee preservation surgery. So, what exactly I want to bring about is a new tool by which you can go for the gait analysis. So, I'm very much thankful to Dr. Dinesh Chakkar who has given me this opportunity. So, basically, gait has come in BC 1500, which is a horse. From the horse, it has come like you can gait a horse. So, it's a manner of walking and we can say also it's a horse way of moving. So, where the gait is in our day-to-day -day life, it is in the child learning walk, then the normal learning, 
then identifying a person you know he is working or she is working medical diseases sports teachings acting mimicry forensic science which has come up very much now people uh, police can find out the thief very well with the gate fashion so and also there is an application in animation film robotics and avatar in metaverse where the gate is very important so what <clears throat> i'm going to cover about is importance and aims of this gate analysis review labs and about gate sense gate sense is the tool which is given a name then the study material observation literature search and summary so the importance of gate we know it identify unique movements define normal gait patterns diagnose issues which are causing pain the source of the pain then plan the treatment correct deformity find out the results and by which you do more and more gait analy analysis and you develop better and better methods so the normal gait cycle which we all know we just recapitulate it is from the heel strike to the deceleration with a stance and swing and there is a strike so with this normal understanding how many abnormal gaits we are coming across there are so many but interest for us for the osteoarthritis of knee or preservation is an antalgic gait which is a painful limp where the stance phase is less than swing phase very simple way to understand this so gait analysis labs are many so many have come up in the world with a very costly very complex and very sophisticated gadgets where gait analysis is going on so now what i am going to talk about is a very simple tool where it can be done so this is a this is a publication which says that there are so many methods but basically a body sensors method is a better than all other methods so existing what are the solution as we have already learned from the morning that it can be just a 2d sort of a picture where you can find out what could be the weight bearing and changes and then when we have an optical tracking and 2d 3d different methodology with the uh, cameras and other things and now recently it has come up with an iitv where patient walks on that particular uh, uh, floor and iitv pictures are taken which is under the research so what is this particular tool is a called gate sense it is a product from the signer sense and it is having six sensors with one master which is recorded in a laptop and a software which is called move axon so this is a device which is basically a wireless bluetooth uh, bluetooth technology there are multiple sensors connected to the master nodes and there is up to 360 samples per second can be taken up from the patient's uh, gait and 3d motion uh, animation can be done with this uh, with a kinetic data with this software and it is certified by all the government regulators so this is a portable accurate affordable and having a digital report so it is very simple and there are so many publications which are on this this particular software is very good to understand or to learn or to teach or to counsel the patient regarding what is the gait problem and how it is going to be helpful when we do so what is the study material study material is from the restoni uh, hospital where pioneer inventor late dr sharad oza thereafter dr jj patwa and i have joined where there are more than 1000 such high table osteotomies done with around more than 300 now we are having a good data and there are publications so basically it is 21 cases which has been included in this study all operated by same method at restoni hospital and follow up was up to 6 months so gait analysis was done by gait sense that is the tool so what exactly is done that as usual with other methodology x ray ct scan 3d model printing and measurements follow up ct everything is done but it's a basically a close wedge no implant next day weight bearing with a tailored brace that type of osteotomy is followed but there is a pre operative we go with a pre operative ct and mri we send the data to usa to curis data science they give us all the feedback and they tell us what is the best wedge to be removed the closed wedge osteotomy with a transverse incision is done and then post operatively a tailor made brace is given for a month where patient is weight bearing and there after a short brace so with this methodology we try to find out kinematic which is a study of motion static which is a study of the forces of stationary objects and the dynamic which is a study forces of the moving bodies 
So what happens when we learn about the kinematic motion? So there are different planes where you can see sagittal, coronal and axial view, where you can find out what is happening pre and post to the uh, operatibial osteotomy. The, these 3D uh, sensors, they are put on the body in a supine position, two and two, or, I mean, on the forefoot side, one just upper part of the leg and one in the mid thigh. And this is the engineer, Mr. Gunjan Patel, who is MS IIT Madras I fellow, who is doing all this work and is, is a wonderful person who is giving us so many better and good idea with a precise sort of a statistics out of this particular uh, tool. So we have tried to learn the FFD supine, FFD in uh, standing, varus, walking movements, walking rotations and spatiotemporal parameters. So this is the case one where you can see that learning from this sensor, we can find out there is a 56, 55% of improvement in FFD. These are all kinematic study. These are not the X-ray pictures. Like standing, varus, there is a 56% of improvement. Then another case where you can see the FFD has improved by 40%. Another one, which is the virus has been improved by 42%. All these things are from the gait analysis, not from the x-rays. And this is a case where both combined, the results are that there is 25% and 24% improvement, which is sensed by this particular two. So uh, regarding FFD with virus, what is happening? The p-value is so good that it allows us, or rather it promotes us to do better and better studies because now we are getting very good uh, uh, parameters by which we know that if we go ahead with this type of a study, we'll be able to know more about the effects after doing a particular osteotomy. And this is a complex one, but what exactly it says about the rotation is that the, the knee flexion increases post-operatively. And so when you do correction of this axis, the knee flexion is also improved. It's a very complicated thing, which I also took very long time to understand all this. And in the gait swing, flex, uh, swing, uh, mid swing flexion, that also increases very well once the load goes more on the healthy side, that is on the lateral side. So surprising part is that even if the operated joint is better, even the non-operated joint also shows some improvement because the operated joint is now able to bear more and more weight, which is less painful than before. So this is a, a chart of the supine sagittal flexion deformity, which has been corrected. Again, p-value is less than 0 0.04. So it is significant with all 21 samples of the different patients. And it is regarding the rotations where all these things which has been seen, where the rotation range is dramatically changed after uh, post, I mean, operative osteotomy results. In the spatiotemporal part is very interesting that walking speed is improved by 13%, cadence, the steps per minute improved by 14%, and stride time, which is improved by 13%. So all these parameters gives us a good idea. So when we go to the literature, like this particular paper says walking speed and strength increase and the knee abduction movements and lateral thrust decrease, this paper says that there is no change in the time distance parameter, but the patient feels very good. That is how they improve the gait. This paper says like, you know, all about the gait analysis that the open wage reduces knee virus movement and lateral surge, but the closed wage lateral surge is not very well improved. And this paper says that STO surgery restored frontal and transverse plane knee loading to normal levels. And that is something which is very much significant. These papers which says about valgus open with uh, STO produces significant internal rotation of the distal tibia. Is another a significant part which has been very well documented. And this is a study where there is a substantial and clinically important changes in the dynamics. So there is there a load change really occurring or not, which can we see by asking the patient to walk and taking all these data. So in summary, this gait analysis by a gait sense is a simple and a novel method. It is wireless, portable, and accurate. It produces varieties of digital recordings and analysis, which for the future, all researchers can use it. And gate analysis by the close wage STO, which has been in the study part, 
is comparable with the analysis done by other methods, tools published in the literature. And future technological modifications and additions of the parameters may establish this method as the most preferred and standard analytic tool. So this is what I just want to say. And to the lighter part, all this type of gate, people are also using the same things at the Ministry of Silly Walking where the actors can also make you uh, give some entertainment by having a showing a different gates. So this is also as a part of an importance or interest of the people about the gate. So I thank you very much for this patient listening and giving me this opportunity to talk about gate. Thank you. now very interesting session we are starting uh, uh, open versus close wedge now uh, on in close wedge at present i am alone because dr mahesh worry because of some medical crisis he could not come to favor a close wedge uh, now i would uh, like to invite uh, dr smuk kubawat to chair this session and i would uh, Ask Doctor. You are a, yes. you are talking first. Yes, Doctor Rastogi also call everybody. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. But uh, your presentation, uh, Doctor Nishit yeah. and after that you. Yeah. So uh, the idea is uh, just to highlight that whether. Medial wage is good. Okay. So the basically the idea is that we have been talking uh, about uh, instability and the ONE and. Uh, so for that, the middle open way just come and so what, which is better, medial open wage or close wage? And uh, I have been doing a middle open wage, so naturally it is at my heart and that is what I would like to justify. And this is, we have been doing this for, this was my first case in 2006. So it has been uh, now almost more than 15 years and this patient is still doing good. He has not undergone any other surgery. Uh, and Dinesh and me, we worked on around 17 cases and this was presented at Jaipur in 2012. So I think which is, we have enough experience to justify what we are doing. Opening wedge has def uh, def definitely a lot of advantages. Uh, Restoration of anatomy, you are not disturbing the proximal tibial fibular joint or the fibula, which we know that it takes a lot of weight. No lateral compartment muscle detachment. Of course, you can do intraoperative correction, not like TCVO, but and only bone, one bone cut for most of the time. And you can combine ligament reconstruction even with the osteotomy. And that is what is very important in my practice. Okay, that I, I am able to do slope correction for ACL or PCL laxity along with, with, the, with the help of this osteotomy. And this is what, this is the, my patient whom I had already undergone, under the, I had already did uh, ACL reconstruction, PCL reconstruction, 
and then again here a fall. You can see that here a grade 3 laxity, grade little laxity, and he had a lot of medial side pain and his age is 40 years. This is full length x ray. So, naturally, I was doing a revision ACL, did a medial open wedge osteotomy, and this is the result after one year. You can see that I have used a C plate. So this is the stability which you can achieve by opening wedge osteotomy. And this patient is doing wonderfully well. Uh, this was done in, and this is just recently I got his video after five years and he doesn't have any pain. He is doing fantastically well. So this is what uh, the, this is the another lady. You can see that she had a PCL came after one year. You can see this. I do arthroscopy in all the patients just to clean the joint. And then this was after six months of open wage osteotomy. No, no instability. Full range of movement. And she actually, she came on cycle to meet me from 15 kilometers. Uh, so, so this is a, there are a lot of papers. If you want to go ahead, uh, you can see that, but this was, this was a level one paper uh, as you can, and that, that makes a lot of sense that they, they did uh, 92 patients. They said that the HK angle is better preserved in close wedge osteotomy, but there was no difference in the severity of pain or in the knee function at the end of six years. Complications are less in closed wedge, more in open wedge. But if you have to conversion to TKR, if you see it, then 22 patients in closed wedge went for TKR after six years than the open wedge. So these are the conclusion of gray level one paper, which makes a lot of sense uh, to me. This was another from our own Sanjay Agarwala from Bombay that he did in the... Uh, Asian population, he said that you should not use uh, the uh, wage or anything. You only use autographs and better SHS score in uh, in mid or uh, opening wage osteotomy. And a range of movement is also in uh, that group is border and early food bed, food bed. This was a review of 100 cases, 100 consecutive cases of uh, opening wedge osteotomy. And they said that if you combine allograft with a demineralized bone graft and or PRP, there are more chances of non-union. So non-union, to prevent non-union, it is better to use uh, autograft or, or allograft. And they said that they evaluated around 90 osteotomies and all they were post plate and screw fixation, like, like what I do to get more early movement and make patient comfortable. Whether you do STO with ACL reconstruction and use any implant, like you, what we have done is a, a simple uh, plates and a simple staple and very sophisticated arthritis plate, or you use long plate fixation, what you can see is that you there is a, there is a definite opening of the joint space after two years in this patient, if you have done good correction. This is a slope alteration or osteotomy. You can see that, that I have reduced the slope uh, for ACL laxity. And this is what uh, you can see after two years that the patient is doing very well. Whether you do external fixator, like what Dr. Mangal has shown today morning, or you do a dome osteotomy, whatever you do, this is whether you give plaster, and whether you do, the idea is that what, what you should do is that you should do proper correction. Whether, and that is where I feel that open wedge osteotomy makes more sense. Uh, so clinical outcomes of open wedge osteotomy were affected by cardiac status rather by age itself. So do not think that 70 years or 80 years person has to have a Uni, uni or TKR, no, if, if the chronological age, you do not 
you do not treat a chronological age you create uh, you treat its, uh, his physiological age like this lady there was this was after two years of so good sustained alignment regular exercises and modification of lifestyle is the most important for sustaining of open vagus osteotomy and this is is possible this was a how the articular cartilage looks after open vagus osteotomy this was in august 2015 you can see absolutely no articular cartilage on the middle femoral condyle and the tibial condyle what we have done is drilling uh, on the on the femoral condyle you can see the whole weight bearing area and then the micro fracture of the medial tibial condyle where the exposed total exposed cartilage was seen and then the then the osteotomy was done after doing this done while she had a she sustained a fracture after 6 months and that is why we we had to do remove the implant and do an osteotomy which dinesh did and this is what the you can see the articular cartilage regeneration on the medial femoral condyle as well as the tibial condyle at the end of 6 months if you do a proper osteotomy and that the ligament which was absolutely loose has already become tighter tight be, because of you have do an slope alteration so this is uh, what we saw today and this was after 2 2.5 years i don't know whether she should do it this or not but she is doing it so thank you very much and i think we are now open for the debate i like to add only two points with the tomofix a functional rehabilitation is allowed that means on day two patient is allowed to walk the other thing which is important is that the tibia bone varus angle if it is high which is very common in asians then open wedge high tibial osteotomy has definite advantage both over closed and also unique compartment knee replacement because what has been presented is excellent which convinces that is a much simpler procedure and as i said earlier if the opening is up to 22 mm no interpositional graft is required so i think we are afraid uh, uh by non positional graft you know then what will happen if if the plate is longer it is angular stable that means i am saying only with angular stable implant tomo fix i am not saying when there is two screws in each side when there are four locking screws on the each side in a series of 700 cases and by the knee group they have not used any i have never used it so that is not needed one has to do it and feel confident now people are using angular stable implants in trauma also and they are comfortable about functional mobilization of patient uh see uh, up to this time we must have learned uh, that uh, results of high tibial osteotomy is only and only good if we do proper alignment i think little over correction that you must have discussed in pre operative planning also either we do close wedge or open wedge it end result doesn't matter right suppose we are expert in both open wedge and close wedge we are expert in realigning the limb and post operative full length x ray shows that uh, weight bearing axis is passing near the fugis of point both in upper uh, i think open wedge and close wedge both will have a good result no doubt about that but now the problem is what happens with uh, open wedge so i i personally believe 
and even I understand it properly that the best method of high table osteotomy is Dr. Mang what Dr. Mangal has said that it's with external fixator because there is no inside implant. And another thing, you can always achieve an exit correction. You can take a post-operative full length x-ray also. So that if you are satisfied with the alignment, then and then you can come out with a fixator. So fixator is an excellent method. But still, as in day-to-day -day practice, we know that our expectations of our patients is very high. If they will keep the fixator for three months, suppose, how, how many of the patients will accept this? One thing. How many? Yeah, that is also again. And another thing, uh, then if we become a master of high table osteotomy in open wage, starting from the external fixator, if you have become a master, then it's even easier to do open wage. Uh, of course, perfect biplanar is difficult, but open wage is a little easier than closed wage because we have to uh, do only one cut or uh, if we do biplanar, we have to do two cuts. And if we our eye walling, and if I will uh, discuss in the group, we have made a group of delegates that per operative X-ray, we can assess whether we have achieved the alignment or not. We can do it in open wedge also. But open wedge with internal fixator is a little bit more comfortable than uh, external fixator. Even Dr. Mangal has started uh, using Tomofix, right, sir? Have you started X, uh, Tomofix using or not? Yeah, hmm. now. <laughs> no, no, no. So uh, it's not, but. Uh, See, uh, like in upka impression, he Mangal Pariyar ka aisa ho gaya ki HTO with fixer or means Mangal Pariyar. So today, that's why I have kept so bone demonstration by him only. To check whether he knows how. No, 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 sir. I have checked it. <laughs> I know it. I know it. <laughs> but still, uh, I did both. Honestly, telling, I did both. Open wage around. 40, 50 HTOs, but what happened to me practically, because I may be wrong in doing open wage or I don't know, but when people have accepted the good result, they have appreciated it also, but when they have a osteoarthritis in opposite side, then they have refrained to do HTO. And after four, five years, six years, they undergone total knee replacement. I asked one of the known patients, I asked why you did this? So what they say is, and I honestly telling you that this surgery, high table osteotomy, totally becomes pain-free to my patients. I may be technically not perfect, but it takes around around four to four and a half months in open wage. Four to four to four and a half. Now, patient, how will you keep patient with you if there is a continuous pain till four months after surgery? They will lose confidence, what I feel. And then at the end of six months, they appreciate the result. After one year, two years, they are happy. But to pass this first four months is very difficult in era of total knee replacement. Or total knee replacement mein kya hai? Itna attractive lagta hai. Kya tisre din pe chalna hai. That's why the reason. But still, uh, before start, I started open wage, I was doing close wage since long, from year 2001. So my patients of close wage were be becoming quicker. Re recovery period was very quick. So they were coming for opposite knee. But open wage people, only two patients came to me for opposite side. So that is the clear difference that patient, because in this close wage, you have observed this close wage, there is a total contact, bone to bone contact. So it will unite by end of the six weeks. They become comfortable, not total pain free, but becomes comfortable. They are becoming total pain free around three to four months, but they start all the activities after about uh, one and a half month to two months. That that period is pardonable. Plus, uh, this has to do, take two kilos weight or three kilos weight or like after surgery. No, no. This patient support. 
नहीं पे टिल पेशेंट कैन टॉलरेट पेन आई टेल दैट इफ यू हैव अ मोर पेन देन पुट लेस वेट इफ यू हैव लेस पेन देन पुट मोर वेट दैट इज द क्राइटेरिया दैट पेशेंट हैज टू डिसाइड बट दिस इज एन इंटरनल फिक्स सेटर सो इफ दे कैन दे पुट अ फुल वेट देन आल्सो देयर इज नो हार्म सपोज पेशेंट इज नॉट कोऑपरेटिव एंड वॉकिंग विद अ फुल वेट बेरी नो हार्म आई डोंट थिंक दैट एक्सटर्नल फिक्स सेटर में वही तो होता है this is internal fixator what we, we are allowing weight bearing in external fixator so it will allow some micro movements so now i come to the my presentation see again if we pardon hmm. yeah Yeah, I understand, sir. But practically, they have a pain. Till it come, pain is there. Till complete osteotomy is not unite. That is what I observe in most of the patients. And another thing, you know, uh, if we see the articles, review of literature, when we kept a debate in two thousand sixteen, open versus closed, I search all the uh, articles. So at that time, what happened? If I want in favor of closed wedge, I can find any uh, articles in favor of closed wedge. if i am a open wager i can find numbers of articles that favors open wage so a review of literature in controversial topic is always double edged sword if whatever you want you can get it from the literature with a authentic uh, authentic uh, uh, journals so to talk about literature i don't think that much important but still i have a small presentation i will show you here see ऑर्थोपेडिक हम डोर खुला रख के सोएंगे तो नींद तो नहीं आएगी रात को चोरी होने का डर तो लगता है सबको सो वी डोंट हैव ए गुड स्लीप विथ ओपन डोर जब तक ऑर्थोपेडिक सर्जन को नींद तब तक नहीं आएगी जब यूनियन इज एश्योर नहीं है आपको एक्सरे देख के देखते रहते हो फॉलोअप में यार अभी यूनाइट नहीं हुआ अभी गैप दिखता है अभी गैप दिखता है इवन इन फ्रैक्चर वी है ऑब्जर्व दैट सो यूनियन इज डिलेड एज कम्पेयर टू ओपन वेज Uh, as compared to closed wedge in open wedge that obvious very obvious this gap will take some time to fill even we put a bone graft or we don't put a bone graft silent sleep with closed door darwaza band kar ke aaram se so jao koi dar nahi hai union is almost assured non union nahi hota aisa main nahi bolta hu maine face kiya hai lekin union is almost assured in closed wedge ortho ortho surgeon can sleep well when union is assured ओपन डोर एज मेनी लिमिटेशन ये दरवाजा खुला रख के क्या करेंगे मेनी लिमिटेशन राइट विच आर देर लिमिटेशन ओपन डोर में कैसे हिम्मत आए किस सो सेम वे ओपन वेज एज मेनी लिमिटेशन इफ वारस इज मोर देन ट्वेल्व डिग्री अब मंगल परियर बोलेगा कि मैं तो 12 डिग्री से ज्यादा भी एक्सटर्नल फिक्सेटर से करूंगा लेकिन विद टोमो फिक्स इट्स डिफिकल्ट बिकम्स डिफिकल्ट विद एनी इंटरनल फिक्सेटर इट बिकम्स डिफिकल्ट वायरस मोर देन 12 डिग्री और 15 डिग्री देन ओपन वेज बिकम्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट विद इंटरनल फिक्सेटर एक्सटर्नल फिक्सेटर ऑब्वियसली वी कैन डू बट एक्सटर्नल फिक्सेटर एज इट्स ओन लिमिटेशन फ्लेक्शन डिफॉर्मिटी मोर देन टेन डिग्री वी हैव सीन दैट देर वॉज अ थर्टीन डिग्री ऑफ फ्लेक्शन डिफॉर्मिटी टू डे ऑल्सो then also we corrected the flexion deformity so that is not uh, this much flexion deformity uh, rasulogi sir can you how how much fft you can correct by open wedge 20 degree fft ah uh, but 20 degrees correct kar sakte ho fft okay i have not experience so because i i found it very difficult to correct fft with open wedge it's very difficult mangal sir aapka kya kehna hai ffd how much can you correct with open wedge tomo fix sir low for for normal 10 degree mm -hmm. up to valgus with lateral compartment osteoarthritis isme kya karoge aap open wedge kar sakte ho नहीं नहीं लेटरल कंपार्टमेंट आर्थराइटिस है तो दैट इज वन मोर लिमिट लेटरल कंपार्टमेंट विथ लेटरल कंपार्टमेंट आर्थराइटिस है तो ओपन वेज आई मीन लेटरल ओपन वेज कर सकते हो आई डोंट नो आई हैव नॉट सीन एनीवेयर सो दिस इज लिमिटेशंस ऑफ ओपन वेज राइट 
varus more than 10 12 or 15 degrees flexion deformity more than 10 degrees and valgus with lateral compartment osteoarthritis internal tibial torsion is difficult to correct with lateral hinge right anybody open wage mein kitna internal tibial torsion correct kar paoge internal tibial torsion suppose hai to open wage mein how can you correct i think i don't i don't think we can correct more than 2 3 degree so all these limitations all all these limitations with open wage right many liberties with the closed door closed wage everything is possible with closed wage i will pardon <laughs> this is modern closed wage i don't i am not talking about uh, coventry that is what we have seen here today this is how the bone model shows this is how lateral view all we have seen so this is the patient where varus is around 25 degree on this side 18 degree on left left side and this is corrected very well i think both of them is not fit for the open wedge and this is well aligned limb and we can see the gait also this is pre operative gait how she was walking before surgery and how is she is walking after surgery right so this probably becomes difficult with open wedge and now this is we can see that this much of ffd fix before surgery this is ffd this much of ffd i don't think open wedge can correct it varus with ffd this is corrected this it has become straightened and varus is also corrected here and if we look towards the x ray then this was the varus pre operative this much of the flexion this both x rays are in full extension and after surgery we have i have altered this slope slope has been reversed and then it become neutral and here also we can see that alignment is also weight bearing exists passing through very well in the lateral compartment and we can observe the obvious difference in the gait pattern how she was she had a difficulty in walking before surgery and after surgery she can walk like a normal that is after 6 month of second leg the both surgery work. so ffd with varus also can be taken care of by close with today also i have purposefully i kept this case because i had admitted two patients one with simple varus without ffd but still it's pending i will do it tomorrow today i did with varus with ffd because just to show that we can correct ffd also with in close wage this is lateral compartment arthritis and after that even close wedge medial close wedge can take care of this is before surgery this is after surgery or full function we all know that and this is the alignment before surgery we can see here and after surgery it passes to the center of the knee joint but still if it is passing through center but see is painless huh? i would have done little more but i could do like this only internal tibial torsion here we can see that this is the patella this tibial torsion we are cutting both the cortices complete cut karte koi inch to rakhte nahi hai so we can rotate the distal fragment while after closing the wedge so this internal tibial torsion also here we can see before surgery internal tibial torsion has been corrected after surgery this is pre operative x ray this is post operative x ray again this is patient of dynamic varus varus is more but we can see that here the varus is increasing on weight bearing so there is a opening of lateral joint space on weight bearing so this also can be taken this is weight bearing x ray if we measure in this how what will happen it will lead a too much eye correction so this is non weight bearing x ray all pre operative planning has been made on this and after surgery we can see that it's very well shifted in the lateral compartment this is the weight bearing x ray this x now this opening has been gone in weight bearing x ray this is standing x ray and this is uh, lateral x ray and if we see the gate this has been gone up this is after this is dynamic varus but here it has been corrected on weight bearing there is no now opening of uh, lateral joint space so this much varus can also be taken care of with another patient with ligament laxity some people say that ligament laxity cannot be treated by uh, 
uh, open uh, close wedge. Here we can see that there is a double laxity. Here we can see that there is a lateral thrust. Lateral thrust, we, we can observe the TBI is shifting little lateral on weight bearing on this side. If we see closely, then we can see TBI is there is a lateral thrust. So if we assess properly, the, if we see there is a clinical examination shows that there is a laxity of lateral collateral ligament. Right? You can observe that lateral collateral ligament laxity. And now, then there is a laxity of anterior cruciate ligament also. So, to have a lateral thrust, there should be two ligament laxity, either of the cruciate or a one collateral. Then and then there will be a lateral thrust. So, both of them will be taken care. This is after surgery. Here, that we can see that there is no lateral thrust if alignment. If we do a proper alignment, if we look towards the X-ray, then this is the X-ray preoperative. This is the clinical picture. This is after both lower limb, but still here you can see that there is well aligned limb and lateral thrust has gone. So you can see it on the floor. And another thing what we did was slope alteration by close wedge. I think if we want to increase the slope, due to PCL laxity, then open wedge is better. I accept that because oh, increased slope by close wedge is very difficult. I have tried, but it was very difficult. So increase if you want to increase the posterior tibial slope, open wedge is much better and easier. But if you want to decrease the posterior tibial slope, then uh, close wedge is much comfortable. Here we can see there was a this much slope and then it was corrected after surgery. Closed door does not mean that we are completely safe. Somebody can come from the window and can stole something from our pose. So closed wedge is not out of complication, but these all complications, even I have face excessive valgus non-union, but these all can be taken care of and then knee replacement can also is possible if we have done some something wrong. That is why I prefer closed wedge. Why I prefer closed wedge? because it can replace the knee replacement in many cases. So I, my request is, please don't kill the knees. Even if you find that it looks like it has to be replaced, we can always take care by the closed wedge. <coughs> Try to save knee. Thank you for attention, but still debate is continued. Anybody want to ask why closed wedge and why open wedge? Yes. Oh. Open wedge osteotomia or closed wedge osteotomy. See, what overall observation is that open wedge osteotomy lengthens the limb. I think open wedges must be accepted. Should be. If we have a both equal, limb length equal, then if we do open wedge, there will be lengthened limb on the operated side. While in closed wedge, there was, a, there was an article in which it was mentioned that the open wedge lengthens the limb by around four, five millimeter or more than five to five millimeter to one centimeter. And closed wedge can decrease the length by two or three millimeter, not that much limb length discrepancy. So limb length discrepancy after close wedge was little less than open wedge. Yeah, no, opposite, mostly varus is on both sides, most of the time. Most of the time varus is on both sides. Post traumatic is a different issue. Post traumatic is a different. Excuse issue. me. I had operated one patient. He had two centimeter short. She had two centimeter shortening. I did it with open wedge uh, uh, with trauma fix. She was fine. So she had post traumatic shortening due to uh, condylar fracture. So in that case, I would advise to go for open wedge only. My my question, my simple question: one patient with seven or ten degree of varus without any FFT or ligament laxity in which both the things is possible. Either I can do open wedge, Rastogisar can do, uh, uh, Rastogisar can do open wedge, I can do close wedge. Then which HTO should be preferred? Suppose limitations I, we know, limitations we know, ke open wedge 15 se jada nahi ho sakta, FFT mein nahi ho sakta. Suppose both is possible, then what will you prefer? That is uh, other than debaters, anybody wants, Jo debate participate nahi hue, uski baat kar raha 
uh, whatever the discussion is going on right from the morning till this moment, uh, what we as an orthopedic surgeon, we know one thing that just for the union of the fracture, you have to have the total contact as far as possible. That is what is always recommended by our uh, AO group and the other groups also. So, the we are creating here the fracture, okay? The fracture of the proximal tibia. So, what Dr. Mangal Pariyar is doing is a very good method of doing osteotomy because there are no implants and you have to have a complete control of the deformity correction till the end of the correction. That is the best method. That is what from morning till this moment I have understood. But as far as possible, when we are creating fracture iatrogenically for the purpose of benefit to the patient, we have to create some situation where there are less possibility even in dream for creating some other problems. Still, there are closed wedge osteotomy has a problem sometimes. Sometimes it always is not that clear. It will always go for union. But still, as far as possible, if you make the both the surfaces of the uh, fragment contact with each other, then there are more possibility, 99% possibilities of union where for open wage osteotomy you have to have a separate technique like what rastoki sahib has said or you have to have a separate available tomo fix all these are in our probable country where patients are going every patient is not able to afford tomo fix probably so, this is a scientific platform. I, we, we should not talk about the money part, but tomofix also is a big concern for many patients. What Rastoki Sabha Sarasar has said, okay, tomofix, if you apply tomofix, there are 22 millimeter open which will always unite. But that much control of knowing by eyeballing method that this is 22 millimeter. Probably for that may not be possible in everybody's hand. Whereas to make the contact of the osteotomy, which is seen right on the table, is probably seen by almost everybody and it is confirmed by everybody. So that is what probably I would see, I would think, unless there is specific indication where open wage osteotomy is to be recommended, there are few conditions. What Dinesh Bhai has also said just now. I think, I think there are many uh, surgeons who are doing open wage, many years sitting here. So I want to ask their experience. That suppose if you have done some Bipin Bhai or Yogesh Bhai must have done or some other colleagues, I think Tarkik is also doing. Uh, he is present or not. May I yeah. add, yeah. add some, yeah. some yeah. Uh, addition to this discussion? Yeah. Yeah. To complete the subject, what about a dome osteotomy? Dome osteotomy is also a good con. There is a contact, but at present we have not discussed at this subject. I understand this is also a good, but I am not. I have not experienced. Solve each and every question and answer for for the open. Is in contact and is on this. And you maneuver. But I think technically it's a bit tough. I don't know. Please, please. Practice something which you are comfortable with. If you are comfortable with the Lizaro fixators or lock plates, number one. Second, things which has to be remembered is soft tissue preservation has a very strong role. When you do a dome osteotomy, then you strip a lot of bone. It... No, 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 it's no, a very no, no. small cut. Sir. Look, the cut is small. Through which you can go, but it devitalizes the tissue too much. No, 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 sir. I don't think, but still. Uh... Nay, I have also done it, but I find it maybe I was not that experienced. I find it little more damaging for the uh, soft tissues. While no incision, five incision doesn't make anything. A tomofix can is also done by a five millimeter incision. 
that is not the question but to cut the whole bone you will ought to strip soft tissues no. in that area not that much you not that. Yeah. i i so when you cut maybe and and you can correct the rotation also but he's not practicing much i don't yes. know but he's not practicing much i understand the point is valid that it serves the both purpose it serves the both purpose there's there is a contact of bone also but technically i found i must it must be difficult otherwise almost all surgeons must have accepted that thing to if it is that much comfortable and easy I have not tried. Honestly, Dinesh, I have I'll share one of my case. I did in 95, 1995. I had a follow-up of 21, 22 years. Eliezer assisted bilateral domostotomy. He was fine. He was a Muslim guy. He was not able to pray namaz, but he has good flexion at the end of 21, 22 years. That is also one thing. And uh, another thing, uh, uh, if we think of open wage, Obviously, uh, it, uh, it treats the pathology because almost there is a tibia vara and we are correcting the tibia vara. So, if we, what my conclusion is, at least my take is, uh, suppose uh, most of here surgeons are uh, sitting here listening since morning. I want to ask to the audience, how many orthopedic surgeons has performed HTO, either open or closed? Please raise your hand. How many of you have performed HTO, right? That is, and how many of them are op open wagers? Almost all, almost all open wagers. Now, how many are close wagers? Close wagers are very less, I think. Close wagers are very less. Close wagers are very less. Or those, raise your hand, who has just not started of doing HTO. there are so many numbers who has not tried. So those who have not tried, suppose today you have learned, so which will you prefer? Either open wedge or close wedge? I tell you, open wedge is easier. Which technique will you prefer? Those who have not done yet. I understand. That is, that is not, I am, my question is very clear. My, my, my question is very clear. Suppose both is possible. Both is possible then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just, just, just say hi bye to everybody. <laughs> we will. <laughs> Dr. Rastogi has a flight earlier than. Uh, Yes, I'm extremely leave. sorry for doing something which I have never done. Leave your meeting before it concludes. But I was under the impression this should be over by 4, 4.30 and it is extended. So I think everybody will excuse me. It was beyond my control. My sincere apologies. So what my take is HTO with external fixator, if a beginner wants to start, is they should start with a proper understanding with HTO with open, fix, open uh, external fixator because it's very easy. And uh, keep in mind that patient will appreciate you after six months, not before that. You have to keep patient with you at least five to six months. At the in the ends of Mangal, it may be three four months, but in our hands as a beginner, it's it must be around six months. Or that is ideal. And again, if you have mastered with external fixator, then I would suggest try internal fixator with open wedge. If you mastered that and that, try close wedge because close wedge is technically very difficult. I understand that, right? So close wedge is the third choice, I think. And jo mujhe lagta hai, wo main batata hun, ke ideal is open wedge. Uh, ideal in our society is Bhagwan Ram. Ram is a symbol of ideology. So if we compare with the open wedge, then it's just like to follow the Lord Ram. And close wedge is a practical. Is a practical is a Lord Krishna. 
So I'm follower of Lord Krishna and is they are the followers of Lord Ram. Right? So is easy to follow the Krishna than to follow the Ram. But expert comments from the Shoban Vishal. Shoban ni tayari karada and discussion chalu hai tiyan sathya. Deputy Sinti Sneka. Still, we can continue the discussion. Yes. Just to conclude the session, uh, one thing I'll tell that I myself have been operated for high TBL osteotomy with Tomofix. Uh, six years down the line, I can perform the surgery, say, for three, four uh, hours, being an Elizabeth yes. surgeon. And uh, uh, I was pain free almost for five years. Now, little bit pain has started because opposite side is not operated. But uh, uh, I'll say that uh, any method, either closed wedge or open wedge, you should do it perfectly and you should try to achieve as Dr. Mangala showed in his paper. Uh, but I would go for uh, open wedge with Tromofix. So uh, why you are not operated on the other knee? You don't have a problem? Sorry? You don't have any problem on the other knee? No, still, that is waiting for surgery. No, no. But before that, you never had it? I had pain, uh, both the sides were more on right side and uh, I uh, lingered up for almost 15 years. Then I got operated by Dr. Milin Choudhury for right side high table osteotome. No, no. So if you had, uh, let us say, 100% in right knee, what was the left knee at the time of surgery? How much pain? There was no pain on left side at that time. Okay. Continue. Ultimately, it is to be decided by the surgeon who is happy with which method and secondly, patient's comfort because fixator uh, will have problem of comfortability of the patient. See, uh, at present, still uh, one domin uh, dominating faculty in India, Dr. Mangal Pariyar is with us. So please solve your all queries with him. He can answer any damn question. Even I cannot answer, he can answer a lot of questions. So young people, please, any query, don't go with query. It will be solved very scientifically. I am not that much scientific as Dr. Mangal is. So he will solve your queries very scientifically. So please raise your hand and ask the question.
थोड़ा सा इसको इसको थोड़ा पीछे ले लो हाँ so वो ऐसा देखेगा और थोड़ा सा इधर आ जाओ बस अजीत पाटिल विल बी फेसिलिटेटेड बाय मोमेंट ऑफ वाइफ डॉक्टर विकास जैन पास प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ गुजरात ऑर्थोपेडिक एसोसिएशन यू कैन स्टार्ट सर all right so um this is how our hinge the tip of the hinge the the hinge point will come on the lateral side somewhere just above the tip of the fibula we start from here what sanjay was pointing out at at that um curve right and you want your pins your your osteotomy to go in this direction now when it goes in this direction you are going to encounter the tuberosity so you need to separate that tuberosity from this cut so for that we do what's known as the biplanar so one osteotomy is one osteotomy is like this and the other osteotomy is in another plane which is like this right so we'll start the the there are two kinds of uh plates available one is a thicker one and one is a thinner one this one looks the same to me they, these are both the same but there is a, a thicker version of the same plate which is uh, called the asian one uh that is less prominent for our uh, patients now the the first step is to expose this you can expose it through an oblique incision like this i prefer to take a vertical incision here and then another small incision over here out here you get the pes anserinus and uh, once you have opened this running your your finger or an artery you can feel the bump of that uh, pes anserinus 
usually the cut is made at the upper edge of the pes anserinus but you need to be sure especially in small indian ladies that if your pes anserinus is here then you may need to elevate it a little sometimes even divide it a little because getting all four screws into the proximal fragment is crucial so um this distance is uh, 38 mm so that's the minimum distance you should have so if your pes is lower is higher than that you will need to elevate the pes or you will need to incise it so we put that we put the wire looking at it um on the c arm aiming for the tip aiming for the tip of the um fibula this is a little high so when i'm drilling it itself under the cm normally i would aim for it a little lower so we don't we don't need to come out but this is a good position for the wire now when you are doing this under c arm if you do a proper ap this is the view you will get so you need to flex the knee a little so that you get what's known as a plafond view so that you are looking at the slope <laughs> and then the second wire this tends to rotate so the second wire will now go parallel to the slope where is the ek minute so you can see the slope here this line is kind of parallel to the slope you agree this new one which i am drawing not the old one this one so the second one will go here looking at it on the c arm both of these should be parallel to each other so they should be parallel to the slope when you look at it on the lateral and you should see them as one wire when you look at it on the ap you go uh, here i have taken this out but you you go just uh, 5 to 10 mm um inside short of the lateral cortex and then taking another wire and keeping it along that you can measure what is going to be the length of the blade that need that that goes in so you can then stop before you go in uh, with that size of a blade all right bola uh, so so in our case this this uh, the colibri blade is is small it's not the blade that you normally use but we'll we'll go with that so you cut under the wire so that you don't extend that way and you keep the the blade flush with the wire use the wire to sort of direct that i forgot one thing so here your mcl 
which is on the posterior aspect has been erased erased down like you do on uh, for a tkr a homan is put in and all of that is taken behind and a periosteum is run uh, posteriorly creating space here so that there is no chance of damage to the soft tissue that homan is in place the original ao technique talks of keeping the knee in 90 degrees flexion when you are doing this cut but there are now papers which show that it doesn't really make a difference but still because usually we are doing this from the medial side so it's easier to keep the knee a little flexed it's easier for you to um, reach it right so we cut Notice I have not gone onto the front. Yeah. So now for the front, you want to go with this. Thoda sa idhar aja. Ha. You want to go with this vertical portion. Is called thoda sa turn. I want to give you a dead lateral of this. इसको थोड़ा सा ऐसा पकड़ इधर से इधर हाँ राइट सो नाउ दिस कट हैज टू गो ऑलमोस्ट पैरल टू द एंटीरियर क्रेस्ट ऑफ द टिबिया दिस मेक्स एन एंगल ऑफ अबाउट 110 डिग्रीज दिस वुड बी this would be 90 degrees so you are making about 110 degrees there right ha ha de do you are you able to see it thoda sa aur idhar aa jao dekho yeah all right so now i'm i have a homan over here which is lifting the patella tendon to protect it and then i go i'll have to take out these wires to do the cut because the blade is small but essentially you will be normally with with a standard blade you will be able to go in or oh, actually let's do one thing let's cheat a little and shorten the wire well that's what we do in surgery we cut the wire but here we will not have a so when, when by the time you are done you have this cut uh, it needs to go a little more but we'll we'll go with this right and posterior cortex also needs to go normally a little somewhere up to there so your your cuts are going to be 1 cm 0.5 to 1 cm short then we are going this is 
we are going to put this into about 70 mm. Scale dikh raha hai 50. Sixty. Am I right? Thoda idhar counter de de. Sixty. This you are able to well visualize on the CR. Then put in another one alongside with the handle facing the other way. Third one. Good. Good. So you see that opens up while leaving the um, hinge, which is more posterior, kind of open. There is a technique of what is called as. Uh, using the uh, hinge wire, where under CM you put in a wire starting at this edge and going down over here. So, even if there is a little bit of extension, this wire serves to stabilize that and it does not displace, right? So, you can use this wherever you are using a uh, hinge. Then the other way of doing this is use this um, distractor, which works with a which works with a, a standard screwdriver, and this can show the number of degrees that you are opening it. Yeah, but none of these methods is foolproof. So you have to kind of constantly cross check angle, how much is the wedge I am supposed to open and your alignment. Now the other thing here again, this if you notice has got measurements. So this has to be put in such that the apex of it is sitting over there. If you put it only up to here and open it, you won't get the right angle. So, we will try and push it there and then um, either say cool. Boom out. So, uh, Rook. So, all of this has to be uh, plastic deformation and uh, generally I uh, tend to be very, very What's the word? Ichi meaning ghai mein. I'm, I'm usually in a ghai. So, to prevent any trouble with this, I turn it two turns, then take a little walk around the uh, OT and then come back. So, that gives it two minutes to expand a little. Then two turns again, take a walk around the OT. Don't try like a usual orthopedic surgeon, 10 degree, you know, 6 second mein karo. Do it. <laughs> So now you have opened it up the amount that it needs to be opened up. Nikal those. So both of this stacking and this wedge opening are meant to gradually open it up and break this portion of the break this portion of the hinge to the extent required. Then to hold it open you require the uh, spreader. 
so the assistant can give a little bit of valgus and you put the spreader now this is the critical part where most people have a problem the spreader should be put and at this point you can also take out the uh, wires but the spreader should be put on the posterior edge okay and your um, i think i'll take out the wire because anyway So now he showed you A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four. So you have spaces on D and four, so that that keeps the plate away and doesn't push it completely on the soft tissue. So we will hold it open with the spreader. Is there a way? on the posterior edge this opens in a trapezoidal fashion you can see that more broad posteriorly less broad anteriorly if you open it if you put your spreader here you will tend to open it more anteriorly than posteriorly because there is a lot of soft tissues there so and plus the spreader works this is a better quality bone bas ye pagad so let us say we decided uh, x mm so then on this posterior edge you can put this um scale inside and measure this shows you so this is now a 12 mm 11 somewhere between 11 and 12 mm gap so that that is measured as behind as you can because that's that's what you're seeing on the x ray when you're measuring on the x ray you are looking at the posterior medial uh, cortex right ye pakad ke rakh thoda bus then holding this you ensure that your plate is properly placed that you will get four screws into the proximal fragment that the solid portion of the plate is against the gap so that there is no chance of failure and then we will use so these are kind of uh, converging and if you look at it from the side they are uh, kind of not perpendicular they are pointing a little down so you go high up here and you are coming a little lower on that side now out of this when you uh, if, if you want to check patla sleeve hai k wire ka sleeve hai isme yeah you can put this k wire sleeve to ensure that the k wire dal is jayega nahi utna lamba nahi hai this is 
जाएगा नहीं बट यू कैन यू कैन यूज अ लॉन्गर के वायर टू स्टेबिलाईज दिस प्लेट टू दॅट बिफोर यू स्टार्ट एनी ड्रिलिंग अँड देन चेक ऑन द लॅटरल दॅट यू आर इन द राईट पोझिशन ओके वेन यू हॅव दिस um when you have the spreader in you can use this alignment rod which goes um this portion will go onto the thigh that portion will go onto the head you check its position on the head then check its position on the ankle confirm that they are central and see where you are in terms of the knee if you are not lateral enough you can just open the spreader by a couple of clicks again again uh, check it rest of it is is pretty straight forward ye zara laga do wapas ek bar spreader laga do thoda sa valga sone do bas ha so now we are on the antero medial surface about a centimeter from the joint confirmed that this one will also have hold we don't have a k wire holding this so i will have to hold it and you can get into this uh you have to get into the feel of feeling for the posterior cortex not dry, directly uh, drilling through it so i'll put one screw in so that my plate is held i have less trouble kya hai tera screw 60 shaft locking screws generally a good idea to put them in under power nahi abhi koi abhi to put them in under power so that there is no jiggling but the last portion should not be you should not lock it under power right. otherwise you will get a cold weld <laughs> okay i can then abhi is thoda sa isko pakad
Okay, sure. So now we have broken the hinge. So we will put Ola, yellow ala de. Ah, three point two. तो ये देना है स्क्रू ड्राइवर दे डायरेक्ट स्क्रू दे डायरेक्ट 50 का सबसे लंबा जो है वो सेम है दे नहीं 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 ड्रिल पे सो दिस हैज़ टू बी ड्रिल्ड विद अ 3.2 the yellow compression screwdriver. We don't have one, so that goes through the BCP hole. So the funda of this thing is, uh, look at this side, the hinge, okay? Abhi isko tight kar thoda, is, idhar aja. Isko dhire dhire tight kar. As he tightens this, this pulls the lateral cortex, huh? Okay, so as this is tightened, the lateral cortex is uh, pulled towards that and whatever breaks are there in the lateral cortex that compresses this lateral cortex, makes it um, stable. Uh, then you have to add in all of the others and finally this one, so we, we take this out, add locking screws here, add locking screws here and take this also and put a locking screw. So now you've got your this biplanar which is preventing anterior posterior movement. This because it fell down, it's, it's displaced like that. But otherwise it just um, slides up. You pull the egg bar. So normally as, as you are, as you are doing your distraction, this one is uh, in contact, your biplanar and it, it prevents any uh, external rotation. So the, if you notice what Sanjay was saying in his uh, presentation, this is already in contact. So by about three to four weeks, this has already healed on the uh, CT and the MRI pictures and that's what makes this stable and because of this and the strong plate, you don't need to put anything inside. So when you say open wedge Tomofix HTO, you are talking of using a biplane technique, you are talking of using a Tomofix plate. Only then you can get away without putting anything inside. If you use a pudu plate, then you can't do a biplanar and you can't leave the space empty. Then you have to put in a bone graft, right? Tomofix means Tomofix plate, biplanar 
osteotomy. And in fact, if you look at the papers which they have, their experimental papers, they found that adding stuff into the gap actually retards the healing. If you add any uh, bone substitute material, the healing is retarded. Whereas just keeping it a gap and putting in the, the uh, allowing the clot to form and natural bone healing, it heals by three to six months. Right? So, any questions? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But tip of the fibula, not head of the fibula. So, that, that's why you keep the wire like this. If you do the wire like this, if it fractures in the lateral condyle of the tibia, it's not a problem. There are three types of fractures, type 1, type 2, type 3. So, type 1 is in the lateral in the lateral condyle. That's not a problem. What I showed you just now solves it. If your fracture goes into the joint, that's not a good thing. And if your fracture goes down into the uh, shaft, that's also not a good thing. So, therefore, if you keep your wires like this and stay close to the wire, the chance and go close enough to the lateral tip. The worst thing that can happen is a type 1 fracture, which is not a problem. Type 2, type 3 is the issue. So, that's why they were asking to keep your level high, uh, lower at the level of head. Lower than what? Tip of the head. Where the head no, no. If you keep it towards the tip of the head, then it will fracture. This, this lateral condyle is the, is the softest portion of bone. So, that's why you, you keep it at a slightly at or above the level of the tip of the fibula, not below that for sure. Because if you keep it below, then it is it, it is liable to go into a type 3. Right? Any more? Yeah. Post-op, um, range of motion exercises, weight bearing, as tolerated within the first week to 10 days. The original technique of the, uh, the 97 cases which they reported was non-weight bearing, uh, touchdown weight bearing for six weeks. Yes, but since then, there are papers from Japan, etc., where bilateral open wedge STOs have been done and patients have been allowed full weight bearing. So, now as long as the patient is not grossly overweight, you can start weight bearing as tolerated, especially if it's one side. Yes, sir. Sir? Yeah, yeah. Finish your question. Then you post of rehabilitation, HTO orthopic, sir, external fixation. Oh, external fixation. It's um, same exercise, touchdown weight bearing. They start distracting at seven days, like Elisarov, latent phase, distraction phase. Usually, 21 to 23 days it takes for it to uh, come to the proper angle. Once it is locked, they can take weight, weight as tolerated. Thank you, sir. Thank you. No. With the fixator, it's only uniplanar. Biplanar here is to prevent rotation and things like that for the stability. But the fixator in itself is very, very stable. So, uh, what level of osteotomy you do for yourself uh, in your practice regarding below tuberosity? Same. It is exactly the same, except the ending point is the same, but it has to go below the tuberosity, so it starts a little lower. That's about it. So, the obliquity of the osteotomy is determined by where I want to end up. What, where you start? From the uh, medial order? That's what I said. Order. From, where I, from where I want to end up. So, in this patient, if, the, if I want to end up here and this patient's tuberosity is here, then I will start here. If this patient's tuberosity is here, then I will start here. Because I want to be below the tuberosity, at the same time, I want to end up at the tip of the fibula. So, it tends to vary. If you notice, you will find some fibulae are very close to the tibia. Some are pretty low down. So, that, that's a more of an individualized 
prescription not as a hard not so many centimeters below <laughs> what rotational configuration in in uh, hto it, it doesn't exist i'm i'm telling you how do you decide uh, how, whether there is a h uh, uh, rotational deformity put looks inside but in all the uh, other deformity not hto in all the other deformity corrections that we do say varus mid diaphyseal varus often times they have what looks to be a uh, internal rotation deformity and the moment the varus is corrected that you can sit now you don't need to stand the moment the varus is corrected that internal rotation is gone so internal rotation if you really want to check you have to check it by uh, this thing ct scan right so if i suspect very strongly that there is a rotational deformity over here then patient will have a ct scan and if the patient truly has a rotational deformity then you can't correct it uh, with the open wedge you can't correct it with the the fixator also which i showed either it has to be an elizarov or it has to be a closed wedge but i have not really found um, this this you will find senior surgeons saying this all the time that you should always add a little bit of external rotation uh, when you do a coventry closing wedge some of it is myth nobody to meaning there was no data available some of it is what uh, ajit talked about <laughs> you you notice he said that if they walk with external rotation the load becomes less so maybe it is related to that ki thoda external rotation de do to adductor moment aise bhi uh, kam ho jayega but after the deformity is corrected i have not found any patient who is still walking with intoing gait they are all all straight so if it is genuinely a thing it cannot be done with this but for standard hto where the patient comes with varus knee pain on the inside of the knee i have not found rotation to be an issue uh in, if you if you put it on the front i showed you that trapezoidal thing so if you if you put it on the front and open it more on the front then you will increase the slope and if you put it at the back and distract it more it will think of it this way <laughs> i don't know if you will be able to imagine this think of a rectangle okay in this rectangle i have cut a wedge okay now front to back on that rectangle the the wedge shape will be like this only suppose you take vertical sections in that rectangle you will find that the the wedge is like this only so if you look at it from this side you will find that it is front and back are exactly parallel now think of that same rectangle what is the shape of the tibia triangle right so if you think of that same rectangle cut this way not like this if it is cut like this then what will happen it will be a trapezoidal shape i i think one of these days i will make a animation to to explain that it's act to, to my mind it's very straightforward because the tibia is like this as you come forward you are you are getting a thinner wedge so actually a trapezoidal wedge is only a triangular representation of a parallel cut yes sir uh, regarding sir osteotomy osteotomy of the posterior wall hmm. uh, what should be the direction of the saw you should come for, from anterior to posterior or antero no. medial to posterior lateral or dead uh, uh, posterior wall only. Post posterior wall i i use the saw on the posterior wall 
ensuring that i've got a good homans behind right up to the lateral aspect and the homans is pushing everything down yes i would not i would not because with an osteotome it it cuts it, it uh, shatters it breaks so you can then have a lot of uh, fissures i understand the worry is that we are going to injure something but if you can if you can create that periosteal uh, uh, you know reflection and put a homans there and keep it down there should not be a problem just following the just following the wire and the other thing to remember is you should use a, there are there not the tkr blade this is a very thin and flexible blade so you use this thin blade and don't use the blade you know right from the time the saw came the same blade is being used no three four cases at most they use one uh, blade every case i probably i will change the blade after two or three cases the moment i feel that it's not doing its job the blade is out yeah ffd is one thing is you reduce the slope so if it is 80 degrees behind and you make it 90 degrees straight away 10 degree slope has uh, gone so that is the way that i reduce it if it's more than 10 degrees then i would prefer to use an elizero or if i'm doing a femur as well as tibia then i can do 10 degrees in the femur 10 degrees in the tibia up to 20 degrees um, um dinesh said he can he does 20 in up to 20 right <coughs> ah, but that's because dinesh goes like this he will go uh, 80 is the normal slope 90 is this this is 100 so some of the cases he has shown i have seen he goes even more i am scared i am scared of that because i think that that will what ajit was saying shear forces that will still create trouble he has had no he has had no trouble with it but i would not do it your la question what is define patella femoral arthritis severe means what that's what i'm saying correct so i till now i have not operated on a single patient who didn't have some or the other patellofemoral osteophytes some or the other lateral osteophytes and still when we do their mri or we do their arthroscopy you find that the lateral compartment is pristine so the the indication for a high tibial osteotomy is not isolated medial compartment osteoarthritis it is predominantly medial compartment osteoarthritis that's number 1 number 2 is lot of these symptoms which are supposedly of patellofemoral pain for example walking up and down slopes walking up and down stairs they happen even with medial compartment osteoarthritis so all the patients that we have operated for a high tibial osteotomy their patello so called patello femoral pain also goes away goes away without the mackay effect so this is this the, and this is the thing with science now uh, a lot of people like to do arthroscopy uh, with hto right because th that sounds uh, logical कि हाँ आर्थ्रोस्कोपी करेंगे तो दिखेगा अंदर कुछ जॉइंट में डैमेज है कि नहीं और फिर अगर डैमेज है तो एंड वी हैव डन आई थिंक इवन अजीत मस्ट हैव यू डू आर्थ्रोस्कोपी नो वी हैव डन हंड्रेड्स ऑफ केसेस विदाउट आर्थ्रोस्कोपी एंड आर पेशेंट्स आर डूइंग वेल नाउ सो वेर इज सो वॉट इज द क्वेश्चन देन सो द क्वेश्चन दैट हैज टू बी आस्ट इज डज आर्थ्रोस्कोपी रियली हेल्प इन डिसीजन मेकिंग इफ अ पेशेंट हैज मैकेनिकल सिम्टम्स catching locking then yes arthroscopy but even there i say we'll do the hdo arthroscopy ko kya ek din lagta hai na recovery kya for a 
मेनिस्कस ट्रिमिंग एंड दिस एंड देर इज नो रिकवरी एच टी ओ होने के बाद तीन महीना देखो अगर तकलीफ है तो आदरोस्कोपी कराओ एंड वी हैव हैड अ सिचुएशन वेयर रियली वी नीड टू डू अथरोस्कोपी सो ऑल दो थिंग्स सेटल डाउन यस नो इट डजेंट मेक सेंस बिकॉज इफ यू लुक एट द इफ यू लुक एट द लिटरेचर Uh, there is a paper by a korean guy called na that was the first paper now there must be more also so na looked at i think it was um if i am 50% for sure i am not sure whether it was 50 cases somewhere a significant number of cases randomized them to repair of so they all had a first look and a second look arthroscopy randomized to repair of the root tear or no repair of the root tear plus hto in the second look arthroscopy 50% of the patients who had a root tear but didn't have a root repair their root tears were healed number 1 number 2 all of the patients whether they had a root tear or didn't have a root tear but had an hto clinically they improved so to me that says that is not the root tear that is at issue it's the alignment and there are other papers also but now if you if so unless you set up a study like this you cannot say that arthroscopy is required you will find n number of papers which say we did a root tear repair and we did a hto and 80% of them were fine true i am saying if you didn't do the root repair still 80% of them would be fine so these papers like if if you if you find nas paper on pubmed then there will be other papers like this there are n number of papers now which show that root tear is not uh, required lekin agar matlab bachpan se hi arthroscopy karte aaya hai aadmi to matlab it, it it doesn't fit na into your philosophy for a person who's who's agar phata hai to usko taaka to lagana hi padega kind of thing it's 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 a natural thought process but that's where literature comes in bol na yes yes if possible <laughs> if possible if possible so i usually will tell patients that first you have to do exercises to improve the flexion deformity try to get rid of their pain try to so a lot of them with therapy will reduce a bit then some of them will reduce with uh, this thing anesthesia so if i have a patient with a significant 5 10 degree flexion deformity when i go in for surgery i say if you straighten out then i will use the fixator if you don't straighten out then i will use a tomofix because i cannot correct a flexion deformity with the uh, fixator so under anesthesia if i can see that yes they have straightened out then it's a fixator otherwise tomofix and slope correction yes kubavat how many no i um, now i'm my indications are expanded so i i am doing a lot of uh, debridement with femoral and tibial osteotomies in those cases i do but for the standard uh, hto i don't do denervation yeah <laughs> uh that that's another thing which i overweight niche nahi baithne ka seedhi chadne ka utarne ka nahi aur zyada lamba time ke liye khada rehne ka nahi abhi 35 saal ki lady hai taking care of a husband and two kids going to school with the kids and this and that wo khadi kaise nahi rahegi khadi to usko rehna padega then niche baithne ka nahi नीचे बैठने से कुछ नहीं होता है इतने लोग हैं जो आई हैव पेशेंट्स हुआ लाइक यू नो नॉर्थ में कहते हैं ना हेल्दी तो दे हैव नॉट लॉस्ट एन आउंस ऑफ देयर वेट वी हैव करेक्टेड देयर अलाइनमेंट एंड देयर पेन हैज गॉन अवे एंड कंटिन्यूज टू हैव टू बी ओके फॉर द लास्ट ट्वेल्व इयर्स थर्टीन ईयर्स द सेकेंड थिंग इज वेट द लॉर्ड ऑफ सर्जन से वजन कम करके आओ 
अरे बहन चो कम करेगा कैसे <laughs> मतलब दे आर नॉट नन ऑफ दीज पीपल नन नो बडी हु इज ओवर वेट इज ओवर वेट बिकॉज दे ओवर ईट ऐसा नहीं है कि हम लोग दो चपाती खाते हैं और वो लोग छह चपाती खाते हैं दे आर ऑल्सो जनरली ईटिंग अ लिमिटेड अमाउंट स्पेशली वेन दे आर ओवर वेट दे ट्राई टू रिड्यूस इट बाय रिड्यूसिंग दर इनटेक इट्स देयर एक्सपेंडिचर विच इज अ प्रॉब्लम वेन द नीज आर हर्टिंग दे कांट स्पेंड एंड आई मीन दे मस्ट बी हेल्प ऑफ अ लॉट ऑफ अदर बी एम आई थिंग्स ऑल्सो यू नो मेटाबोलिज्म थिंग्स ऑल्सो इन्वॉल्व बट फॉर श्योर दे कैन नॉट एक्सरसाइज एनी यू सी एनी वेट लॉस प्रोग्राम or anybody who has lost weight among us how did you do it it's diet and exercise there's nobody who's lost it by uh, diet alone so yes probably it makes the effects of mal alignment more obvious but that's not really a treatment modality i think in a patient who's got so i don't say ki nahi 10 kilo kam karke aur fir main ऑपरेशन करूंगा आई आई डू द सर्जरी फॉर दीज पेशेंट्स राइट तेरा तेरा रेडी हो गया दिनेश यू कैन स्टार्ट वेन एवर आई एम जस्ट टेकिंग क्वेश्चन टिल यू फिनिश या नो आई डोंट थिंक सो आई डू एन एम आर आई फॉर मेनी ऑफ द पेशेंट्स बट दैट्स मेनली फॉर एकेडेमिक पर्पजेस टू इफ यू आर वरिड इज द लैटरल कार्टलेज ओके और नॉट एक्स रे लुक्स अ लिटिल क्वेश्चनेबल एंड यू आर नॉट श्योर Uh, then you can do an mri and the third thing is if the symptoms are out of sync with what you see on the x ray varus jyada nahi hai joint space reduction is not that much but severe pain like um, what ajit was talking about that suddenly you know two years patient was okay now that patient you can do an mri to be sure that there is no insufficiency fracture look for bone marrow edema and stuff like that but to do a hto i don't think an mri is uh, standard of care to nahi for sure right tum log ho gaya aa ja uh maybe someone was asking about patello femoral arthritis i have a comment on that one thing patello femoral arthritis plays role while bending of the knee and most of the patients has have more and more pain while walking on weight thing weight bearing patello femoral have no much uh, role in weight bearing so uh, as you rightly notice someone there was a patello femoral arthritis was most of the time they are asymptomatic and here there is a correction of q angle so if suppose mild patello femoral arthritis that is taken care of and all these patients becomes happy when they don't have pain on weight bearing they might have some pain on climbing stairs or climbing down but mild pain mild pain mild pain that is what uh, even uh, in total knee replacement there is a controversy that whether to replace patella or not so many surgeons are not replacing the patella so patello femoral arthritis i think it should not be a contraindication i suppose uh, for the if severe dominantly only patello femoral arthritis pain is there then obviously you have to treat that without medial compartment arthritis that there is also one possibility only patello femoral then we they have no role to play with hto and uh, now uh, one case presentation by dr tejas i think yes see close wage uh, demonstration was there but because of time constraint it's not that but it is fixed like this and anybody can you can circulate this is the things what we have learned i i did surgery like this so you can have a three dimensional view so we will not perform uh sorry no no sir ek minute uh, sir i would uh, like to uh, say dr govind purohit to facilitate uh, the most wanted faculty of from all over the india is most demand uh, everywhere from kashmir to kanyakumari hello so i am very thankful to him he accepted uh, my invitation uh, to enrich our knowledge and uh, i have not seen any person who is that much scientific in his in the subject uh, it's really amazing for me at least yeah oh.
हेलो I am present with the case of a 55 year male who is diabetic as well as hypertensive. He has a knee pain since two years and aggravation since last two months. Complain of pain of medial side. He has a walking difficulties and sometimes locking. Uh, on examination, medial joint line pain, uh, patellofemoral pain mild present. Make mood it as positive. All ligaments are normal. Uh, mild virus laxity, virus and uh, distal neurovascular. Structures are normal. So these are the X-rays of the weight-bearing scanogram, and uh, uh, right side he has a pain. So it has ten degree varus, and uh, he has a MPTA is uh, eighty. So these are the MPTA and LDFA and uh, our calculation shows around uh, 13 mm uh, opening. So this is the MRI which shows a partial medial meniscus root tear as well as the medial compartment predominantly arthritis. So we do a scopy. And it shows the these are the lateral compartment, which is good, and uh, ligaments are also good, and the medial compartment is arthritic. So I uh, do the scopy for the debridement purpose of the medial meniscus, as well as the to showing to the patient how the medial compartment is bad and arthritic, and documentation purpose. So these are medial meniscus tear, and these are the some pictures of the arthritic. A medial compartment with no cartilage remaining. So these are the intra pictures with the correction, and this is my uh, osteotomy. I do biplanar osteotomy, and you can uh, make this op opening of the osteotomy, which is biplanar, and this is uh, the final fixation. The lateral view and these are the follow-up x-rays of uh, six weeks as well as the two months and these are the range of motion and patient is very happy all the symptoms and pain was gone and these are the final follow-up after uh, one year and uh, Any questions? Joint line obliquity? So I, I didn't take uh, JCLA into consideration because uh, these are my, my first HTO case. Okay. So I correct only tibial virus only. It's <laughs> very congratulations that. Uh, I can see that it's a good valgus. Uh, I hope this is not uh, a tomo fix. So I request you uh, to use a tomo fix because there is there should be no all yes. uh, yeah one thing uh, because uh, uh, everyone cannot afford uh, tomo fix original. Mm. But still, we have other companies also they can provide this kind of plate. Okay. The advantage is that that we can have some early weight bearing. This hole can break if you yes. allow them to bear weight with this plate. 
then uh, it will broke plate will be break then you have to delay the weight bearing in this particular case you must have delayed i think yes how how long uh, i st uh, started partial weight bearing by the one month and full mm. by one and a half to two months yeah that is a uh, disadvantage with this plate otherwise uh, yes. it's nice so and uh, screws are also a little bit uh, proximal screws should be a prop i think it's a little shorter i think but it's okay and result is good and then everything is good so i took a picture of this kind of patients while i doing tkr in mahakad to convince my xpo patients that lateral compartment is very good and you can uh, heal with the sto also yeah. see uh, this is the reason even in when tkr was uh, new before uh, in around year 2000 so at that time uh, i was assisting to the replacement surgeon the knee replacement surgery so every time i was seeing that lateral compartment is looking healthy and they are replacing the whole knee so that has encouraged me to do high tibial osteotomy so I, I, I want to show the one case with the severe patellofemoral arthritis uh, i think there's some x-rays So, I this patient I did HTO in a severe patellofemoral arthritis, but despite all the patellofemoral fights, uh, I'm a, a screen sharing. Screen share, screen share, screen share. The patient is doing really well. Uh, thank you, Tejas, and uh, Dr. Purohit will felicitate uh, Dr. Tejas with a momento. At last, uh, this is the last uh, talk we have now, uh, how to convince patients. We are omitting that lecture, but uh, just I have taken per operative x-ray of two days operated patient. So I will show this and we will conclude the uh, whole symposium. Uh, we are very thankful to all that so many people from very far has came here to attend this uh, and uh, as everybody know, Presentation of the Ali Extension. Chaudhini Nadi Apanati. This is the per operative x-ray. Usually I take during surgery and I put a template over it and uh, I see the uh, target and this exit alignment when I achieve exit alignment, then and then uh, I fix all other screws. So this was the per operative x-ray. Now for uh, uh, complete post-operative x-ray, AP and later view, I will post in the group so that and uh, uh, that uh, let's we will discuss at other time how to check per operatively at that this time there is a very short time so that's why per operative assessment is very important and uh, i really thank dr uh, purohit and uh, secretary dr dev murari for allowing me to organize this conference on behalf of gujarat orthopedic association i am not a member uh, executive member even I am a member of Gujarat Orthopedic Association but I am not in executive committee then they have keep their mind open and allowed me to organize and fully supported me to do whatever I wanted and uh, I am very thankful that I have all delegates have participated very actively I hope that new 
uh, young orthopedic surgeons will think HTO is a very good uh, treatment. Not only a uh, mind is uh, said that total knee replacement is the only solution. Uh, I will give uh, to the Dr. Purohit. He will say a few words. Uh, at the last, I would three cheers for all the delegates because the hall is completely full uh, from every part of the country. Three cheers for Dr. Dinesh, who is even though not executive, he is associated all the while with GOA, even IOA, and with every orthopedic surgeon who want to get involved in the pre knee preservation principle. So three cheers to Dinesh, to GOA, IOA, and to all the delegates. Three cheers. Thank you, Paul. We have a delicious breakfast high tea. So don't go without uh, high tea. Thank you all. Thank you. Don't go